All right, we should be live on both Twitch and YouTube now. Looks like it's going live. There we go, there we go. Uh, so I haven't been here for uh, about a week, so for anyone that didn't hear, I am needing to take a bit of time off before the DLC comes out because I'm going to be doing basically a streamathon during that. We have a lot of stuff that needs to be done, you know, um, house stuff and daughter school stuff and daughter camp stuff and just a lot of stuff that I won't go over. So if you're wondering uh, what's been up, mainly that I just can't can't be on as much this uh, this past week and probably not most of this one. Am I going to go over the new blog? Uh, I'm not going to go over it <clears throat> because I it's been like three days. So I'm pretty sure most of you have already read it. And so I just went ahead and, and did it when I on my on my own. So uh, I'll go over the next one, hopefully, unless it hits one of these days where I'm already like super busy. But for today, we are back to uh, what we were doing a week ago, which is 1.5. Uh, anomaly pre-patch so it's the unstable branch uh we're we're doing a no kill box run I'm, I'm trying to remember what was going on so i have no idea what we were doing or what our current plans were so we'll get in there and hopefully we don't die um been yarlin guts no no lock kate welcome back sit wolf dimitri welcome in welcome in welcome in uh and i didn't think of the 19 months uh yeah brains uh brains sent me a message on on discord let me know he was going to release that so uh, I'm not sure if I'm, I'll use it or not. I don't use a lot of mods, as you know, and we're basically using none for this. But let me load this up and we can continue talking about things for sure. But we are doing a 5%, so hardest difficulty, no pause of 1.5, no kill box, no kill box. So hardest difficulty, no kill box. And I'm building different just for fun. That that I remember. Is it SOC charge rifle? I think I, I I did say that we'll eventually try to get to charge rifles because I haven't done that in a long time. So, um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that eventually. So... Uh, we made an hourglass because we are waiting for Anomaly. Uh, Master, thank you for the two months. Thank you, Master. Much appreciated. Oh, we had a heat wave. I remember something about that and being like, all right, I got to remember we're having a heat wave. And yeah, this guy might end up dying from it. So who was this? Who was this? Uh, tough, beautiful bloodlust. So a new pawn. Also, uh, how are our rituals going? We haven't been too lucky on rituals. Uh, how are we doing on research? We're on our way to get fabrication. Good. I We had just built our scanners. And... I don't think we had built a drill yet. Nope, we had. All right, potatoes coming in. We are over on food. Also, we, were, we have some traders really close by. And they have both reset. Uh, no, one of them has reset. Okay. We also do have... If I remember right. Yeah, we have charge rifles here as our relic so maybe we'll go after the the village today too nuke rifles did we discuss preview number two no i'm i'm going to skip doing a deep dive on it just because it came out like three days ago now or whatever two and a half days ago when i was i couldn't be on and so i think most everyone has already read it unfortunately um so hopefully i'll be able to be around for the next preview if there is one i imagine so but uh hawkeye thank you for the th tier three thank you hawkeye very much appreciated the golden sub club uh al Thank you for the gift sub as well. So many of you. Resubbing. Big Leo, thank you for the 15 months. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we're going to be doing our Easter stuff tomorrow, so I won't be here tomorrow either. Should make a spider base around the, that hourglass and paint the floor red. <laughs> yeah. I, I might be a little bit, a little involved, a little involved. Also, Randy was pretty asleep during the beginning, but kind of woke up a bit, so... Uh, yeah, things seem to be going relatively well. We don't have a lot of wood right so also apparently i haven't got a specific place yet for our components and whatnot so take a look at that don't have a lot of steel steels out here but yeah I'm trying to remember what all we were doing transfers from the tubes thank you thank you joe bow they were the 29 months uh, we don't have a lot of wood, yeah, because <laughs> we're on a desert, right? Or, uh, we're on Arid Shrubland. On Arid Shrubland. Okay, we had a shuttle that we helped. Uh, we don't have mortars yet, so I've been waiting on a siege to try to get mortars from. But yeah, pretty much, we're just going to wait out this heat wave. And, oh, bolt good ship. Nice. Who is our trader? Darn tar. Yeah, so really quick, like, my, my overall thoughts of, of the preview... Um, in general, I'm looking forward to see what all new threats they are and how common they are and if it spices up uh, not just like the late game, but throughout the game. So 
At the moment, we kind of know how to what to do against every kind of threat in the game, right? And eventually we'll know what to do against every kind of new anomaly threat. But at least in the beginning, um, you know, learning learning this new stuff is going to be a lot of fun. And I really hope it's it's relatively common so that we have varied threats. And not just common. I hope the threats, it sounds like it from the preview, but it's but I hope the threats are like relatively common but one thing that the preview is making me wonder about a lot of the threats that they're showing so far and the things that they're showing so far seem like smaller isolated events but that might be because the previews and the developers and whatnot generally show like lower difficulty stuff so i don't want to get ahead of myself with that but um uh, the containment stuff we'll have to see how that plays out like so just right off the bat the the creature containment that they were talking about in the new preview makes me think like the bases are going to have a bigger footprint even if we do the big square barracks bases are going to have a bigger footprint right because we're going to need we're going to need new room it's just like when we did um biotech playthroughs and we needed a lot of gene stuff the gene stuff needed its own area and a lot of mech stuff needed its own area so now it looks like anomaly is going to need uh its own area and maybe bigger area i don't know we'll see you so those are just like some of the basic things uh i, I didn't have time to really really like meticulously crawl through the through the uh images this time but uh handmar thank you for the 13 months cowboy audio thank you for the 11 months thank you guys now you go through the new update on video no because it happened when i wasn't able to be on for a few days so um i would love to buy as many components as we can while they're here looks like we did make quite a bit of axe survival meals so i'll probably just trade a few of those Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to be playing a whole, 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 whole lot. Balance threats and rewards. That's another thing. Yeah, like how rewarding will it be? Yeah, that's a good point. So for anyone that didn't see, uh, I, I'm i sure it wasn't just me, but some of you might remember. Can't thank you for the 16 months and marshmallows. Thank you for the five good subs. Thank you guys. Happy Easter. Thank you. We're going to do our, our Easter tomorrow, but I know today is the real day. So thank you. I appreciate the support. Uh, so... I don't know how many saw, but on one of the 1.5 updates. So what am I, I kept saying that uh, I was really unhappy that the the thing I hated the most about 1.5 was the double click change, double click select change. And I also told you guys that I posted it as a bug on the development discord for bugs. And the developers replied and said that it was an intended change work, working correctly intended behavior and closed and locked the thread. And so I probably shouldn't have after that. I could have probably gotten myself kicked out or banned from that. I made a video about how awful that is and how the situation is, is terrible during a, a live raid where you're trying to quickly see what, what people have and where they are and stuff. So I made a video and sent it in uh, to a different developer, a different one that didn't lock the thread. And they agreed with me, and now it's changed back. So uh, I was kind of risky, and I'm sure other people were complaining as well. But they did change it back, so I was, like, super happy when I saw that. In fact, um, Smurf actually reached out to me, because I didn't see the announcement for it right away. So Smurf reached out to me, and he's like, hey, I just had to point point this out that they did change the double-click back to the way it was before. So uh, another thing that they changed that I reported quite a bit is... Um, they've changed a lot of things since I played a week ago. But a lot of people might remember that I was saying how, unfortunately, when someone goes to read a book, they can take a a workbench. So, like, right now, if someone wants to read a book, they could read it right here. And especially if you have a chair, and then people wouldn't be able to research here. And that was the case anywhere. Like, if you had a chair at the stove and someone went to read a book there, people wouldn't be able to use the stove. So that's also another change. Now pawns will try to read at a place, a chair, whatever, that isn't at a workstation. So, um, lots of lots of really good 1.5 changes, but uh, that's pretty awesome that they changed that after after telling me that it was intended they wouldn't change it. And I was like, I might get myself in trouble, but I'm going to send them this video. <laughs> so, uh, uh, all right. 
Balance threats rewards. Yeah, new quest rewards would be excellent. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward. I hope they redo some quest stuff in general. I'm sick of LTEX, you know. But suggest that pawns can read in bed. Well, I mean, it's not really for. It's not really for things that um that we would like or whatever. You're supposed to be there reporting bugs. That's what it's for. Like reporting bugs and errors and things. So I was probably stepping a little out of bounds by after they told me that wasn't a bug making a oh the summons are still yeah I had them turned off for uh Rimian ship I must have forgotten to turn them back on sorry about that I got them turned on but anyway I, pr I really probably shouldn't have made a video and sent it to them afterwards but um it worked so uh all right <laughs> Yeah, I really think that only quests from the Empire should give you L like that. That would make sense, right? Only, only those. For now, I just don't care at some point. I got you. Yeah, I was a little worried. I was like, man, I'm gonna get myself kicked out of this development Discord. But there we go. All right, uh, they are converted. They have a heat stroke. It's just minor though, and I, he has good clothing. I mean, he has clothing to maybe. I don't know. We gotta be careful here. We're gonna recruit him. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So if anyone doesn't know how to like preview number two, uh, I kind of went through it more quickly than the last one. So I'm interested in the new threats. I'm really curious how that pans out and what if the rewards for keeping creatures are worth the extra footprint and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's kind of like just the, the basic gist that I there, there was a little bit more, but yeah, I I've been really busy. So I'm planning on doing a streamathon thing when the DLC comes out. I'll be streaming lots of hours and putting out lots of content. So I'm we have a lot of stuff to catch up on in real life. So I had two doctor's visits this week. Um I had tests or excuse me, last week. I had tests last week. My daughter has doctor's visit this week. I have a test result visit this week. Like we have a lot of stuff going on that we're just trying to get get out before uh, oh, that was the most exciting news, I guess, is that they actually tell us when the DLC came out. So for anyone that didn't see, they let us know that it'll be out on the 11th. 11th. I mean, the release date, I wish... it Just purely selfishly, I wish it was a little bit later, but it's fine. Play the game for 50 hours straight. Asteric! For the six, 63 months. Asteric, a famous pawn. And one of the most famous runs. The original Melee-only run. I was like a lot of extra wealth if I were saying yeah that's what I'm wondering like how much wealth and ray points are they how much wealth and stuff are the containment things like there's a lot of things and is it going to be worth it you know um from a min max standpoint I'm gonna do it either way right I'm gonna do it either way because I want to explore all of the DLC stuff but when it comes out but yeah we'll have to see do not get to disturb sleep yes they do but it doesn't matter disturb sleep only count stacks to minus three so disturb sleep is nothing Disturb sleep is basically nothing in RimWorld. They changed that in 1.1 to only stack till minus three. So for better or worse, the most efficient thing in RimWorld is one giant room. Doesn't matter what shape. We're just having a different shape for fun. One giant room with concrete and statues. You agree? You have vacation four days on 4.11. Oh, rough. Delay it for the, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see. He waits over. First rat, 31 months, almost full calendar year. You're there. Almost. Big British rat. Glad you are still around. Raid. Started watching the single phase run, and it's, yeah, the single phase run is crazy. Um, unfortunately, the edit is still behind. I don't want to, that's, well, we are still pretty, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> I was about to say, that's kind of low, but let's go uh, attack this one. Unfortunately, the edit still isn't, uh, isn't done. I wanted it to be done, like, three or four weeks before the expansion, but um, I don't mean this slight against the editor or anything like that, but they just haven't had time to finish it. So I'm hoping it gets out in enough time for people to watch and enjoy the edited version before the DLC when everything switches over to like mainly DLC stuff. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm really looking forward to the edited single phase run. I want to watch it myself. I'm really looking forward to watching it myself because that run is so, so crazy. It's just like full of RimWorld stories, right? 
like the mo one of the most RimWorld runs, war crime RimWorld runs of all time. Cargo pods, what we got? Yeah, let's check out the new double click. Yes, it's reverted. Oh, it's so good. It's it's funny because that's just how it has always worked, but now, now that they had changed it to be worse, and now it's back to normal. It's like yes, greatest change of all time. <laughs> so happy with it. Prison break. No, we were about to recruit you. Oh my god, he picked up a sniper rifle. Hey. Hey, why are you so fast? Oh, no, that sucks. So prisoner took, I mean, that was a tough guy. Tough one, too. He's a tough guy. Well, spent all that time converting. All right, let's do this. You saw his chance and took it. Yeah, how do you know? Well, they changed the double click. They reverted the change. They re reverted it back. So for anyone that wasn't here um, when I was talking about it, so I had reported it in the developer discord as a bug, the double click. And one of the developers replied and said it was intended. It's like intended change. You know, that's the expected behavior now and closed and locked it. And I was like, I talked to other people and they all agreed it was worse. And like games just, it's like a, it's like making RimWorld worse and, so I, I risked it and I was like, man, this might get me get me kicked out of here. But I uh, I made a video even after they locked that. I made a short video about how terrible it was and why it was terrible. And I sent it to another developer and then they changed it back. We did it. Uh, Vivacious. Still around. 22 months. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Characters driven runs. Oh, yeah, yeah. I really like doing the themed runs every few runs. So the single phase run was really insane. When you have a chance, can you go over Cassandra's cycles? Sure. So basically, Cassandra has a 10.6 day cycle. So 4.6 days off, or excuse me, 4.6 days on, and then six days off. So we're not playing against Cassandra. But what that means, this is, this is kind of a good example. If you have Cassandra attack you two times like this, close together, she can't do another major event for six days. You're safe. You can mine at the edge of the map. You can go caravan. You're safe. Now... Um, the, the wiki has actually been updated with the actual days that she is on and off. And that's the same regardless of your save, regardless of your difficulty. So if you go to the chart on, on the wiki, it has the first, like whatever days, but yeah, that, that's the basics of it. She has 4.6 days where she can attack you either once or twice. And then after that, she goes on cooldown for six days. So Prison door, they lay, yeah, yeah. The If you read the thing, it says something like they found the keys, but apparently we have universal locks. The dwarf run, yeah, the dwarf run was fun too. Be mad with the, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how all that stuff works out, yeah. Six days, yeah, if she has attacked twice with a major event recently. Uh, so we do need a shrine now, huh? Uh, we'll just make it out of steel. It's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for continuing to watch as well. It's a long time. It's a long time. Close the door, but bash down the rest. Yeah, that would be nice. Pretty extensive. Pretty sure. Single phase is absolutely crazy. Only episode of Great Fire in the storage. Oh no, yeah. Yeah. Single phase run is so good. Uh single phase, I, it might be some recency bias. The single phase run might be my favorite story-based run of all time. Um, it's it's really insane. So I've been really excited about the edit coming out, but I'm afraid it's gonna come out so close to the DLC that not as many people are going to go to watch. Any major items in 1.5? Uh, so 1.5 added 18 pages of changes and it did add something like actual items to you, like floodlights and wall lights. Um, but my biggest, I think my biggest one right now is the hidden conduit. 
Hidden Conduits cost two times the steel, but Raiders do not attack them. They do not catch on fire and they don't have Z events. So if you just put, you have, you know, you just put these conduits down everywhere. You don't have to worry about anything like that. And you can have like all, as many batteries as you want now as well, as long as all your conduits are underground conduits. Story run shows the game better than the challenge runs. Yeah, but I like, I like both. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to both of them or I'm going to do both of them, but. And I play so many, put out so many runs, you know. Yeah, it probably is, yeah. The prison break thing. Uh, yeah. My pleasure, Des. Um, ooh, a wanderer. Sounds... Is that a pig? Pig. Neurotic Optimus, 14-year-olds. Um... Don't really want this guy. Oh, didn't we have... Yeah, wake up. So, wake up is bloodlust. I've been having him go out and kill him. Actually, beat them to death. No one save them. No one save them. Why are you not dying? Were you tough? I don't know. Wake up killed the other ones much faster. Maybe I should have kept shooting them instead of beating them. Have you won a game before no kill box? Oh yeah, tons. Yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> Lots of times. So I think we've done 500% no kill box all the way through a ship launch at least a half dozen times at this stage. We got here. We got a genie. Wait, have we have we recruited a genie yet? Yeah, we do have a genie. Okay. Oh, no, no. That's literally the one that just came in. Okay, so we might take them. Because we are doing uh, min-max ideology, right? Yeah, so we actually do have production specialists. So, Soviet is a maybe. Oh, Lev also. Hang on. Body modder. Fantastic. 11 crafting right now. Jogger. Man, I might take both of them. And then if one dies in prison, we have another one. Uh, all right. So let's get these two over here. These are going to uh, be pretty mad at that. So Princess Leia here on them. Yeah, <laughs> that's the Enders all. Yeah. Uh, Torn Wings. Thank you for the brand new sub. Thank you, Torn Wings. Yeah, we killed all the beavers, yeah. I'd forgotten that we even even had them. Alright, so for these two guys, we're going to go into health. We're going to put them on herbal. And we are going to put them to sleep for just a little while. Yeah. Skulls. Okay, wait, are they both already done? They are done. All right. So you two guys go far away. Who's nearby? Yeah, we're just building different this time. Just for fun. I know I was asked a whole lot. It's like, are barracks nerfed and things like that? No, no, no. Two genies, so let's go ahead and convert those. Make another bed in there. Just well cushioned, apparently. That, yeah, yeah, I don't know what was going on. Really important combination for the new shells with triple storage. Do something about the events. Yeah, I'm really not happy with the underground conduits. We have a lot of food. I was planning on having more colonists by now, but. All right, we got our double walls. We need to fix the doors there. Just noticed. Just noticed. 
Yeah. Alright. Looking fine. Uh, I also... We are going to need more room, so I'm probably going to have to make another section of this. I could just make this one out as well. Like out this way. Yeah, we probably will need another spot. I don't know. Well, we can move storage outside, right? I can just have shelves outside, so... Uh, we need steel. I think we were mining steel somewhere. Yeah, there's steel over there. Have we scanned any with the drill or uh, with the scanners yet? Not in the walls. Okay. Let's let's fix our current walls and then I think we are gonna go mine some more, even though it's dangerous. The Iron Cross. Yeah. yeah if we do um, two again. Also, your main colonist just now. Commit mode run and friendly fire at the very end of a raid. Die because of the door bug. Yeah, I was hoping they would fix that too, but nope. Uh, I did put that in my friendly fire guide too, that doors undo the friendly fire rain or whatever, yeah. Turn down all the distance on your station to 30 instead of 15. actually saw an improvement within game raids. Didn't see much difference. Have you tried that? I usually try to put them down as low as makes sense, yeah. So I will have a lot of them be like under 10 because they have shells right nearby. Does the search function show underground deposits? No. Wait, which which friendly fire on doors are you talking about? So are you talking about the new one that was introduced in 1.5? Or are you talking about the original one in the friendly fire guide? Because it might be different between the two. Or are both of those fixed? The new one was when people standing on a door could shoot the door underneath them or throw a grenade on the door underneath them. Um and we thought maybe they could even shoot themselves. So the friendly fire one in yourself? Yeah, yeah. Are they both fixed? Wait, uh, Mycenaeus, are you on 1.4 or 1.5? You lost your colony to smoke leaf withdrawal. <laughs> the different patches they've been releasing for 1.5. See what changes happen in the files. Reason, uh, no, I had been using it previously. Let's see which one I want to convert first. Uh, we'll go with the one that's just the closest to being converted. So we'll start with you. Unfortunately, your chat cannot reach me because you're a YouTube pleb. No, YouTube's just a minute behind, so you just have to wait for my reply. <laughs> I don't. I'm not just ignoring you. But yeah, I already answered the person on Twitch as well that no, they can't, they can't search. The fire guide is fixed. There's like 10 different versions of self-damage. At least seven have been fixed. May still be a few left. Gotcha. 1.4. Yeah, so if you're on 1.5, the friendly fire and a door has been fixed. Uh, apparently. So, yeah, unfortunately. So if you, if you switched, when you switch over to 1.5, what just happens to you what wouldn't happen again. But yeah, it sucks. I know it doesn't help for now, but. They fixed that one, yeah. It was a thing, wing, but they fixed it pretty quickly. The friendly fi friendly fire with mortars, it was a hundred percent a thing. But yes, luckily that one's been fixed. You can get with Twitch. Oh, okay, I got you, got you. There you're talking about me. I was like, you just gotta wait. Yeah. Um, I wish the latency on YouTube was better. In general, regardless, of course. But. All right, the outer walls are done. We are going to mine some, but it's going to be real dangerous. Real dangerous, so. I'm, uh, I'm doing all right, doing all right. Go on, Cam. Good to see you. Horn wings. Thank you for the brand new sum. Sub paranoia, I think, for the 45 months again. Missed what happened. Did I get banned or did they... No, no, they changed it. They reverted it, yeah. Oh, they fixed those and they weren't intended. Yeah, that would have been a terrible change. For anyone wondering what they're talking about with mortars, basically after 1.5 came out, mortars could hit things next to them. So mortars had friendly fire. So if you had like, do we have mortars research? Let's see. Yeah, so if you had something like this, 
they already fixed this. But if you had something like this and you shot one of these mortars, uh, even if you were shooting it this way, which the mortars, you know, they shoot up, but anyway, regardless of which, which way you were shooting it, mortars could hit the wall next to them and explode or hit other, yeah, other things like this next to them. So it used to, you'd put a wall here so they wouldn't chain explode if something hit them from an outside source. But when they first put out 1.5, mortars were just like blowing, like killing the person using them and blowing everything up nearby. But yeah, that, that one's been fixed. Yeah. Fire, shooting a mortar. It was a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It was crazy. Uh, cowboy, thank you for the two months. Thank you, Cowboy. Shadow Gene Pool, thank you for the 27 months. Months. I almost said munch. <laughs> Orcish Knight, thank you for the 22. Lots of 20s. Yeah, I have always hated that there's there's always a chance for someone to get killed by a weapon that feels like they shouldn't be. Like, Marine Helmet, right? Like, having someone one shot in the brain with an arrow for Marine Helmet. But I already went over the second preview. I'm not going to go over it as in, in as much detail because it happened several days ago while I couldn't be online. Uh, I did talk about it just a little bit early on, but not in as much detail. Hopefully, I'm around for the next preview, preview as long as there is one. I think they, I think there was going to be one more. I don't remember, but yeah, just uh, the real basics of it are I am looking forward to see what all the new threats are. Varied threats seem like a really good idea. I hope they are. Um, I hope they are dangerous enough and I hope they're big enough. And then I also am really curious what the rewards are for the, the creatures, because it looks like just from the images, it looks like you're going to have to have more infrastructure for for this. Um, what do you call it? Like the capture and study of the of the entities. Um, so it looks like you're going to have to have a lot more. And I'm curious how that's going to like inflate wealth and rate. I'm going to do it anyway. But I'm curious how it's going to inflate rate uh, wealth and rate points on 500 uh, percent. You decide what they for the five months. Lumberjack 13. Thank you, Lumberjack. Light, thank you for the 200 bits. Incapacitating brain scar. No one will take the person to the pod. Have go to roll meds. Pod says it's waiting for pawn. Uh, I haven't ran into that. Yeah, is it already assigned to that person or is it assigned to someone else from a previous use? Have you tried right clicking on the person or Marcus Martin? Thank you for the 19 months. Thank you, Marcus Martin. Yeah, you could try drafting and then carrying the person there. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't had that happen, so let me know if any of that is that working or not. Ravenously hungry. What? Yeah, just eat food. Melee. Uh, let's go into apparel policy and turn off tainted. I thought that was already done, but apparently not. Scanners don't aren't popular with the runs. Component lumps are huge because you have to go get them, right? So why do I why do I care about it? It just saves time. So why do I care? Like why why am I going to risk stuff? So if I'm doing a min max run, yeah, it's nice when you want to pinpoint something like components or plasteel or gold, but it's infinitely less safe. So like going in mining itself, I could get ambushed, right? But also I have less defense at home. So for me, the long range mineral scanners, they take longer and it's going to make my colony weaker in the meantime. So for me, I would rather just just wait and I will be able to make an infinite amount just on my map. And so then it wouldn't wouldn't make any sense to go anywhere. Why is the elephant blue? That's a 1.5 change. It's a silhouette. Uh, Palomir, they were the 14 months. How's it going? Waffles back to the hourglass. Right. Gray Bush, thank you for the 10 gift subs. And the resub. Well, that's like 11 subs. It is 11 subs. Thank you, Gray Bush. Yeah, so for anyone that hasn't seen 1.5, added this to where uh, it's in. It's an option. So when you zoom out, you can see silhouettes. You can choose to see silhouettes, dots, or nothing. But yeah, the reason I don't use long range mineral, mineral scanners is because I can just get everything on my map, which is much safer. Not just for uh, calling staying home, but just for everyone. You think tan and clothing be off by default? You would think so. You think you would have an isolation wing for the individual? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. For the the um yeah all the in 
infested person or whatever. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It seems like it'll be an interesting thing, but it also seems like it could be frustrating. We were talking about earlier, like, what if it's your best colonist, you know? <laughs> like, is a flesh beast a wall, though? It looks like it might be. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true, but by the time I get to, like, far skip and stuff, I probably can just make my own components, so why even worry? Uh, yeah, I ended up trying new flavors. I didn't have a chance to put it on the on the Discord yet. So this one is um, emotional damage, and it's okay. But to be honest with you, if I was going to get a peach one from them, I would get brand risk. So I've had several people tell me that they really like the emotional damage flavor. It's okay. It's not. It's definitely not one of my favorites or anywhere near. It's kind of mid range for me. Not not mid that now means bad, but it's okay. It's all right. Uh, if, if you're going to get a peach one, I highly suggest getting brand risk instead of this one. But you might like it. I don't know. Uh, the other new one that I've tried so far this week is just strawberry lemonade. Um, that's the one that my wife wanted to get. So she got decaf strawberry lemonade. It's super good. I'm going to get I'm going to get more of it. So if you like strawberry lemonade, it is a good strawberry lemonade. So pretty happy with that one. And it's just literally called strawberry lemonade. No, no funny names. Have I tried good? No. No, I haven't tried that. New threats, it probably sorts itself out. Yeah, the thing I was talking about with the new threats and dealing with them is... Um, I kind of hope that they're like... Well, we'll eventually figure out. Like, no matter what, we'll eventually figure out how to deal with them. But I hope it takes us a little bit of time, right? And I hope it's not like... It comes out, we immediately just crush it all or it's very obvious how to deal like right now we've played this game so long that every threat that currently is in the game we know how it functions we know how to deal with it so that's gonna be one of the fun things about the new expansion i feel is figuring those things out and i hope the the threats are threatening enough to really give us some problems for a long time i i hope they're actually threatening what if the colonist gets killed? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it depends on if you like catch it early or something. Yeah, I don't know. Take all the new flavors. Yeah, that's that's just the basics of it. The um, like I said, the emotional damage flavor. If if you're wanting peach, like the strawberry is very subtle. Unfortunately, I was hoping the strawberry was a little bit more forward. But if you're wanting a peach flavor one, brand risk is one of my favorites still, and it's peach. Uh, and strawberry lemonade is really good. Do you like shelves? I do like shelves. Yeah, shelves are amazing. That's why I got shelves here, here, here. Places that I, that it matters to have shelves at the moment. I'm really glad they took quality off shelves. Did they fix Breacher Cheese? Yes. Yeah, that's what I want, too. I want a lot of the new threats to function differently AI-wise. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping, too. That it isn't just like, all right, there's all these new enemies, but they just, they just funnel into your kill box, you know? Someone finds a way to break books to the next bullet for XE without doing stuff. I don't know. Yeah, there might be one there. There might not. Yeah, we'll see. We shall see. All right. So we're at the point now where we can scan steel. We can mine steel. And we just want to get a fabrication bench, at least one before we do anything else. And that will make it so that we now have uh, components forever. Components on our map forever. So we have the parts in place. Leather flavor. I'll have to double check. I think my wife got one other one. But those are the two that I've tried so far. Can you steal steal? Yes. You're, you're going to want to watch my playthroughs. Also want to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like that. Yeah. Black bosses are cool. You only fought them a few times. Gun wasp. Even the four months. Conversion. Nice. All right. Let's go ahead and recruit you. And convert this one. It's almost ready. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shells not having quality is super good because you don't have to worry about them as far as wealth goes anymore. And then you also... Don't have to be spammed in the late game about having. 
you know, uh, all the all these masterwork shells being pumped out. Uh, I'm going to make just not quite the same shape room. We're just going to make another weird room just for fun. But not quite the same as these ones. Just for fun. We're doing no kill box style, so we can easily do weird shapes like this. So. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Oh, did I? Yeah, I did that off the wrong one. Young drifters. Why are we getting all this drifter business? There we go. That'll be our other room. Will there be a cheese series after DLC? They've, I don't know, because they're fixing all, basically all the cheese that we know of. I'm sure we'll end up finding more cheesy things at some point. But yeah, I don't know. Almost every, all the cheese and exploit things are, are gone. Pretty much, ev I think every single thing we used in the cheese run will is patched out in 1.5 now. I've seen the new Godzilla yet. No, I was going to go this Tuesday, but... I might not get to until the Tuesday before the DLC. Fixing the cheese, adding a cheese cube. Fixing in-game reigns, uh, the week post less songs, each of them being worth more. Yeah, yeah. How am I going to deal with huge raids without kill box? Uh, same way I always do when we play no kill box. Yeah, just, you can wait, wait and see, but the short of it is I will go out and fight them in smaller groups. Game has milk. So I'm going to need to build a new one of these, unfortunately. So I do this, make component, do until we have X. We're going to put this just at 30 right now, and we're going to drop on the floor. Uh, we're going to put the range down pretty close by. And then... Let's, uh, yeah, let's make another one of these over here instead. Yeah, that's the short of it is. I'm just going to divide them up. Even attacking doors through walls? Yes, corner punch was fixed. How is the new crawling mechanic? The new crawling mechanic is kind of annoying in a lot of ways. I've had it both screw us over and I've had it save people. So I had it one time where someone was down by like manhunters or something during a uh, breakdown and we wouldn't have been able to save them, but they actually crawled through the double door and made it to us and I was able to fix them and save them. I've also had it where someone was trying to crawl and they held open a door and let enemies in. So also uh, on no pause, especially trying to triage where, when people are like crawling around all over the place, get really freaking annoying. But uh, overall, I think crawling will, I, I, I wish you could, I wish you had more control over the crawling. I think crawling itself is good. It's just unfortunate that you have no control over it at all. You can't draft them. You can't set a uh, in anything. There's, there's no control over them right now. They do stop, yeah, when someone is actually coming toward them. Yeah. Uh, my pleasure, Zcon. Go to bury and burn bodies more often. Yeah, maybe just throw them in the river. Yeah, <laughs> I do that a lot. See, most and least favorite xenotypes in biotech. So to use as a player, to use as a player, I always want to find a couple of genies. These are genies right here. I always want to find genies because crafting is so important. And so I'm always happy to get one or two genies. Um, after that, I also oftentimes will like getting a dirt mole or two. I think if I had to pick like the one I like the best to not like do a whole run full of them, but to just have some of would probably be genie number one because of their crafting. And then my least is probably... I don't know. I don't really like Neanderthal too much. Yeah, they're tanky, but you can get robust on... on anyone pretty easily, right? Um, Not sure. Maybe, maybe Neanderthal. I'm not sure. I have to think about it. Is 
Dirt moles. I like having a couple dirt moles. Yeah, they're really good. They're really nice. Um, they're pretty strong. They mining is always something that I'm going to need throughout the whole game, like mining at a, at a drill, you know? Sounds like, oh yeah, I'm sure lots of mods will fix things that people don't really like, of course, but. All right. These genies. Yeah, I, I wish crawling had a section here, just like hostility response. There should be like a downing response or something. Wasters are your favorite. Yeah, wasters can be really good. I mean, yeah. As long as you have their uh, their needs. I, I guess that's the same like any pot, right? I was gonna say, as long as you have their needs dealt with. You're just now, yeah, learn, learn about the Stanley Cups now. Yeah, it's pretty silly. Pretty silly. Considering either a good guy run or a Cowboy Rancher revolver run. Uh, if it is, it'll be after the DLC. So. We'll see. Shall see. I'm at supplier, yeah. I like wasters, keep them forever on wake up. Yeah, wasters are fine too. Yeah. It can be fun. But also, I don't really like I try not well, it depends on the imp. So impids to me, like I love that they're faster. Their fire breath is kind of a whatever. I hardly ever use it. And I do though, um, like the, like the extra speed, but the depressive also really sucks. So it depends on the actual input itself. And I guess that's the case with most of them, right? Like, I don't think there's any Zeto type that I would just never take, no matter what, no matter how they came. Yeah, Butchering got capped at 150. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So maybe we should have done the Rancher run before they changed it. I missed me going over preview to number two. I didn't really go over it very much, so... It's been out for a few days and I wasn't able to get on and, and do it immediately. So I feel like everyone, just about everyone's already kind of read through everything, you know, so. I talked about it a little bit at the beginning of the stream, but not, not as much detail as I did the other one. immune to addiction and possible overdose uh it makes you immune yeah yeah so there, there's basically no no real downside to taking the taking the drug if they if they have it let's say yeah i went over it a little bit i went over it a little bit i i was on the fence about doing it today or not but yeah i might still read through it at the end of the stream i'll think about it i already read through it myself but i'll still i'll think about it ace they were the four months any tips for 5% no pause vanilla? Um, so if it's your first time doing 5%, is it your first time doing 5% or first time doing 5% with no pause? Like, which part of it is new to you or is it all new to you? Because my advice changes a little bit. Thoughts on Gwarlin Tree? Gwarlin Tree can be beneficial on maps where you really need the few berries or wood or medicine but other than that it's not great first time playing no pause that you've done 500 percent before okay so with no pause you got to get one of the things you really need to get used to or good at is triage so get used to clicking on someone going to health and using period and comma to check who's going to bleed out first and tend to that person so that's one thing you get used to doing triage and doing it quickly and sometimes you'll have a situation where multiple pe people are going to die and you do not have the the means especially with no pause to save them you have to get good at like all right knowing which of your pawns are more expendable than the others sometimes up here on the list i'll literally reorder them like all right these ones at the end if they're bleeding out at the same time as someone else those ones are going to die or all right uh i need someone to melee block and we have no one good at it and whoever's melee blocking is probably going to die so the, the more expendable people are on the end that's who i'm going to send so knowing who your more expendable people are and getting used to triage is a big one the other thing i would say with no pause is getting into the habit of as soon as there's a threat, grab everyone, draft, and click towards your base. Every single time, just get used to doing that. 
it it's not that you need to do that every time but the times that you need to do that and you don't do that can end up just losing your run so those are two really basic things is having um uh getting getting better at triage and getting better at responding to this also it's really important on no pause that you have so, uh, something in your head about what you will do on certain threats like if such and such threat happens this is what my response is going to be so it becomes just like second nature like muscle memory so like right now if if i got uh, a raid over here i would grab everyone and if i saw that it was tribal um it might i might react a little bit different just by the name right while you use something aside salt rivals this run no, I, I do plan on using something different just for fun on this run. We're going to be use um, charge rifles later just because I haven't used them in forever. But I, I do for my play style, assault rifles are better than than um, charge rifles. But I am going to switch over to charge rifles at some point in the run just for fun. Um, but anyway, like I, I know already every threat, what I would do in the situation if it happens. So that can be really important as well. Uh, we need to get some money to go trade. I'm going to go ahead and plant. Yeah, aside from that, I would have to know kind of what your own pressure points are in your playthrough to give any specific advice. Like, there's there's thousands of points of advice I could give on different different scenarios, different situations, right? So it's, it's hard. Sea Finder was made for you. Yes. Uh, I haven't I haven't heard from Zormask if he's going to update it. Uh, Guala, thank you for the 13 months. Guala, Guala. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the resub. Back for the songs. Miniguns are basically useless. Miniguns are extremely strong. Miniguns aren't useless depending on your play style. Uh, I set up, I made a minigun uh, kill box in my dwarf run. If you want to go to the dwarf run and click to the, like the last episode, you could watch the ship launch where we used miniguns and snipers predominantly. Um, a lot of fun. So miniguns are great guns depending on your play style and your setup. The minigun kill box is so, yeah, it was, it was really good too. Like we had that side pocket with like six people throwing grenades and then the minigun just annihilating everything. Yeah, that was fun. You ever watch the dwarf run? The dwarf run was fun. Uh, I don't have it up on YouTube yet. I, I talked about it a little bit at the beginning of this stream, but I might read over it at the end of the stream. I've already read it over on my myself, so it's not going to be like first reactions to it. So I was thinking about not doing it, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll think about it. I just couldn't be here on the day that it was actually announced, so. You use more powerful than assault rifles if you don't focus on kiting. So, do you typically use more killbox setups? Like, if you're not using, if you're, if you're using, like, a traditional killbox setup, assault rifles are still good in that. But if you set up a killbox that's the right range for charge rifles, they're still amazing. There's a lot of really good guns, so. Depends on which range you want to be at and which kind of play style. Right, like chain shotguns are amazing and you can set up lots of close range killbox kind of things if you want to do that. But they're not good at like dealing with breachers, for instance, right? So um, you might want to have a couple of different styles or a couple of different guns that you use if you don't want to do a whole themed run over a certain kind. Um, yeah, there, there's, I mean, there's a lot of good gun, guns in the game. A lot of it will come down to play style. Your game lags too much in late game to do 500%. Miniguns have the highest theoretical DPS of any of the guns, like the normal guns in the game. Uh, they're really great against groups of enemy enemies, and they're really great against big targets like centipedes. There's, yeah, I might do it if we have time at the end of the stream. Can't make any promises on it for today's stream, unfortunately, but. Sapper, yeah, like sappers and breachers, you know, chain shotguns are amazing in general too, but they're not great against sappers and breachers. You can still make it work against against them, but it's a lot more dangerous. Ooh, slave ship. I haven't seen one of those in ages. A little pig child, three-year-old.
Johnston, thank you for the eight months and so I'm going on Waffles, thank you for the 40 gift subs. Thank you, Waffles. Very much appreciated. Sub goal. <laughs> we made it. We made it. Uh, thank you, Waffles. Very much appreciated. What upgrades would you recommend on a vanilla playthrough early game? Uh, what difficulty are you playing on, Raptor? Thank you, Waffles. Mono, thank you for the brand new sub also. Man, 40 gift subs. Super excited for flamethrowers. Yeah, I don't... The, the thing is, with fire in general in RimWorld, the unfortunate thing is when an enemy is on fire, they no longer have collision. So... I, as much as I'm like hoping the new fire weapons will be good, they might have to change something fundamentally about how enemies act when they're on fire to make them usable on harder difficulties. You're playing on the regular middle difficulty. Okay. Uh, so what I would suggest on, on that difficulty is looking first off at obviously what, what, Wealth, I always call it wealth that defends itself. So if you don't know, the higher the wealth, the more stuff you have, the bigger the raids are that come to your, uh, come to kill you. And so if you work on getting wealth that is going to make you tankier or, or stronger in any way, that's going to help you overcome whatever challenges you, you have going on. So I don't know what you already have, but getting to things like, you know, flak vests, uh, just flak vests and simple helmets are good for quite a long time. Uh, better weapons, long range weapons. Um... Upgrading your beds is a big one, actually, so that people sleep less and also get a higher comfortable buff. So usually in the mid game, I switch everyone's bed over to excellent. Like I will just spawn, I will, I'll just spam beds until everyone has an excellent bed. Um, but yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I'd have to see what's going on with your exact playthrough to be able to give more advice. Dag, thank you for the raid. Dag, welcome back again. Thank you, Dag. Getting spoiled. Shooting specialist with Arc. Guys, accurate shooting traits, legendary minigun. Got absolutely everything. How does sapper pathing work? Sapper pathing is trying to... Sapper pathing is basically trying to get to your beds while, while trying to avoid turret line of sight. You're noticing that your scans are finding a lot more plasteel, but they're smaller. Well, I mean, that's a big friggin' vein of plasteel, so I think it might just be random. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think you're just getting maybe lucky. I have one plasteel scan on my map. And it's a big one. Well, there's the second one over there. Yeah, I don't know. I, th I don't know if it changed. I don't want two square nodes. Yeah, I haven't seen that myself. But. It's the same as breach. Breach. There's two kinds of breachers. There's normal breachers and there's smart breachers. Smart breachers also try to avoid turret line of sight. Normal breachers do not. So what's the difference you might ask about smart breachers versus sappers? Sappers can come in multiple groups instead of one and breachers make a bigger hole. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Your app's really green at the moment. Yeah, you've been scanning longer than me probably. I'm sure. Yeah, if you're someone that uh, doesn't mind using mods, you can use quality builder and then set it to excellent or better and they'll just keep rebuilding the beds until they're excellent. Yep, yep. All right, so we'll get into this. Oh, good. We talked about the blog post a little bit at the beginning of the stream, but I haven't gone over it in super detail yet. They fixed the breacher cheese? Yes. Yes, they did. Okay, we could go trade some of the excess food at least because we still don't have as many pawns as I thought I would have. Oh, we have the festivals ready. Let's do that first. Um... What's the next closest steel? It's near the edge of the map, but I'm, I think I might just do it anyway. Just gotta be careful. Easiest, safest way to collect gene packs. Um, so you're buying them, really. Buying them. I mean, obviously you can extract them from people, which that you get a random one that way so it can be like a little lottery that doesn't always go very well but going to settlements and buying gene packs from any of the outlanders settlements or royal settlements will have them 
What's the best material for beds? Basically wood or steel. Yeah, depending on what you have more of on your map. So wood or steel. Uranium is fine too, but I mean it has the same stats. Like plasteel has the same stats. But you're basically looking for wood or metal beds. You don't just don't make your beds out of stone. So on a map where I don't have a lot of wood, I'll probably use steel. On a map where I have a lot of wood, I'll just use wood. farming should be more profitable for the time it takes yeah i wish there was some way to like pinpoint the genes that you got or separate the packs more easily it does suck sometimes that you're wanting to get like a certain gene and you get it but it pulls out a pack with three and the other two are things that you didn't want at all and the only way to single it out is to install that on someone and then hope you extract that single gene from that person again or whatever yeah what do you use for performance i don't have any mods for performance Interesting base shape. Yeah, just for fun. Just for fun. What shape are you trying to draw on your base? I have no idea. <laughs> What's the best caravan animal? Best caravan animal is an elephant. Actually, it's Thrumbo, but... Thrumbo and then elephant. But realistically, uh, I like using horses. Oh, we got a research from a book. That's what's going on. for anomaly yeah it should be a lot of fun minerals has been updated yeah i know i just haven't been using it um i might switch back to using it i used it in the 1.5 room ship yeah horses are really nice because they're low trainability it's easy to keep them they increase caravan speed by so much like they're really good caravan animals but of course like elephants are just gods you know and their advanced trainability you just gotta be able to keep them fed super dirty Talking to messages you can't see. It's cause I have two. I stream in two places at once. Put your elephants on Luciferium. Not a good idea. <laughs> so for anyone that doesn't know, Luciferium need is based on body size. And so things like elephants and thrombos need so much Luciferium. I mean, hey, if you have like thousands of Luciferium or something, by all means, by all means. They are, they're pretty good. They're pretty good in that, in that way, but. All right, we got a good crafter here. Give them a name. Yeah, but, um, Muffalo don't increase, they're not mountable, so. Come on, Twitch, load. Wow. Wow. <laughs> the person's name is just Lore. LEV switches to LOR. And yeah, I did. I think I did name this person incorrectly. I said I would check. There we go. There we go. Also, we'll give Lucy to vampires. Yep. Left to Lore. Yeah, so I told this story before, but one of the interesting things about Luciferium and Sanguifage is back when we got the patch notes for 1.4, but we didn't have all the information about biotech yet, there was a weird patch note in there that was like, Luciferium now destroys the brain. W w Luciferium withdrawal now destroys the brain. And Smurf and I were like, wait, what? It already kills them. Why does it need to destroy the brain? It needs to kill them more? That doesn't make sense. And then... Single phase came out and was like, single phase can only die if their brain's destroyed. And we we're like, oh, okay, well, there we go. So they needed a way for Luciferium to be able to kill single phase if the single phase stopped taking it. Relationship. Beyonce. Well, that sucks. 
Do you have ideology with this colony or disable it? Uh, yeah, I do have ideology. Yeah. Fluid ideology. And we'll get some more coolers going, sure. A no shelf run? Yeah, look at this. No shelf, no shelf, no shelf. You think people will be used to seeing me only make shelves places where I need them early game? Well, it, doesn't, it doesn't do me any good at the moment. It just increases wealth. Shoot mortars at them. We don't have mortars yet. I wouldn't anyway, but... Don't worry, the spam spamming of shells will eventually come, as it always does. It always does. All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch you over to a uh, production specialist, and then we're going to get your bed going. Thoughts on relic quests? Aren't they too difficult? I don't think they're difficult at all. I just... I don't, I don't think they're difficult. I don't know. What do, you, what do you think is difficult about the relic quest? They take a long time, but... Oh, right. We need another altar. Uh, let's close that. Nah, this, sh this should be fine now. It just take a long time for you to actually get the quests, unfortunately. Going shelf cold target and break the addiction? No. Hmm, you're right. You catch. Speaking of shelves, there we go. Uh, not in detail yet, but I, I might do it later. Just excited for the expansion? Everyone! Unless you hate horror, which is probably going to be some people. I'm sure it is some people. Alright, lore. Okay, that should be good for those ones. New Relic Quest. Yeah, we'll have to see. That's us. Uh, that's what I was saying, too. It's going to be a much more divisive DLC, unfortunately. But uh, All right, so I'm going to send Badger off to trade some of our excess food. Badger, 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 badger. And some of this elephant leather and human leather. All right, that should be good. For games, only if they're done right. I don't even mean games, I just mean tropes in general. Like, there are some people who just don't like anything horror related. Growing like the flesh mask. It's not going to for some people. I'm happy about it. Like, that's good for me. But this one's definitely going to be... Uh, the more we learn about it, the more it seems like it's just going to be horror only. Like, previous DLCs had multiple kind of pillars they were based on. So, like, if you didn't like children, you might still like friendly mechs or or genes. Those were so diff three very, very different things. But this one so far is like horror trope one, horror trope two, horror trope three, horror trope four. It's all horror trope stuff, so... If you're just someone that just hates that kind of thing, then you probably won't. You might not like the expansion, unfortunately, it's looking like. But for me, I'm sure I will enjoy it because I like that kind of stuff. But we're saying that Children's World isn't horror. It can be. It can be. <laughs> the single phase. That's one of the reasons why the single phase run was so good. It turned into a vampire daycare. Bloodlight should give a mood penalty inside rooms. There are only 50% light, so why would they give a mood penalty? Sun lamps don't give a mood penalty. And they're 100% light. Blinding painful in real life. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
But I'm just saying, like, how would they... How would they go about it unless they... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess they would have to make it... Yeah, I don't know. I guess, obviously, they could just program them specifically, but... Center drop, center drop. Out, out, out. Leave that door open. Turn is on. Turn is on. What do they got? Okay, we should be good. Come over here. Turn is on. You guys come over. You go up. Good job, turret. Oops. I think that's our first center drop of this run. And hey, my turret saved me again. I tell people that uh, you can turn. I have a, a short guide up on YouTube about how drop pod raids can be one of the easier raids of the game, as you can see. Uh, with this setup, so if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. It's a really short guide. Just type in like RimWorld drop pod raid guide or something like that. But the short of it is if you have an opening from inside your base to a powered turret and you don't damage them, they'll just all run to the t towards the turret to try to kill it. Turret has like infinite aggro for drop pod raiders. Which van playthrough had a vampire daycare? The single phase run, yeah. Single phase run. Uh, Eric, thank you for the 12 months. Well, that's almost full calendar year, Eric. Thank you. Yeah, the single phase run. Streams, watch some um, live stream as a new remote player. Really like content. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for letting me know. Thanks for all the things. Appreciate it. it should have figured it as much. Yeah. <laughs> single phase run. RTS moment. Kind of this kind of raids. I to fail play. Yeah, yeah. You get used to it though, you know. Like things are scary. Like the first time I had drop out raids before I knew how they worked, especially on no pause, were often scary. But once you've done it like a thousand times on no pause, it's like, all right, I know where to hold open, I know where to pull. Let me double check that they have uh explosives or not. Okay, we're good. Proceed as normal. Beer, thank you for the four months. Happy Easter. Thank you, Beer. We're gonna do our Easter stuff tomorrow. I know today is the today's the real day. The real day. Alright, we are going to give them most of the pack survival meals. We're gonna try to get all of their components. Easy peasy. And I think I'm gonna grab two more advanced components. We'll keep an eye out for crazy. Oh, I need to get some barrels, actually. We'll keep an eye out for crazy gene packs as well. Not specifically trying for genes in this one, but I mean, if we if we get some good gene packs, I'll I'll go that route. All right, nice. Play through yet? Can legless prisoners break out? No, they cannot. Prisoners can't crawl. Prisoners can't crawl. Play high Easter eggs in the neck rolls of her basset hound. <laughs> Remember you? I wasn't here for a few streams. Uh, welcome back to me. Well, I haven't been here for a few streams either. Your enemies are going to be difficult to manage without making an anomaly containment building. What do you think? Yeah, it's so hard to know. Like, that, that's the thing. I know we're just speculating, but I actually hope the new threats are really hard. Or, if not, like, baseline difficult, I hope they scale really hard on, on like, losing his fun or 500%. So I'm actually wanting more difficult threats, but I know I could very well be in the minority of that as well, you know? But... Yeah, well, I guess we'll see. I guess we shall see.
<clears throat> Careful what I wish for. I, I'd be happy with that, yeah. Sometimes the doors and walls are broken. Enemies or animals or blueprint is forbidden. So, for some reason that happens with sappers. I don't know why. It's always been that way. But if sappers destroy parts of your walls, the, the blueprint is forbidden. And if hungry animals destroy some of your wall, the blue, blueprint is forbidden. No idea. It's always been that way. It's frustrating. I have no idea what the purpose of it being that way has ever been yeah I don't know max room size you can have before needing a roof you can do 12 by x but i do 11 by x so that we can have a center point yeah, i read the second part of the anomaly preview i did during my days off because i wasn't sure if when i get to stream again but i haven't gone over it in detail on stream yet I tried the ornate door. I tried it in dev mode. It's pretty much exactly what it says on the on the box. It is a fancy door. It has less HP than just having two normal doors. So it's not like anything that you can kind of get bonuses with as far as that, that goes, like HP related. It doesn't count as its own. It doesn't have like the heat dispersal like uh, the single door. It just seems like a fancy door to put on rooms to make them fancier. There's a Mechanitor question. Why you don't use Mechanitor so often in your playthroughs? Haven't seen so many. Kind of a new viewer. So usually most of my runs are themed runs. And so I usually don't use Mechanitor or certain things that make things a lot easier. Um depending on the run. So Mechanitor, the, the battle mechs are not great, especially on the hardest difficulty, but all the worker mechs are extremely good and, and pollution is easy to deal with. So they're really, really good, super good, but I just generally don't use them unless I'm doing a themed run. No real, no real reason other than that. Less HP than two single doors added up, yeah. Two single doors will have more HP than a two by one ornate door, so. Like, they don't make where you put them any stronger. How do you deal with toxic packs? I I generally dump them away and just let them stay there until late game and just deal with the bugs and actually use the bugs as an extra line of defense. Um, but later on, I will dump them on tribals. Like this new base design? Yeah, it's just for fun, just for fun. Sandy, thank you for that 37 months. Thank you, Sandy. I usually dump it on hostile tribals because hostile tribals can't send it back. They can retaliate only, but if they retaliate, they're just bringing me more human leather and uh, human meat. So, two doors we breached. One of them broke. I don't see how it could be better. Yeah, because why? Why would you? Why would you give them two places to attack at once with a ornate door versus a single one? And then if either of those two places get hit and broken, you have the hole in, into there. Whereas before, yeah. Yeah, the, the ornate door is just weaker. The, the ornate door is not, at the moment, from everything that we've tested, useful in any kind of defensive way. It's literally just a fancy door to make a room fancier, So, which is what it's supposed to be. So there might be something that we find at a later time, but... We're seeing... No, nothing I know of. It affects something except additional move speed and manipulation. Uh, you can you can check what all is impacted in here when someone has something going on. So, some shooters behind. There's it's just no real reason. Because in that case, why wouldn't you just use two doors? Because the two doors would have more HP and last longer than the one. But I wouldn't I wouldn't want two doors in that way anyway. But there's something useful about the new doors. No, they're just literally to make a room more impressive. That's it. That's it so far. Um, I don't remember if we had a zone. What is this one for? Yeah, that one's for arts. All right.
right, that's the one for assault rifles, okay. So wake up started to make that before lore was set to it. Let's see. Is there any optimal number of colonists and how many of those should be using guns versus melee? So basically the more colonists you have, the better as long as they can fight because there is a cap on uh, eventually. So it's play style dependent quite a bit. You can do an entire run with a single colonist. You can do an entire run with any number of colonists, right? We've done it even at, at max. So it, it depends on what your play style is, but at a certain point, raids can't get harder. And so the more just overwhelming firepower you have down range makes you safer so if you can if your game doesn't lag and you can stand more pawns and you have the equipment for them then more pawns are better but i use holler animals like dogs it's the same thing i just they're they can be really good but i generally just don't need i don't need to or i'll do it as a themed run i used to use uh dogs every single run dogs do consume a lot i would actually rather have um lifters and clean sweepers than dogs if you're talking about from a min max standpoint now you asked how many of your people should be melee again it's uh it's going to be style specific and run specific but late game depending on your difficulty you're not really going to be meleeing very much unless you're building something around that theme because melee people are just going to be riskier So you might have up to three to do melee blocking like this. That's about where I where I stop. Like I wouldn't mind having a second or third melee in case he goes down. But and your difficulty comes into play. Like I said. Having some melee to block, uh, you know, bugs or, you know, scythers sometimes, depending on what kind of other stuff you have going on. Uh, bugs in general, all melee, tribal, stuff like that can be really good. So back to the question about dogs, things like that. Um, there are a lot of hauling animals that are really good. So dogs specifically eat a lot for how, how much work they do, unfortunately. They're still good to, to have, especially on smaller colony, colony scout. But for me, a lot of times I just have so many pawns that I don't need the animals. I'd rather have something that helps me more in other aspects of the game and can haul when I need. Why do I kill the hives? Don't they despawn on their own? No, it does the exact opposite. Hives multiply over time. They remove the drop on ground option from craft stations. They did not. The it's it's in the same place it's always been. It's in here. You have to go to details. The one that has it not on details is a mod. They give nuzzle. They give nuzzle if yeah, but I don't I don't want people bonding with animals either. That's why I said if you are doing it from like a min-max standpoint, clean sweepers are what I would do over over dogs for hauling, but or not clean sweepers, uh, lifters. How do you deal with huge amount of centipedes in ancient complexes? What do you? How much are you meaning by huge? Let me know. How do I avoid friendly fire so well? Because I was outside. I was no one was where they could get friendly fire. So, uh, Justin, I have a very short friendly fire guide up on YouTube. If you type in RimWorld friendly fire guide, it's got timestamps. Check that out. And if you have any more questions about it, let me know. But basically, you see the range of this, this uh, meditation spot? Now, imagine cutting off the, the edges of that. Anyone inside that cannot hit anyone else inside of it with anything other than an explosive or incendiary. So, as you can see, we were well within that. Like, everyone was within that, right? 
we we had a lot more space. We could have put. You can have like 24 pawns not shooting each other. Maybe SNG versus AR with melee block. It depends. <laughs> it depends. I know. They can both be good depending on the quality, the skill of your shooters. Yeah. SNGs are still good. Yeah, they're still good, but they're just not as versatile. Did I bind someone to the orange tree? No, and I'm not going to. Only fire guide was helpful. Another slave ship. We don't have any money, though. All right, so we have excess food. We got paste. Uh, I'm going to finally do the rituals. And then after that, we're going to work on the... Mortars. Yeah, heavy, heavy SMGs are still good guns. They, there's nothing has changed with them. They're just not as versatile. So I typically don't use them anymore. Fifteen and above. You're getting a group of fifteen centipedes at ancient complexes. I've never gotten that many. Is anyone else fifteen centipedes at an ancient complex? Yeah, I've, I've, I've never seen that many, anywhere near that many. Even on 500%, so I have no idea. I mean, I would just kite them, is, is the answer. That's almost always the answer for me with centipedes, but... Is there with Max all their experience? Interesting, yeah, I've never run into it. But yeah, I just kite centipedes in general, so that's probably what I would do in that scenario, but I haven't. Wait, what was that? What was being asked? Are you sure with the hives without bugs and anything the hives they will decay on their own? I am. Yes, I'm sure. That's literally how the hives work. Yep. Was every time in game? Hmm. Maybe I just get my relics before I get to end game. I guess I don't know. Ever tried hospitality? Uh yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yes, that's how hives work. Yeah, so hives. In you, yours might must be modded, but. In fact, like literally sometimes in runs, we will cull the bugs and leave the hives there to multiply. The hives themselves have a timer. And that timer is to multiply, not to go away. And we'll leave the hives there in order to spawn more bugs for defense and jelly and stuff. So yes, in unmodded Rimworld, hives continue to spawn. Yes. The recruits. All right. And uh, you very well might have a mod that's doing it that you don't even know that's doing it, or you don't remember that you had the mod. That happens a lot where people are like, oh, this is base game, but they just have gotten so used to using a mod over years and years and years that they don't realize it's not base game, uh, which is completely fine. But no, that is how hives work in the base game. What's up with the lack of edited videos on YouTube lately? Okay, there's two answers to that. I won't, I'm not going to go into super detail, but last year on on edited videos, I was in the whole $10,000, a little over. So I did my business taxes about a month ago, and I was un, uh, oh, lost, lost over $10,000 putting out edited content. Despite that, I want to continue the edits, but we're, we were doing uh, a new experiment with the edits. Unfortunately, the editor hasn't been able to get the, get the new edit out um, in the amount of time that I wanted. So we're trying a new style of editing, but it's just not out yet. I talked to them yesterday. I was really hoping it'd be out like three or four weeks before the expansion. It doesn't look like it's going to be. Hopefully it's out really soon, but that's all I know about it at the moment. So for one, they, the individual episodes like that, because YouTube isn't great for serial, serialized stuff, uh, which I've talked about a little bit before, we're going to try a different style of it. And uh, yeah, it's, they're just not ready. Any let you watch? Yeah. What is profitable to produce and sell besides drugs? Uh, textiles and a clothing is another really popular one. So when you're selling thing or when you're trying to get money off things like that, one of the things you want to look for is the amount of weight so that you can caravan lots of it off, right? And so drugs are really weight efficient for wealth and so are our clothing. So those are the two big ones to like caravan off and trade, honestly. So clothing and drugs. If 44 colonists only 6-8 die. Nice. 
So, uh, you know what? Not a lot's going on at the moment. So I'll talk about it a little bit more of the edits. So I really like the edits. I like watching them myself. I know a lot of people enjoy them. And it's hard to quantify how many people find the channel off just the edits, right? So was it $10,000 worth of people? Probably not. But YouTube is not great on serialized content because all videos compete against each other, even on the same channel. And so what will happen, and, and YouTube is really bad about showing the next one to people. So if YouTube had like a series thing where you could, it would recommend a series kind of like Netflix or something would do instead of an individual episode, that would be better. Because what happens is, let's say we get like nine episodes into a, into one of these, right? Uh, for edits. And it's going to, when I put out episode nine, it's going to try to show episode nine to a bunch of people that have never watched any of it. And a very few of those people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to go check for episode one. And the people that are just like episode nine, I'm not going to click this. What ends up happening is YouTube is like, oh, People aren't, they don't know, YouTube doesn't know it's a number. It, it doesn't know that it's episode nine of something, right? Even if it's in a playlist. And so it's like, the algorithm's like, oh, no one's going to this right now. So people don't, this isn't as good of a video. So people aren't going to like it. So I'm also not going to show it to people that watch previous things on this channel or previous on this playlist. So YouTube ends up um, like having the videos compete with each other on the channel individually and on, on YouTube individually. And it doesn't show it as a series. And so the, not just the click rate, but the amount of impressions that YouTube tries to push out drops tremendously because YouTube is trying to show it as its own video. So series like that, unless you have an incredibly high number, like a huge viewer base, just don't really do well. And the fall off is pretty, pretty hard. So the next edits we're testing to see if we can kind of circumvent that a little bit. And I was hoping they'd already be out, but they're not. There, I knew the creator would have a playlist, so it plays auto. I have a playlist for everything, multiple playlists for everything, but yet, yeah, unfortunately, you can't rely on that. Not a fan of the edits. Well, that's why they're both are on there, right? If you only like edits, they're on there. If you only like full length, they're on there too. All right. Yeah, thank you for that, Munkin. <laughs> it does help out a ton, I'm sure you know. Okay, so we are going to... Now that we can make our own stuff, we just need to be scanning more. So I'm going to get more of um, more of these down, I think. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind talking about those kind of things, yeah, since it was asked. What I think about the new serums, we'll have to see what all kinds there are and how they function. Yeah, if there's like downsides to them or like what are the are there addictions to them? You know, like over. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I know it's just speculating, right? We can just speculate, but I'm not sure. They have the potential to be really good, but they also have the potential to just be something we don't use at all. Will they tell a story? Did 1.5 introduce ranged insects? No. A lot of times YouTube has recommended the wrong part. Yeah, even with a playlist. Yeah, so all my things are in playlists. And it'll still be like... Some people will be like, hey, it's showing episode 9 when I'm done with episode 4. Yeah. Isn't long range scanner better though with a far skip and transport pods? Yes and no. I don't have far skip. I mean, sure, if you have a bunch of, if, if you have animals to put the material on and you scan for a specific, it takes longer to scan it. I would rather have infinite stuff on my map so I don't have to leave. But yeah, if you have drop pods and enough of them, if you have that much resources without mining on your own map or somehow before that, then sure. I mean, that's that's like saying, isn't it better to just use the royalty shuttle to haul back 50,000 steel from somewhere else? Yeah, of course it is, but I'd rather have all the stuff on my base and it'd be safer. Um, I'm not sure yet. I might do it at the end of stream, correct? Yeah, I've done that too. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, but I got to tell you, I'm sure like 99% of people don't read the description or the pinned comment. I know they don't, <laughs> based on the comments I get. Be nice to add more insect types. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're getting that as far as 
previews are showing. Any specific reason for this base design? No, just for fun. Just for fun. All right. So uh, who do we have that's good at arts? It's Hero. Okay. Yeah, I prefer, so long range general scanners have a longer time, min, minimum time between, or average time between, whatever, that they scan for something. The benefit is that you can target what you want, so targeting specifically components, which you just can't roll and hit components, is good. But then you have to go get them, so you're at risk of ambush unless you can drop pod and uh, far skip back. We are not going to have far skip. I'm not doing any side casting stuff in this. Um... And also, the people that are away can't help defend the base in case something happens. So I'd just rather have everything on the map. I can just have infinite on my map and not worry about it. Barracks or individual rooms? Use whatever you want. If you're min-maxing, though, a barracks is better for min-max. Alright, uh, let's see. Yeah, barracks are, uh, for better or worse, barracks are just incredibly, incredibly strong. One of the best things in the game is just one giant room with concrete and statues. Base. Yeah, just for fun. Yeah. I understand that, but you can't far skip if you have too much weight. So what I'm meaning by that, Kramov, is you you cannot far skip if you your caravan is immobile. Um, so of course you can far skip with components because they're light or you know a little bit of gold. But if you're wanting to go out and get like uh, a bunch of plastic or something like that, you have to make sure you don't get so much that your caravan is immobile because you can't far skip even with immobile caravans. They changed that really quickly after Royalty came out. Go on, English. Yeah, so I, I just prefer doing it on the map. And like I said, just having everyone here, like, we're going to scan enough, right? Like, and having the idle pawns, like, I might as well have them scanning, you know. Just personal preference, I guess, but I just do it mainly out of safety as well, I suppose. To keep your base always clean have everyone on cleaning if they don't have much else to do and then typically i'll have a couple people that have higher priority on cleaning another thing is i won't have the home zone typically this is this is not typical to me for me this is atypical but usually i won't have the home zone covering a bunch of outside stuff so they don't have to clean outside either we're making individual rooms through ponds i just did a themed run only on themed runs if I'm min-maxing, then no, I will never make individual rooms. But I literally just did a run that took over a month where everyone had royal bedrooms. So yes, I do sometimes. It reminds me, I got a comment. Uh, we talked about it not too long ago, actually. I got a comment on YouTube that was like, man, all your runs are the exact same. You never make individual rooms. And I was like, well, I can tell you haven't clicked through some of my other runs because we do have a themed run probably every three or four runs where I don't do um, like min-max barracks setup. But, uh, which is fine. I have so much content, it's hard to click through it all, right? But, but yes, I I just did a single phase run where I didn't have... All right, we had all individual rooms. And before that, I had a Mechanitor run where, of course, he had an individual room. And before that, we did the bow-only run where we had a big circle room. Yeah. But yes, yeah, I have r runs. Look for the single phase run on YouTube. That's the most recent one where everyone had royal rooms. Balancing barracks by not allowing workstations. Here's the thing about balancing barracks. Most people don't use them. They already buffed barracks. So I would be surprised if they ever nerf barracks unless it becomes like it's a big trend. I can't see what most people, what most players do, but based on comments, based on what I see, the large majority of players don't use barracks. And they definitely don't use a single big room for everything. Most people aren't min-maxing and doing that so the the vast majority of players i think don't use things like that so nerfing or changing barracks to hit 
the few people, the very, like, fraction and percentage of people that do min-max playthroughs would be an odd thing for them to spend their time on. If they do, then, you know, whatever. Well, I'll adapt to it. It doesn't matter. I do all, like, tons of different kinds of runs, right? But I would be surprised if they spend too much time nerfing something that I doubt most people even use, so... Anything new this week in 1.5? They reverted the double-click change. They made it so people try to not block workstations when reading books. A couple other small things. If you're min-max, barracks are really boring. What? So, I, I've got to... Boring is in the eye of the beholder, much like beauty. So, it's interesting to me that people are like... A barracks is boring, but they will do the same room setup every time. Like... I've seen people that are like, yeah, def define boring. What makes it more boring? So I see, I've seen people that do this every single run. This will be four bedrooms and then they'll put uh, a hallway and then they'll do four more bedrooms every single run. Why is this doing this the same every single run? Not boring, but combining them is boring. Never really understood it, but anyway, it doesn't really matter what some people consider boring and what some people don't. Just don't play the way you find boring. Feel attacked right now. Used to be like that in 1.0. Yeah, me too. <laughs> is there a purpose behind the base layout? No, it's just for fun. Yeah, that's what I said. Like most people, most people make a normal base. Yeah, so. You like the 25 by 25 that I do? Yeah, I like it too, but. You don't do the exact amount that I do, so it's wrong. Like I said, boring is in the eye of the beholder, right? Some people, that's like uh, the other day when, when someone was like, well, I, for one, I'm really glad they got rid of the singularity. And I'm like, all right, well, well, how come? Why are you? Well, I never used it, okay? Me either. I used it twice. So why why do you care that they got rid of it? Well, I just find it a really boring way to play. Okay, so were you playing that way? No. All right. So someone that really likes playing with the singularity, someone that really likes it, and that's their favorite way to play, and they actually have fun with it, and for whatever reason that you can't understand, which is fine, they actually have fun with it. Why do you want them to no longer have fun with it if you weren't using it anyway? And generally, there's just no answer for that. So... Again, I don't really care what's changed, what isn't, what's nerfed, and what isn't in the game. I will... It's my job to play it. And I we've played so many different ways that I'll overcome whatever they, they give me. I'm not worried. But I do sometimes worry about them taking out too much variety. So, like... With a sandbox game, it can... Not RimWorld in this current state, but with a sandbox game, it can sometimes be frustrating when the developers are like, I only want people to play this way. This is the right way to play my sandbox game. Is that really a sandbox game anymore? Like, I'm not saying that RimWorld is having is doing that, but it's one of those tricky things where I've seen other games do that, and it's like, all right, well, I guess I'll just play something else then. Some people aren't happy unless their favorite way to play is the only way to play. Yeah. Why is my melee pawn armed? Here's why. Because if I arm him, he's going to have minus five from wielding it, and then another minus five for using it. So he's going to have minus 10 mood. So he's literally just for melee blocking. Why only one melee pawn? Because I only need one person to block a door at the moment. Time to open the Ancient Danger. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot. I forgot. That was one of the things we talked about last time. Yeah, thank you for the reminder. I might do that. What are the cons of cave base? Do you mean a mountain base or a map with caves? Because that's kind of different. The cons of a mountain map are generally growing area if you don't have tunneler and insects and that's it those are pretty easy to overcome no fun allowed that's right oh you have seen them <laughs> So the stream and ask why does he always build an hourglass base? <laughs> That's funny. That reminds me, uh, a 
we were doing a themed run, right? So I was using, I hardly ever use mods. So I was using like a handful of mods, like literally five mods. I had someone new to the stream come in and was like, hey, have you ever done runs where you don't use a lot of mods? Or do you just always use mods? It's like, <laughs> it's, you just get that, yeah. I have so many runs out, it's kind of funny. People sometimes ask, do you ever play vanilla? Uh, yeah, occasionally, occasionally. Let's play a single game, player game however you want a wall. Apparently, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, just, yeah. And again, none of, the, none of this stuff bothers me. It's just all funny. It's all funny. Yeah, I call it simulator, but when time I change it to story generator, it would seem to want to push the player out of the home tile. Or you never use walls. You've fell into the temptation. You built a wing shape base. I've done that a few times on accident. <laughs> you ever play Rimworlds? No, I've heard of good things though. Good things. And silver. So lots of seal there. I think I'm just going to extend this down. Uh, let's put this somewhere with sandstone. Free blackboards boost learning speed. Yes, that's where it caps. I'll show you. So lots of important information and things like this. But look, learning rate bonus. Connected blackboards, 3 out of 3, 160% increase. Marble... Marvel. <laughs> he keeps doing bases like that, everyone, yeah. But. Oh, hang on. I wonder if the steel was in here. I didn't even realize, so. Yeah, screw that. Uh, let's just go straight into getting the steel. How many miners do we have? Really only one, so. What kind of ending are you going for? I'm not sure. Not sure. Does butchering outdoors increase risk of food poisoning? No. It does not. I've done a nomadic run. I did a partial nomadic run back in like 1.1. I just didn't like it. Yeah. Vitals monitor? Oh, you can connect eight beds to vitals monitor. Sure it works, but yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't work like that in real life, yeah. Eight hospital beds hooked up to a single finals monitor and you just you have to click through each bed. Where do colonists go after the endings? Space. I don't know, yeah. The final frontier. I to dig too deep. Yeah, I know. And that's pretty close to the biofuel refinery. So we want to be a little bit, a little bit cautious about that. All right. Uh, we are all set to get more pawns if we can. So let's do some rituals. What changes made to it? It's been patched to not work. Similar just literally doesn't work anymore. What flooring do I do? Usually concrete. If you mean, what did they do that specifically changed the singularity? They basically fixed the peaking exploit that allowed you to get extra range, peek and shoot enemies before they could shoot you. That's gone. Best craftable melee in your opinion? Uranium maces and plastic longswords. I don't, I don't really think it's an opinion though. That's just literally like pretty, pretty cut and dry as far as like I have the craftable ones. Uh, so we can reform again after this if we want. Space! Good. How do you feel about the fact Green Goblin Spider-Man are buddies now? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know they were. I have no feelings on that. Is there any point in the double wall if they have a door there? Won't they just breach through? What? No. 
Yeah, there's a huge point in the double doors or the double walls. Yeah. It's one of the main aspects of uh, of no kill box, but also just in runs in general. Raiders don't aim for doors unless they see someone going through a door. Is it bad to use a nice house or stone flooring? It's not bad. It's just not wealth efficient if you're trying to min-max. Definitely use it. It's fine. Wait, do we get it? Oh, I think they already left. Yeah, I didn't realize. Why are we getting another slaver? Yeah, these aren't... The slaver one already left, right? No, no, no. Genie. An imp. I don't care. Bloodlust can will interest slothful. I normally wouldn't take this person. I kind of just want people right now, so I'm going to say, oh well. Need another doctor anyway. Oh, I never changed Soviet. I was like, wait a minute. These stats look different than what I just looked at. Yeah, that's fine. The crawling will be nerfed to the breacher cheese because pawns will try and crawl far off sleeping spots. I don't think so. How would that be a benefit for you? Like, why would you? Okay, I don't understand. I... No, I don't think that'll be changed. Even a couple of chaotic calls around is always, <laughs> always fun. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you're doing, like, wealth efficient, the most wealth efficient for getting your barracks or single room up or whatever is generally just concrete and statues, but... I have three blackboards there. Learning rate. Connected blackboards. Three out of three. 160%. Because three blackboards increase the learning speed of a single one. Thoughts on sniper rifle? Sniper rifle is a tool for certain things, like pulling a siege... It can be useful, but sniper rifles have too long of a cooldown warm-up time, even with bonuses, generally speaking, to be like a build-around sort of gun. Can you change the zoom out ally enemy colors 1.5? Partially. Colors, no. You can make it silhouettes, dots, or nothing. I think. Highlight mode, silhouettes or dots, character highlighting, yeah. Why no armors? I just haven't made any yet. Just haven't made any. I will get black vests relatively soon. Now that we have our steel coming in. Back, I think I'm gonna do this. How are we doing on excess is kind of low. Uh, that's okay, though. That's not made it yet. I heard of five meals? No, never heard of them. Why do I care about increasing mood? Can you see the mood? Like, everyone's mood is max aside from the brand new person because they just got here. So why why would I waste time and stuff? You set a threat level at 10% while well, raids cap at a thousand points. Uh oh, on oh, wealth independent mode. I haven't I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It ends up being a multiplier on your difficulty, so it would still depend on your difficulty that you set it for. More of a joke comment? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. Just like, have you ever heard of shelves? Yeah, no. The answer is again, no. Best way to boost comfort? Get an excellent or better, get all your beds to excellent or better and add one dresser to all of it. Excellent bed plus dresser caps out comfort. 
If you do by phase, it caps out comfort twice a day. Buy meals walls, yeah. Would it be easier to disable bugs? Yeah. Winston waves if it gets past for 1.5. Will I do it? Yes, yeah. I don't know that it will, though, from what I've heard. All right, let's let's actually get some stuff done here. Okay, uh, how many cooks do we have? We still only have one cook. Ouch. Okay. We're done a run. We did all three innings at the same time. Uh, kind of, but not Arco next. Well, I guess not then. No, I don't really care for Argo Nexus, so I never ended up doing it, but I have done multiple ship launch. I did ship launch and royalty at the same time a couple times, and I've done multiple ship launches. Um, the 20 year run up on YouTube has the stacked ones like that, but yeah, I didn't do Arco Nexus. Arco Nexus didn't exist at that time, though. The run I'm talking about. Lady questions, just like a lot of questions about comic books. I'm gonna put a question I'm awkward about. Today is definitely question day, which is fun. All right, so we can reform and run more of these as long as we have the wood to do so, and we do. And I really want to get more pawns, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I'm not sure what we want to reform to. We actually have tea coming in now, so probably just high life. Yeah, probably. All right, we'll grab high life. All right, so we're going to remove all of these. I know you can get seven, but it doesn't reset them, so. Uh, we're going to stay with Sky Lantern for now. I don't know. I think we should change over to Dance Party. We have the materials to do it. Dance Party has a chance to increase work speed as well, and it has a higher mood increase. So yeah, I'm gonna switch over to Dance Party. All right, so we're gonna do anytime random recruits. Anytime random recruits. Anytime random recruits. Anytime random recruits. All right. Good enough for now. Forgot about Ancient Danger. I haven't forgotten about the Ancient Danger. I'm just not doing it. Want to remove the weapon stuff? Uh, no, I'm still not going to for now. We're at the point where our melee blocker is literally just there to hold the spot. So I think it's fine. Did I enjoy the melee god song? I know what you're talking about. Melee God song. Ringar, 26 months at tier two. Thank you, Ringar. That's a long time, man. Added three bottles for the 17 months. Sandy, thank you again. 37. It's in Discord. I have not had time to check to catch up on Discord, so hopefully I'll have time to check whatever that is at some point before too long. But yeah, I have not. I have not been on vacation. <laughs> I've been very, very busy. Sappers. Okay, let's go. Not that, like, Discord is a vacation thing or something, but you know what I mean. I've been very busy. Oh, we have a few people that aren't good shots yet. I just noticed. Wait, was this multi-prong? I didn't even check. Holy crap. Could have been Ben.
Did you get a couple days off? It's Easter? No. Uh, we'll be doing our Easter stuff tomorrow, but partially tomorrow. We'll be doing some Easter stuff, but no. I, I got a lot of stuff I need to get done. It's hard to take time off when your day is full of medical tests and doctor visits. <laughs> like, you can't just be like, all right, I'm taking today off. I didn't stream on those days, but. Double passion in cooking? Yeah. Oh, well. Is it possible to farm infinite relics with fluid ideology? Yes. It is. It is. Okay, keep scanning for now. We're gonna roll these again. Go. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, we switched over, right? So, let's get this made. Best drug in the game? Lucerum and go juice. <laughs> Your questions? No, it's my job. Disco time. Is this vanilla or modded? Check the description. It's basically vanilla with DLC, but check the description. It has the mods in there. My mod, though, is a mod that makes it so I can't pause and a mod that gives me more music. That's it. UI mod? I have no UI mods. UI is how the UI is in the base game. Yeah, check the description on YouTube if you want the mod list, but it's literally no pause challenge and P music. And something that shows Celsius and Fahrenheit at the same time, yeah. Ever want to do another good guy run? That was going to be my next run had we not had the DLC announced, yeah. All right, disco time. Why are those casting shadows? I don't know. That's another thing that changed in 1.5. cover the preview too not in as much detail as the first one i went over it a little bit at the beginning of the stream i might go over it in detail at the end of the stream i haven't decided yet oh folks never managed to do that nothing i know of schnicker yeah. i haven't either come on where are these joins yeah the shell change 1.4 was huge yeah come on do armchairs provide a lot of comfort? Yes. The new couches actually provide a little bit more. Slow learner. God, I hate slow learner. But I just want people in this run, so I might I might keep him. He's a body modder. God. Slow learner might be my least favorite trait in the game. <laughs> Ugh. We'll, we'll think about it. See what else we get. Are you related, related to anyone? No. You actually have... Yeah. Alright. One more. Do you think that it's cool that they're releasing the books alongside the cartoons at least? I, I have like no current opinions on any pop culture things because I'm just... I'm so busy that I haven't looked at, seen, read about, heard about any of these things. Uh, I liked X-Men when I was a kid. I liked playing the X-Men arcade game, you know? But uh, I haven't looked at anything X-Men related in a long time. Although the X-Men, the original, the X-Men song from the 90s uh, does still pop into my head and it has ever since I was a kid. That's all my current knowledge about current X-Men is. <laughs> Is there a mod that increases the speed, but has the option to toggle the no pause as aspect on and off? I don't know of one that you can turn pause on and off, but there is something called smart speed where you can just edit the speed only. Yeah, but that, that, that whole... 
definitely comes into into mind at random times. And I am going to keep them. I probably shouldn't, but... Rename them Mandatory Fun. <laughs> also, I don't think I renamed Montez here or Soviet. So let's get those named. And since we didn't get anything good off this, I think... I am going to get ready to do the Ancient Danger. We just got to make the prison a little bit better before I do it. Rocky prisoners in the prison. In the prison. I made a little prison. I usually have the prison connected, but I just I just made a small one out here just to just to have it. Um work with this weird layout. Work to look interesting with a weird layout. One more party. Oh, there is one more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. For some reason I thought I did it. Artistic ever becomes a desired stat in any of the expansions. Uh, art is... I always like to have at least one person with, with decent art, yeah. Hey, we got a second one. Just in general. Art doesn't have anything else it's really doing, though. A wimp. A Neanderthal wimp. Fast lurter on Neanderthal. Wow, look at you. You... Okay. He's pretty dapper, though. You know? He's got that going for him. DLC is not out. DLC comes out on the 11th. Hey! Where are you gonna crawl to now, huh? That's what you can use crawlers for, door checks. <laughs> All right, there we go. See, he stopped crawling, so we know uh, we don't have an opening to our base. Nice. How is our mood never going down? Because believe it or not, this is extremely impressive. Here, let's take a look. Fun party, plus 19. Unforgettable party, plus 16. Sky Lantern Festival times three, plus 14. Moderate expectations, plus 12. Unforgettable Skylander plus 10. Attended party 6. Extremely impressive dining room 6. Quite comfortable 6. Extremely impressive wreck 6. Like, look at this. What do you mean? Yeah, that's how. <laughs> this guy has got like... Crazy amount of it. What's the point of crawling? So crawling can be very beneficial because they get out of harm's way. And they can also get themselves inside. While they're not being attacked. So, for instance, I had someone that was having a breakdown outside the wall once. Get downed from... Uh, the Manhunters, and I couldn't go out there and save them, but that downed pawn crawled through the double doors and I was able to save them. Would I rather have smooth tail or elongated fingers in real life? <laughs> oh god. I guess I'd have to go with the... The keyboard would be really awkward if my fingers are even longer. I guess I'd have to go with the tail. Do enemies not attack crawlers? Enemies do not attack crawlers, but they will kidnap them. Need more miners. Uh... Put you on mining for now. Tell us someone's okay. Do a video on Anomaly 2. I haven't decided yet because I already read it while I was not able to stream the other day. I might do a little bit at the end of the stream. But I haven't 100% decided. Shares be the hard part. Yeah, I know. Are there many people in naming queue? Only like 3,000, so. Only like 3,000 people in naming queue. It's fine. 
Something I want to fix or change by the time the expansion comes out. I don't know if I'm going to have time, though. Uh, we are currently out of steel. We gotta get the mining done. Why not have a fridge? I don't need one. Food's going bad because we overproduce, but I'm just... I just don't need one. I'm trading overproduced food, or I was. I'm not really using meat, and I'm not overproducing meals, so... Yeah. Don't need them either. Nice. So in a typical run, I don't overproduce as much food as this, but I kind of planned on having like 30 pawns by now. So... I made enough food for that, but uh, typically I just grow enough food that we need and I don't overproduce meals. So I put rules to use the meat for food first and then I use vegetables only if we ever use all of our meat and I only make enough meals that they can eat before it goes bad. Uh, yeah, typically it. And then I just don't overproduce, but I overproduce because I thought I was going to have a lot more pawns. They fixed revert the double clicking. Yes, they reverted it. Yep, yep. Happy Easter. Thank you, pineapple. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. All oh, right, uh, so I need to get components and we need to make the, um, the mortars. Do we get psionic pawns this run? Probably not. Finish playing this game and move on to other games because it sounds like you've been playing Rim for decades now. It's my job. Like, if I move on, to, if I stop playing RimWorld and go to a different game, my family loses like 80% of their income, of, of the family's income. So it's, I mean, I don't know. It's like going to the doctor and being like, you know what? You've been a doctor now for like six years. Aren't you getting sick of it? Have you ever thought about going and becoming an electrician? But yeah, uh, RimWorld, it's a fun job, you know, but it's still a job. It's, uh, I wouldn't have played 6,000 hours of RimWorld if it wasn't my job. I played Star Sector. I played Star Sector for just a few hours. It was all right. It's been, it's been updated pretty heavily since last time. Stable income a wall. A little bit. Let's go to Universe. How can you get in on Rimmanship? Just join the Rimmanship Discord. There's a Rimmanship website, and I think the Discord link is on their website. Uh, the next Rimmanship is actually coming up this this next Saturday. The uh, Rimmanship SDM is this next Saturday. Uh, it's crazy that it's so soon. What? I've never seen that. 70 components? Did they reset while we were here, and that's like a no-pause weird thing? Thanks, boy. To choose what genre of games you could play, which would it be? Keep the same amount of income or make more? So, I like pretty much every genre of game within reason. Like, I just really... Like, we, we've had a joke about it before in, in the stream where it's like, Adam, I think you just like video games. I had to just pick one where I could maintain the exact same level of viewership and income as RimWorld, but on a whole genre... 
I would probably just pick strategy because it's so oh, it's it has so many subgenres as well. Like I really like playing Total Warhammer, for instance. So, uh, I, and I've I played it a lot on the stream, even though it's bad for the stream because I like it so much. Being able to play that when I want with the same number of stuff would be same number of your stuff would be great. Favorite juice and sauce? Ooh, I don't know. Juice is a tough one. I feel like I want to go orange juice, but I don't know. There's so many. Favorite sauce is also really hard. You know what I'm really liking right now? My favorite sauce kind of changes, but I think my favorite sauce right now is um, uh, I'm using this. Uh, what is it? Habanero something. Oh my God. What's the name of it? I can't remember. There's some kind of habanero wing sauce that I've been using a lot lately. That's like, did you do a playthrough of Thayer Billions? Yes, I did. Exclamation T-A-B, I think. I did a hardest difficulty, no pause, Thayer Billions. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to take a break from Total Warhammer 3 for the RimWorld DLC. But I'm hoping that we'll have enough RimWorld stuff done that when Thrones of Decay comes out, I'll be able to at least switch over partially. Partial weeks, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> if gravy is a sauce, then breakfast gravy. Yeah. Chess stream. God, I haven't played chess in forever. Ginger teriyaki is a... Yeah, that's a good one. Or some kind of... Oh, mango habanero, that is. I currently have a mango habanero sauce I've been using on chicken all the time. All the time. It's been really good. It's my current favorite, I guess. My favorite sauce changes quite a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, RTS games. Uh, exactly. There's there's actually a game. Oh, God, I can't remember the name of it. Um, there's an RTS game that I played the demo of about a week and a half, two weeks ago that is very much like Command & Conquer, and I'm super looking forward to that. It's like a the small indie one, too. Oh, my God. I, I have it saved somewhere. Save now. I'm going to have to... I might minimize this. Ever play Valheim? I already played Valheim. Will I ever play it again? No idea. Pro probably not, though. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to minimize and get the name of it. I saved the name of it because I was like... Impressed by it. One second. Tempest Rising. Tempest Rising. I played the... No, no, no. Yeah, the Dwarf one looks like original. But Tempest Rising looks like almost like a new Command & Conquer. Very, very similar. And I really enjoyed it. It really hit the nostalgia, but with better graphics. Tempest Rising. So, speaking of, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna get their game back up here. I'm a really big RTS fan. I was actually catching up on GSL this morning while I was eating breakfast. I looked at Dwarf too, though. Ever played RimWorld? No, I hope to be able to try it out someday, though. Tempest Rising. I think their demo is still up. It, I tried it during Steam Next Fest in February. But I think they left their demo up instead of taking it down. So, uh, yeah, it is pretty much Command and Conquer, though. What did I like about Valheim? I liked Valheim just fine. It was very grindy, but most survival games like that are. Um, yeah, Valheim was fine. It's just I don't have time to play things off stream, and it's not a good stream game for my channel. So that's why I probably won't go back to it. All right, so we need to get mortars and then uh, Ancient Danger after that, but I really got to make sure I get mortars set up. We got plenty of components. We're getting the steel mined. Okay. And I got to get all this stuff situated. In fact, I'm just going to chop some of the wood out here. Finally get shelves done. I feel pretty safe at the moment. Our firepower is kind of silly, so... They nerf barracks in StarCraft. Will that impact your RimWorld use of them? No. <laughs> barracks now cost 25 more minerals. Suddenly, Terran no longer win games. Does Nimble affect dodge chance? Yes. In the rear with the gear. SCB ready. Do I spend much time preparing for the story runs? So usually when we do a, a story themed run, we will flesh it out a bit at the end of the stream on the previous run. So like the single phase run, we made the ideology and stuff on, on one of the streams. 
What if you could float your RimWorld barracks? <laughs> See a new map. Yeah, I, yeah, but I'm talking. I'm talking about a new RTS game that feels like, uh, feels like Command and Conquer. It's not Command and Conquer. Command and Conquer took a really bad route, unfortunately. But I did do a playthrough of Command and Conquer Remastered back when that first came out. That was a lot of fun. That was very nostalgic. But yeah, that Tempest, uh, Tempest Rising. It's it's pretty much Command and Conquer, and I'm happy with that. Like instead of Tiberium, they have like. You, they mine Tempest, but it's basically the same thing. <laughs> Pretty good. So I was just trying to cancel the haul in, not the, not the other stuff. Mutilus Rush under six minutes. Did I think I'd play be playing Rimworld this long when I first played it? Uh, no. Well, kind of because it was kind of a business decision. I mean, I, I couldn't have known, right? But I was prepared for it. See that boat game from the RimWorld? What? A different game from the RimWorld developers? Are you sure? Ludian? Pretty sure Ludian is still a single game developer, right? Tempest Rising. Van Conger is like Hell Divers of Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah. You mean. Yeah, yeah. You mean the modded people? Yes. Yeah, there are people. Yeah, the Villa Expanded people. I was about to say. Yeah, I don't think so. Curse crew from Villa Expanded. Gotcha. That's not from the RimWorld devs. Yes, Oscar does the art for Ludian, but I wouldn't say it's from the RimWorld devs. Yeah. Thoughts on regular grenades? Uh, frag grenades can be really good against bugs, but frag grenade grenades can be good in general. However. They were mainly good against uh, melee blocking and killing insects, but now the insects got nerfed. They're not really needed as much, so... Frag grenades, very deadly against your colonists. Not super valuable to use anymore. What are my thoughts on the bandolier? Bandolier is, is good, it's just it doesn't... You're trading off defense for damage, right? So that's why I never really use them. Same thing for the... Um, for the headpiece that increases shooting as well. It's like you can't wear a helmet with it, so I'm, I'm never going to use it. Oscar makes the art for Rimworld? Yeah. Yep. Insects nerfed in 1.5? No, insects nerfed in 1.4. Insects have been nerfed for like 18 months now. What got nerfed with insects? Insects are half raid points now. Before 1.4, at max raid points, you get 40 hives. As, since 1.4, you get 20. Yeah, Gunlink and Bandolier. Yeah, they're good, but you trade defense for it, right? So there's always that, that risk. Why did they do that? I'm not sure. They either did it for performance reasons or because people were having trouble in mountain bases. I, I don't know. I didn't say it was just part of the, part of the patch. All right, so let's go ahead and get this set up. We're going to go ahead and make high explosive do until we have X. I'm going to put that as just 20 for now. Drop on the floor, check nearby. Okay, security. Uh, we're going to get, I think we'll just do like three of these. And the patch said that the mortar thing was fixed. But I'm kind of scared of it still, so I'm gonna spread these out more. <laughs> I don't, I don't even trust the patch notes. There we go. Time to catch up. Yes, I'm caught up on GSL. Yeah, that was a 
Man, that last group was really good. There was a lot of good games. So, uh, hopefully I don't spoil anyone, but I'm hoping we get, like, peak hero, like, like back on Hero 1, um, a couple years ago, it was, there were some really crazy games, but anyway, yeah. That was a good group. Good group. And the two people I wanted to get out got out. Bjorn is one of my favorite players of all time, but I'm, I'm glad that Hero got out over him. The mortar hitting nearby objects? Yeah, supposedly that's been fixed now. Toxic ass. Toxic ass is really fun against anyone, or uh, really good against anything that's not immune to it, for sure. What was happening with mortars? Mortars had friendly fire right next to them. So sometimes you would shoot a mortar, and if you had a wall, like, here, the mortar would just blow up <laughs> and blow, kill your people. All right, so mortars are done. Um... If we're going to use this prison way down here, let's let's change a couple things here. So we don't have to come down there as much. This is really weird. I'm, I'm building a lot weirder than normal, but... Whatever, it's fine. Oh yeah, sorry, Will. I'm glad I prefaced that first, yeah. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy too. Uh, yeah, so for anyone that does watch GSL, slight spoilers coming still from it. Um, so the Maru nuke was not as juicy as the one against Solar a couple of years ago. Well, it definitely memorable. And then I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to be like a couch quarterback, you know, even for stuff like that. But I don't understand why it felt like Bion was like so opposed to getting more s starport units. It's very, very weird. And it really came back to bite him, but... Anyway. Yeah, it's weird, yeah. What's the range of the new wall lights? Uh, I'll grab one. They're pretty good, yeah. Cool. Ever seen this done before? Now prisoners will eat out of that. Alright, so now we have a place for this. We should be able to deal with anything that comes out of the Ancient Danger, so I'm just going to pop it. Hopefully don't pop caskets. And we can get some more people here. All right, let's go. Mood is extremely good. So we're just going to pop this from over here and maybe it'll be an easy to deal with one. Oh, uh, yeah, it's fine. Just spread out because there is a little bit of fire coming out. Bad. Tesser on first. Scorcher second. Pull back. The rest is easy to kite. So as soon as we get a volley off on the centipede, we step back. Or it can shoot. Probably three volley it with this amount of... Eight, maybe three? Let's see. Yep. Okay. Four caskets. All right. So let's do... Work zone here. And we'll grab... Uh, I guess we'll just put a marble door down there really quick. Armor only run in Tundra. It's pretty fun. Makes hunting and ranching a lot more desperate interesting. Yeah. Uh, are you doing ideology? Ranching is really strong. It actually got buffed, but apparently they buffed it too much. And so then they, they reset that, that buff a little bit. Only a cheater would... Oh, I got another story about that. Remember, um... <laughs> you remember when we were talking about it's funny that um, people are like, you can't win without a kill box, and you do it without a kill box, and they say something else? I literally had someone a couple days ago that when they were like, I bet you can't do 5% without a kill box, I was like, man, I've done no kill box several times, and they said, yeah, but 
when you did a no kill box, you had you had outer walls that was like a pseudo kill box. And so when you would go out to fight people, they would come around corners, and that was basically a kill box. And I was like, man, come on. And then I was like, well, I did a run with no walls either while we're, where we were out in the open. They're like, yeah, but you use like 25 assault rifles. And I was like, all right, I'm done, just done talking to this person. <laughs> so. And the funny thing about it, too, is um, this same person posted a screenshot of their base, and they had a... Um, they had an area like this in their base, right? Okay, let me show you. And I don't care how you play. I really don't. Like, whatever you're having fun with. They had an area that was like... Um, There's like 50 turrets in here and they were like only a new plays of the kill box and their base had a screenshot of this <laughs> and i was like isn't that a kill box they're like no it's not a kill box because it doesn't have a tunnel that they come into i was like oh okay that makes sense and their the rest of their base was behind this to be clear like their base is back here so their base was in here and they had this leading in and they were like that's not a kill box <laughs> But, but this is, like, I don't care how you play, but man, you gotta be honest with yourself, right? Play with kill boxes, play without kill boxes. I'm happy playing both ways. I'm happy if you play both ways, but it was so funny when I saw their base. I had another comment the other day, too, on a no kill box run. Say, I'm glad you don't play with a kill box. Kill boxes are only for noobs. And I was like, well, I guess I'm a noob because I use kill boxes sometimes, too. And there, and then... But yeah, but you can do it without. And I was like, all right. I was like, so do you play without kill boxes? And they didn't show a picture, but they're like, yeah. I said, what difficulty and what mods are you using? And they are playing on 100% and they linked a thing with like 150 mods, including embrasures and other things. I'm like, oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> so funny. I don't know what people's obsession is about it. It's just... Bizarre. It's bizarre. Alright. Social drugs. Uh, let's have people hold 2T in their inventory. And we're going to schedule them take it every day, actually. Because we have high life. They get addicted. Oh, well. Oh, well. But, yeah. It, it's just funny. I'm so used to it at this stage, but it is fun to talk about it. Pretty good, pretty good. Inverted kill box, though. Yeah, someone using embrasures and shooting with modded weapons through the wall where raiders couldn't attack back, and they're like, people that use kill boxes are noobs! <laughs> like, alright, I guess I'm a noob then. Whatever. You like the idea of embrasures that they're way too strong? Yeah. And they make a lot of sense, real life, obviously. That one, though, was really funny. This person was, like, really adamant about kill, not using kill boxes. And then they show me a screenshot of their base, and they literally have a giant kill box full of turrets. <laughs> you see you about Anomaly, then found you here? Nice. Not even following and subscribed on either. <gasps> How dare? How dare, Mumble? Give this by never playing the game. <laughs> it's one way to do it. Using guns make the game too easy. Yeah. I know the person might have been joking or trolling, but it is funny. Um, like I said, we had some... I've had it happen a couple times now where someone's like, yeah, you did a no walls run, but you used like 25 assault rifles. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was supposed to line up with muskets. My neighbor playing the game. Melee only no walls. I think the melee gods could probably do no walls, honestly. 
if I had enough time before the expansion, I might would try that, but... Pokemon Trainer Run with only using attack... Kinda. I did a run where everyone was incapable of violence, and so all of our defense was elephants, so I guess kinda. All right. Let's see what's in here. Melee gods are wall, yeah. The 50 turret guys on us something as long as he wants explosions instead. Are assault rifles a wall? No, with the, the amount of bullets that they shoot out is a wall. No guns, no clo clothes, no walls. <laughs> downloading, yes, yeah, downloading helps out a lot. Not just for me, so for anyone that YouTube Premium, anytime you download something from a creator, they get some of what you spend on premium. And then in addition to that, um, it's as if you watch 100% as soon as you download. So it's good for the algorithm as well. Yeah. All right. Tomorrow we open the caskets in the daylight. I'm wondering how the melee gods would do with this only. You know what? The expansion might add stuff to make the melee gods even stronger. Is that crazy? I hadn't even really thought about that. What, what's beyond a god? <laughs> what's beyond a god? What? Uh, armpit. It's not armpit for the last time. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for the resub. Yeah, like the new, um, like, uh, the potion-y things or whatever. What were they called again? A deity. What's a god to a non-believer? Serums, thank you. New serums. Mutated tentacles and stuff, yeah. Come across this theory that the reason Minecraft 2 didn't get released. They just supposed to keep him away. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's go. We're just gonna bring yeah. Just bring everyone just in case. Have mech water attacks changed my strategy? Um, I haven't played a map where it matters, but it would on, like if you're doing a min-max map as well, used to, you would want a mountain map and an ocean. That way you can't get attacked from this side or this side. But now, so you, you only have to worry about uh, breachers coming from two directions, for instance. But now with a change, that's no longer the case. So I haven't played on a map like that really yet. I did play on one with the water mechs, but you have to just keep that in mind that you could... It's a rare... It's 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 rarer than Breachers and slightly more raid points, so... So they're pretty rare. So being up against water is still strong, it's just... Not as strong. All right, what we got here? Den 13, Den 11, Den 3, intended Den 5. Okay. So, Fast Learner 52. Fast Learner, staggeringly ugly. I might just take everyone, though. Tough, volatile body modder. Nice. Gormon. Let's get them tended, and then we'll bring them to the real prison. Crawling only run. Yeah, it's not possible. Half cycler in that person. Asked why the hour lasts in the past five minutes. Not in the last five minutes, no. Ooh, a healer mech serum. Sonic 5% no pause, too easy for me. I mean, it depends on if I'm only trying to win or not. Right now, though, we're still testing 1.5 stuff as far as, like, 
looking for bugs. Now we're looking for bugs with the DLC stuff. In fact, I might want to do a Mechanitor run. See if there's any bugs introduced with that. Hello from Slovakia. Hello, hello. Thank you for watching. So we'll convert these and we'll see what we what we end up with once they're converted. Is the self challenges ideology to whatever you find fun? Yeah, we've done lots of really hard runs. Like, um. The percentage is just raid scaling, right? So we still get to the raid cap and how, how fast you get to that cap basically is all it is. But we've done some very, very hard runs. I'm not... What I'm doing with these 1.5 runs isn't to like try to overcome some crazy challenge. We're just playing mainly to see if we run into any... Um, any more bugs in 1.5. And, you know, just build different have fun we did one run that was vanilla so no dlc at all with the kill box to see what was going on we found a lot of bugs and we reported them and all of those have been fixed which is pretty awesome now we're doing one with all dlc so far i haven't ran into any additional bugs today good sign then after this i am if we have time left i'll probably do another one too even less bugs since 1.4 yeah less bugs less cheese Right. So what are these people good at? Planting. Nothing. Mining. I really do need another miner. So let's use convert on Selkie. Selkie, you don't look like a seal. And let's see. Let's... I did say that I would use uh charge rifles this time just because i haven't in a long time so i guess i'll get that research too get bionic replaces done first but observer having medical family issues keeping you from streaming as you normally do i'm getting a lot of stuff done before the streamathon for the expansion so it's a combination of tons of stuff i had two doctor's visits i had more medical tests um my doctor has or excuse me my daughter has a doctor's visit i have test results coming up but there's also a lot of other stuff House stuff, home stuff, tax stuff. Just a lot of stuff that I have to get done before the DLC comes out so that I can buckle down and and play a lot of hours. How do you like to play with ideology? You found that fluid was really overpowered in your playthrough? Yeah, if you're min-maxing, then fluid is the way to go. Yeah. Fluid is extremely strong. You can switch to what you need when you need it, but also you can like re-roll your, your festivals. You can get additional... Um, additional relics if you want to go that route. The air conditioner door trick changed? No, it hasn't. These ones are roofed or unroofed in this one. So I'm not using quite the exact same as I usually do. But yeah, I could remove this and it would work a little bit better probably still even in this. But yeah, the, the cooler thing hasn't been changed. Planning healthcare around an expansion drop, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have they fixed the prison cheese? Uh, the not a prison? No. No. For all the isn't Unity engine. I wonder if they would have had that, uh, had Unity not gone back on that. I don't know. 
That means it's intended, maybe? Okay, uh, let's fix some stuff down here. We are going to need another of these. Okay, bionic research is done. Knock out pulse munitions. here high explosive assault rifle yeah we're gonna need more of those at some point he's looking good though talk about the second anomaly i haven't went over it in super detail we talked about it a little bit at the beginning of the stream but i ended up reading through it on my day uh on one of the days that I, w I wasn't here so i know it won't be like first reaction but we can talk about it still I, m I might talk about it more at the end of the stream gravestones those are art we, j we are just morbid ideology so like the hourglass shape yeah it's been interesting green infused hot dogs <laughs> that didn't help <laughs> hey you know what you're getting yourself into probably check for an upcoming dlc release oh no this is this is not i didn't go get checked out before to make sure i could do it it's that i have health issue anyway and i already had things scheduled so this just, it just happens that this happened right before the DLC. Health stuff's been acting up again anyway, but yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to talk about health stuff too much on the stream because I don't mean it in a negative way, but every time I do, you know, people are trying to be helpful, but we get like uh, Dr. Chat MD, you know? So uh, the short of it is that's, uh, oh no, he looks... I already had stuff scheduled because of health issues. Attack immediately, right nearby. Uh, all melee tribal, okay. Well, I gotta be careful. It's, uh... Neanderthals, right? Oh, we don't have auto doors yet. I might have made a mistake. For some reason, I was thinking I had auto, auto doors. Do we have auto doors in the last run or something? My bad.
So when I was running up there, I was like, I'll just go through the auto doors and I'll kill some and then we'll pop back out and finish the others. So that could have been uh, really bad. Ended up not mattering, but I must have auto doors in the last one. We gotta get that set up. We're good. We're good. Yeah, we don't have overwhelming firepower for Neanderthals, so I should have just uh, let them divide up on the wall. So we don't have, um, we don't have auto doors going. All right, though, as long as Randy doesn't hit us really hard on again. And we have traders here, it's fine. Also need to get uh, someone set up as a shooting specialist. Are they all carrying bags? No. No one's carrying a bag. Is that an item of clothing? What do you what do you see that you think is a bag? Oh, this person has a fire foam popper and someone else had a low shield. Playing some of the three place house choices such as barracks, just rooms, butchering and cooking in the same room, poisoning, not using a freezer. Not aside from, like, just my playthroughs in general going over it, I guess. They already did with... With... With, uh... Ideology. You can set... Love free and approved and have everyone sleep together. You can literally have love clusters. This guy's having a heart attack. Hmm. <laughs> We're stealing his food. <laughs> Why is that funny? Ah, that's what they called it. That's what they called it in the um, ideology launch. They call them love clusters. Yeah. What's base design? Just for fun. Just for fun. We're just building different for fun this game. Seven more days, all right. Hopefully there's not another drop pod while I'm gone. Let's open this just in case. Be right back. Mm -hmm. Rifles better to use than charge rifles, charge lances. It depends, it depends. Why don't you build medical beds? Well, first off, I don't have them researched. Second off, you generally when you get to this stage of the game, with a good doctor and herbal medicine, you can get everything done. Like, the, the medical beds are just, like, not much better. Unfortunately. By the time you get them. We don't, we just don't need them. We just don't need them. Um, and yeah, assault rifles are better in a lot of situations than both charge rifles and charge lances. Charge lances are actually one of my least favorite guns of the game. I think they're pretty terrible. But, bed painted blue is the same as a bed painted green. Yes, that is also true, yeah. But actual hospital beds are just, they're not, they're like a nice to have, but it's not like super needed at this stage. We can already do everything that we need to be, need to do just with herbal medicine and, and bed. So we'll be right back.
allergies to allergies. Uh, gener generally, when I s you'll see me start to get hostile dead in two scenarios. One, I'm getting ready to switch over to all... Am I going to rescue McConnell? No, I'm not. Um, I'll... I'll grab some when I'm ready to switch over to Bionics because I want the extra surg surgical success chance. Or if I have a construction pawn with a inspiration, I might just go ahead and have them knock out a hospital bed. Do basic kill box set up still work 1.5? Yes. Like a maze or a tunnel of traps? Yes. Still works. I'm going to re rescue McConnell's meat, his flesh from his bones. That's that's all. Okay, any other? All right, so... We actually want to increase our outer wall at some point. And uh, I told people that we would do a charge rifle run. So to go back to the charge stuff... I really don't like charge lances. They're one of my least favorite weapons in the game. They've been nerfed so much over the years that they're not great anymore. And the problem with them in general is that it's hard, I imagine, for the developers to balance a gun that is both an enemy weapon, like um, a mech weapon and a player weapon. So I kind of wish that they would just let charge lances be lancers and that we would get a charge sniper and the charge sniper would be similar to what charge lances used to be back in the day. But charge lances are outranged by even assault rifles. It's kind of crazy. Is there a reason for using single shells? They're more modular. Just use whichever you want. I like using the single ones because they're just more modular. And there's there's uh, some other slight bonuses. Like if someone has a targeted breakdown and they attack a single shell, if they drop three items on the floor, or they attack a double shell, if they drop six. But honestly, just yeah, use whichever one you want. I like using the single. Am I wearing hyperweave sweater with Devil Strand in real life? That's right. That's right. Enigma. Even the tier two and waffles. I see that waffles. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> thank you, Enigma. Thank you, waffles. This is developers now as a question bug enhancement since they are making changes. I I feel like that's not something I'm gonna get. They're gonna change based off my feedback, but I'm hoping that yeah, I'm hoping the new weapons are. Um, are good, but you know, we'll see. Charge lances have lower... Charge lance used to be like the charge sniper of the game, but they kept nerfing it. Now it has less range than an assault rifle, which is absurd. Really, really crazy. Charge rifles are still great. They do a lot of damage. Charge rifles just aren't super long range either, so uh, they can't kite like I'm doing. But we're going to switch over to them just to... I haven't shredded things with legendary charge rifles in forever, and the amount of damage that legendary charge rifles do is pretty absurd. So they're they're extremely good in late game for like kill box setups or like small engagements. They just don't outrange a lot. Charge lance only run. Ugh, sounds t sounds terrible. A lot of that run, I might just be meleeing people with charge lances. <laughs> Enjoying Stellar. Stellar's is good. I haven't played it in a couple of years. It's changed so much since the last time I played it, but I did like it. Inversion. Speaking of. Yeah, all right, screw it. Just need more people. Also, there were lovers at some point. Let's see, right before I left. Felix and Selkie, right, okay. So let's go ahead and get that set up. Oh, and uh, another thing, I wanted to get a few hydroponics down.
Uh, for cotton. Just switch over to black. I mean, I guess we could skip black, which would be weird, but no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. All right. So let's get these set up here. Make flak vest do until we have X. X is one. Let's put this uh, a little bit higher than normal. I don't remember what I was setting it to in this game. Whatever. It's down. Oh, let's put um like level seven crafting or something. There we go. I have two more pre previews. I missed that when I was looking through it. Two more previews, okay. For some reason I was thinking one. Trying to pay for your college tuition, you have no source of income as of yet. Can you pay like 50 USD a month by streaming? Um, maybe <laughs> like it's so I gotta tell you that if you need extra income streaming is probably not something to, like go all in on it's uh you have to end up being really lucky no matter how talented or good at it or whatever you are especially these days and start like a long time ago Did they add an ending in biotech no you can donate blood or plasma or something and get more consistent yeah To put it in perspective, I didn't get my first $20 donation until 2017, and my very first stream ever was in 2010. So, to be fair, I wasn't streaming that entire time. Like, I wasn't streaming consistently. I didn't have a schedule, and I wasn't streaming full-time. But I didn't have anyone give me a single dollar all the way up until 2017. So... Yeah, uh, I wouldn't rely on it starting out doing it as a side thing and then you know if, if it becomes good for you to do then awesome sort of thing but i you're in super need for like 50 bucks uh starting starting up streaming is probably not the way in fact you probably spend more starting up the stream than uh, you'll you'll end up making all right let's get a shooting specialist finally then after that, we'll grab that. Okay. Get a name. A uh, raven. Just quit Hades. Do you have the ear of the game dealers had a suggestion for the game? Would you please consider requesting a multi colonist cryo sleep cabin from them? Take a bunch of colonists to the planet without having to build a giant ship. They're, the developers aren't really looking for suggestions on things like that, unfortunately. Like in general, yeah. Like, and me and Smurf have no sway over the developers in that sort of way. They're mainly looking for bugs, e exploits, cheeses, things not working as intended. And things that, or things that have been changed that were better previously, like as much as it would be awesome to be like, hey, can we have this and that or that? It's not really what the um, development bug Discord thing is for. But yeah, I, I really, the developers put in some stupid golden cube and not a jade club. That's how much sway. Yeah, I really don't think anything that we're going to tell them is, you know, we we don't like work for them or anything. Waffles, what? <laughs> Waffles, even the $100 donation to miss to make up for the missed years. Man, uh, that's incredible. Thank you, Waffles. Very much appreciated. Yeah, uh, but I'm not lying. Yeah, I still remember my first donation. And the, th the funny thing, I think there's still a clip about it because my very first donation ever, uh, I had donation alert set up from like 2010 and I was sitting and I was playing. There was like three people at the stream 
in 2017 and I was playing uh, Grim Dawn and I was sitting and I I heard I heard the alert and I even forgot I had the alert and I was so confused I was like wait what is going on what is that noise and I, had, I like stopped the stream and I was trying to search I was like oh my god someone donated to me yeah it was uh I think that clip still exists it was pretty, pretty crazy hey waffles Grim Dawn's a great game You need discount peeps and jelly beans tomorrow. <laughs> need, uh, need. You messed on Discord. Uh, do you have any uploaded series of sea ice challenges? So the last time I did sea ice was before I was uploading to YouTube, unfortunately. So it's been a long time. I find it. I've done a couple, but back when it was kind of like very popular to do, I did it. Probably 1.1, 1.2 era. So it's been a really long time. Um, I'll consider doing one in the expansions, depending on what the expansion adds, and eventually, but it's not going to be anytime soon. Yeah, unfortunately, there's just a lot of runs that aren't on YouTube because I didn't start uploading on YouTube for a lot of years. A sea ice containment facility, maybe. Do I have any drop pod defense in your base? We had a center drop today. Yeah. This is my drop pod defense. I don't know if you've watched my drop pod defense guide, but this is it. That's literally it. We just had a drop pod in this section of the barracks maybe an hour ago, and I didn't take a single point of damage. We lost one turret. But yeah, uh, if you want to do the same thing in your run, just look up my um, my drop pod defense guide up on YouTube. It's very short. It's time stamped. Weird noise. Am I hacked? Yeah, I was really surprised. Like, Yeah, no, pro no problem. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, I'm I'm behind on Discord. I have a lot of messages to reply to on there. I just haven't been able to go there. Check it very, very recently. All right, so we're gonna need a lot of plasteel and a lot of gold and a lot of steel. We need miners. If I want to switch over to. I'm really considering switching over to um, charge rifles, even though I don't usually use charge rifles and we're doing an oak kill box setting. I'm going to need a much bigger outer wall. So we'll start planning that out. Donkeys join. Okay. See ice on the screen, regular playthrough on the other. Yeah, Smurf and I had talked about that quite a bit. I even talked about doing like multiple runs up on the screen at, at the same time, but at the moment I'm just testing 1.5 stuff playthroughs, just pretty standard ones while we wait on the expansion. And then who knows what we're going to do in the expansion, right? Hopefully it gives a lot of different playthroughs, playthrough potential, but yeah, we won't know. Doors should be open. So as soon as the drop pod landed, I held this door open. I put someone through there to hold it open. The distance to turrets, relatively infinite. Yeah. Basically pathable. If you have a pathable powered turret and an uninterruptible path from the drop potters to that turret, that's where they'll go as long as you don't damage them. <laughs> don't interrupt you, you join your meal. Sorry about that. Seeing a playthrough of the expansion, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, that's all I did. So the drop pod happened here. I immediately held, selected to hold this door open. I grabbed everyone. I put them out here behind this turret. Drop pod raiders landed. They rushed out this door to get to the turret. They all attacked the turret while I killed them. And that's what they do every single time if you have that set up. Will all of your new runs to DLC be edited? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I hope so, but... I don't know right now. It's another thing I'm trying to figure out this week, actually. I hope so. We'll see. Jimbo and Muffin versus the Anomaly. Kid Jimbo and Muffin Girl, yeah. <laughs> Muffin Woman. Hey, it's Humps. Humps is always tough. 
more schedule you've come having pause you've worked hard to develop getting arbitrary possessed and killed for the stories yeah i don't know we'll have to see how it plays out i guess going to our screen you okay um god i keep remembering the other playthrough i did so there's things that we don't have set up that i thought we did but i'm thinking about the previous playthrough so um uh, do i want uh yeah all right textiles we'll turn off in leather converts ready You're waiting for a particular material to be scanned? No. What do you mean? I'm just scanning as much as I possibly can. So we we want steel, gold, and plasteel predominantly, but we ha we have all that. We're already mining some of it, but more scans the better. There's plasteel on the base. Maybe you're right about more plasteel scanning. I don't know. Someone earlier was like, "Have you been getting more plasteel scans than usual?" I said no, and I hadn't been, but today, again, it's probably just random. Holy crap, we got like... We, we got like 5,000 plasteel scanned in this base, but... Are laser rifles more accurate? There are no laser rifles. The charge rifles aren't actual lasers. So no, not really. I was hoping that DLC would add some kind of actual laser weapon, kind of like um, we found in the lore primer and stuff. Doesn't look like it so far, though. This is scanning infinite. Scanning is infinite. That was changed in 1.2. So if you haven't played in the last like four years, that's a change for you. But yeah, scanning scanning is uh, infinite. Yeah. For all intents and purposes, scanner just creates material. Getting a lot no more with nodes are smaller. Yeah, these nodes aren't smaller though. Like, these are pretty hefty nodes. Uh, I need more power. We're gonna get this geothermal done anyway. It's gonna get destroyed occasionally until we get the other stuff set up, but oh well. Oh my god, I know I have one of those right here somewhere. There it is. So next node, about 12 to 13, one by four. Yeah, I haven't seen that, but for me yet. Uh let's see. Pants. Button down shirts. Duster. Do until we have X. X is one. So this like 60 something. We'll set it higher than normal. Turn off human leather. Look nearby. Like six or better. Drop on the floor. Do you have X? One. Yeah, we'll, we'll set a little higher than normal so we can keep some trade value on it when they're done. Human, check close, six or better. Drop on the floor. We should have X, one, 60 something normal. Turn off human leather, check nearby. Six or better. Floor. Okay, that'll be good enough. Get that moved over here. Just for a first challenge run for someone that has gotten comfortable with losing his fun is looking to try something different. 
Uh, so you can do theme type runs or you can you can turn things up to 500% if you've never done a 500% or you can try a no pause run. No pause runs definitely up the difficulty a lot. So that'd be my first suggestion, depending on which one sounds good to you. But you can try to restrict yourself to using certain weapons. We've done that a whole lot or certain kinds of pawns. Even doing something like I'm going to do a run we, on Losing is Fun where I'm only allowed to have genies and I start out with all genies or I'm only allowed to have imps or, you know, whatever. Uh, themed runs like that can be really fun, especially if you lean into the theme a little bit more. Like, all right, I'm, I can only use imps and I'm going to try to use fire traps more often or something, you know, or use fire weapons more often. Or I'm going to go oh, do a Neanderthal run and we're going to do more meleeing than normal. Um... But yeah, it depends on what sounds fun for you. So the big thing about challenge runs that I tell people as far as when I'm trying to decide to do one, a lot of it is like, what will I not get bored of? What will I find fun, not frustrating for the most part? So that I am more likely to continue doing it. Copying a whole smelter week. Incredible. Not using the four beds on one end table setup. You don't need it after you get excellent beds. So basically that's why I try to get to excellent beds. In fact, we have one that we can replace, but an excellent bed caps out comfort with a single connector. So once you get to excellent beds, you only need a dresser for everything and it saves you more space. So it's just because we're already at excellent beds. Yeah, well, here, here's the thing about the genie thing, though. I don't think you want your genies out there doing melee because they're wimps and delicate. They take extra damage and they down faster, so... <laughs> yes, they might get a small bonus to melee from manipulation, but I don't think you want them out there meleeing. Because as soon as they do get hit back, they'll just be like, ow, and lay down. These are ideology speakers, yeah. So loudspeakers are part of the dance festival for ideology. Uh, for rituals, yeah. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this to make advanced components do until we have X. Uh, we'll go 10. Check nearby, drop on the floor. Copy that over this one. Okay, looking good. I guess I'll just knock stuff out for the ship just in case we decide to do that. I don't know what else we would do in this one. I'm not going to do Arco Nexus, right? So That camera has... Yeah, it has a cap. So once you get to excellent beds, you only need one connector to max it out. The horse farm. Yeah, I'm just letting them run around and eat everything since we're overproducing. Probably shouldn't be, but... All right, so. All right, yeah, I'm gonna switch over after these. Uh, the new wires don't give events. No, it's another bonus for having them. Oh, I need EMP shells too, before I forget. if we had a high shield, we'd be kind of screwed at the moment. Uh, let's go with just five. All right, Selkie is ready. Turn you into a production specialist.
Rosa. Uh, Rosa, thank you for the 20 additional gift subs. Thank you, Rosa. I believe you're over a thousand now. That's that's crazy. Uh, thank you, Rosa. Rosa, thank you for the support. Happy Easter. If you celebrate, not happy Sunday. Uh, thank you, Rosa. You know, man. Crazy day, crazy Sunday. In a good way, in a good way. Much love to Rosa, as always. Plan on getting any jeans this run? Maybe. I've been keeping an eye out for them. I haven't specifically been going after them, but I have been keeping an eye out. Legendary hospital bed. Fantastic. You have my sword. My axe. Masterwork, masterwork, good. All right. So, Selkie. Yeah, we are going to convert or uh, get you. And then we have these two. I got to be a little bit careful, though. Um, Selkie's going to be a new miner. If you really need. Let's go ahead and make a third one of these. What floor are you using on your base? Concrete. Just concrete. Will I get a vampire in this run? Probably not, since our last big run was a single phase run, but... Yeah. I don't know, single phase are really good. Like, really, really good, but... I'm not, uh, I'm not specifically trying to get any of this, this time or anything like that, for sure. Solar Flare. Fortunate. Um... Let's go forever on this instead. This stage. All right, so we'll get the walls extended. Oh, we need to get the bio sculptors in case too. And let's get a couple more shelves over here. body parts in these ones and medicine in these ones dlc you can make an only minigun shooter happy colony uh i mean you could already do that i don't think there's yeah, i don't think there's anything in the not that i've seen in the new dlc that would make it so that's like more doable is already doable yeah Uh, we had a minigun defense actually in my uh, dwarf run back at the beginning of biotech. Who's the storyteller? Randy. Mm -hmm. Any of the great talk show? Uh, thank you, Wookie. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the kind words. Appreciate it. Yeah, you could already do, uh, you know, shooting specialist, darkness, trigger happy, minigun, and crazy. <sighs> Did we get? Yeah, we got an abasia. Recluse. All right. Well, we're just going to go kill them. Wait, who are you? Where are you from? We'd have to re ally if we do that. And it's the friggin' pigs. Yeah, I don't feel like re-allying. I'm just going to take the, the law. I'm just going to reject them. Alright. It's fine. Our mood is, like, so high anyway. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Alright, Selkie needs a name. Make a cat girl maid cafe in the DLC though. <laughs> uh, 
only with mods as far as I can see so far. I haven't seen any mutated ears yet. What? Maybe? Maybe? Can only hope. Okay. Stalt, you are in. Another miner, good. And we'll start getting this set up. Let's do about every 18. Good there. Right, that should be good enough. Hopefully. Why not take Witch Quest? I can't see any quests that would be beneficial for me to take. The... Are you talking about the Abasia person? Abasia person would have just joined as an Abasia. And then I don't want this person, so... I just killed them anyway. They fixed double click? Yes. Uh, Catholic, welcome in. They fixed double click, yep. The beige person? Yeah, I, I would have just killed them. I don't care. I don't want them. So, if I wanted them, then yeah, sure, but I don't want, I don't want them. Watch the preview number one video? Nice. Yeah, I haven't done a second one yet. I use charge rifles? Yeah, I think I'm going to just for fun. Why am I making survival meals? It's a way to store meat without a freezer. And we have been trading with uh, using them, yeah, for the most part. All right, smelt or destroy thing. Do forever. Drop on the floor. Uh, all right, let's go through this and set anything that's awful and poor. Um, turn off weapons from that one. Apparel, anything that's under... Let's actually do like 60% this time. Okay. Spell to destroy. Do forever. Trouble the floor. There we go. Um, let's do apparel... Painted only. And then for weapons in general, let's see. Melee weapons, yeah, just smell all of them. I don't care. I'm not gonna do melee this time. Persona weapons. I'll, I'll micromanage that when we get them. Right now, we're not going to smell assault rifles or charge rifles or smoke. Everything else is fine. It should be good enough to kind of get some things cleaned up. I already looked at the second preview. I looked at it on my day, the days that I weren't here, but I haven't gone over it on stream entirely. Did they fix the mouse double click problem? Yes. What's wrong with double click? If you double clicked a, a raider, it would select everyone, all traders, all your pawns, everything. But they reverted it, thankfully. 
Like right here, if I double click on this this trade group, it would have selected all my pawns as well, which was really problematic during raids. What's wrong with Agave? Nothing. Oh, you mean before? Yeah, it looks like the Agave thing is fixed. So uh, when we first loaded this map up after one of the, the fixes they did, this map had over 500 Agave plants, which is very weird. But it, yeah, 147. So yeah, it looks like that was fixed. Get your name fixed on there. Hey, look at that. It's R squared on both screens. Yeah, we we're talking about how there might be... There, it looks like there's going to be ways for the melee gods to get even stronger with the DLC. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. We only have one primary builder at the moment. I really wouldn't take this person either. I see. Just want to get more people. And I guess we'll need to do our festival soon. And you taught me twice as much. That's right. Wait, did we set MP grenades? An accident? I'll double check. Yes. I'll just check them all really quick. It would not have been the first time. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do another festivals. Hopefully get some more people that can construct. Alright, let's get into some other stuff. Well, yeah, I'm gonna do the festivals, especially while these guys are here. Well, I gotta wait for the flash storm. There we go. Thank you, thank you. Alright, let's do these. Come on, dance until a construction pond shows up. Never used rocket turret. Rocket turret is really difficult to use in no pause. Rocket turret is really good against lots of cl clump tribals, but tribals are one of the easiest raids in the game anyway. So for me, it, it, I would maybe use the rocket turret if you could preset the destination that it's going to hit like you can with mortars, but you can't. So I have used them when they first came out, but at least on no pause, they weren't really worth it. Dance. But they can absolutely delete like a clumped up tribal raid. So can 20 assault rifles, honestly. Doing the dance base during the no walls run. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Why is their name Wake Up? They were addicted to Wake Up and I was trying to remember which one was addicted to Wake Up. And I just haven't changed it. These are not the pawns I really want, but. Yeah, we really need construction people. I'm gonna keep them anyway, I guess. All right. One more chance. I'm gonna track tra trader caravans only if there's something with that trader that I specifically am looking for or wanting at that time. Just depends on the ca trade caravan at the moment. Um, the only one I would super care about right now is um, 
Bolt goods, especially bolt goods ship. There you go, bolt goods ship. Round, round schedule. <laughs> nice. Alright, let's sell some horses. Uh, let's get all the components. I don't have a lot, unfortunately. I think we'll go back out to trade here in a moment. We might want to also just grab gold while it's being offered by someone, actually. I know we can mine our own, but if we don't find any inside the walls or find enough inside the walls, it could be annoying, so... I will right, we'll go ahead and do that. Specialist also fat construction results speeds. Uh, it, it so production specialist is for construction, crafting, and art. All three. Yep. Construction, crafting, and art. That's super good. Super good. And I really need builders. Uh, who's not really doing much? Zero. Ugh. Industrious jogger, though. You're also not really doing much. All right, looks like you're going to start constructing. I mean, real, yeah, in, in game, yeah. Alright. Well. How much steel do we have? We're looking pretty good on steel. Keep mining the steel in here, though. Really don't like that being so close to the... refinery there. is coming in so <clears throat> i'm not sure if we have enough let's double check yeah we don't really i have finished setting up clothing rules yet but so the goal right now is to get things mined get some more people and i guess switch over to charge rifles it's gonna be weird i haven't used charge rifles in forever Should be fine, but... Charge rifles are really... Really good damage. It's just I won't be able to kite. So, Breacher is going to be pretty scary. Pirate Breacher is going to be scary. Mech Breachers, we should still be okay. Tribal Breachers or whatever, but... Right, center, you are in. Make robot builders. I haven't been wanting to go Mechanitor this run. Hmm. Oh, Dingo, welcome in. How long until places reset? They gotta be. Yeah, that one's reset. 7.9. All right, well, I have two more people that are doing construction, even though they're not passionate about it, so. Bio sculpting done. Okay, let's set the home area to repair all this.
Oh, I didn't I didn't name them either, right? Also need to check. There was a couple that was in the prison. Check who the couple was. Jenna. Nice beard, Jenna. Nice beard. Felix and Stoltz. Okay. I've already answered the thing about the Mechanator robots a bunch of times this, this playthrough. I don't plan on using any Mechanator stuff. It's very strong, but we just did a full Mechanator run, and I'm not really testing that for 1.5 at the moment. Might be... We might do another run where we test some more of that, but, but for this one, I don't plan to. They are really good. All the work mechs are really good. Love having lifters and clean sweeps, especially. And actually, like all all the work bots, I think. Um, let's see here. And I know people are coming in all the time, so I've answered that a few times, but might not have been here when I was doing it before. What was that? I didn't get to see. I accidentally right clicked it. Raid attacking immediately. Uh, triple rockets. Okay. Use marksman command, you go inside. So before, if I were to double click these, uh, it would have selected all my pawns. And I couldn't see where the triple rockets were, which was terrible. There's a triple rocket. Um. I really want to get him. Keep an eye on that one. Yeah, he's going on that side. Let's go down here and take out some of these stragglers. No rockets down here. There's a low shield we got to be cautious of. He would have blown himself up, but I'm not taking the risk. I, I know that that's how that would have worked, but it's too scary. <laughs> too scary. So the rocket would have hit the um, low shield. He would have killed himself, but if like while he's shooting, the low shield ran out of time and we died because of that, it would have felt real bad. kind of weapons you guys got okay we should be good to come down and pop these few coming up you two hold that door open back in cover what do you have you're good you're good you're good I did hit the geothermal, unfortunately. I mentioned that might get destroyed during the next raid because it wasn't all done yet. Good. I use growth vats. I uh, use growth vats when I'm going the children route. Yeah, usually growth vat until three, and then again from thirteen to eighteen.
Not going the children route this time, though, I don't think. good and get that read done um we have quite a bit of steel i really need to get excess stones up so let's uh let's pull this actually i don't have a spot to dumping zone for those at the moment uh sandstone chunk let's go ahead and throw these up here and try to I'm gonna find some sandstone up here. We need to get the walls done. And then we do need to get auto doors too, though. Base is shaped up. Yeah, yeah. Just a weird base for fun. Then now, Felix Auto Add. It should, but I, you know, I want to do. Let me just go ahead and do this, actually. I don't want to deal with children in this one, so. Go ahead. Go ahead and have the surgery, and then I'll put them in there. There we go. Proxy I'll only play on like 50% threat. Oh yeah, whatever you have fun with. That's what. If, if you've watched for any any amount of time or seen any of my stuff before, you'll probably probably be sick of me saying play whatever's fun with you, for you. But yeah. Play with kill boxes, without kill boxes, with mods, without mods, anywhere in between. Peaceful, 500%, whatever, whatever you like. Whatever's fun for you. There we go. Let's move the these. There's only one of them. Move that over. Also suspend this for now. Um, I guess we'll get the bio regenerator just in case. And let's mine some of this out too. Well, we have a place to shoot through, but also just to get more blocks. Oh, I didn't check. What is this getting? Marble. Yeah, let's move that. Sandstone, sandstone. Okay. Sandstone is just faster to build with, so... It's like a guy with a huge mustache now. Her bow tie. <laughs> it's Dr. Robotnik. You know of a way to guarantee cooking a food poisoning and inducing meal? What do you biological warfare on the wildlife? Your best chance is to have a zero cook make a simple meal outdoors. That's the highest probability. Is the HP worth the time? Uh, HP doesn't, between marble, uh, it, like, sandstone, sandstone is more HP as well, but, yeah, so sandstone is going to build faster and have higher HP, there's no reason we make that outer wall out of marble, marble, I think that we only have two stone types in this one, I think so, but HP, HP doesn't matter as much anymore with walls, unless you're doing a no kill box style, because breachers get a damage bonus against walls anyway. And that normal raids aren't going to attack your walls in a normal playthrough, but granite has the most HP out of the normal stones, but takes the longest to build. But breachers get through it just as fast, so. In a no kill box run, we're using the HP of the outer wall to have raiders beat against. Then the extra HP is definitely worth it. But normal playthroughs I don't really feel like it is anymore. on this yeah so a long time ago i would say that's two the two stones that you want are marble and granite if you're in maxing marble for beauty granite for hp but now i typically want sandstone because sandstone is the fastest building material out of the stones that you can get you know chunks of so i like to be able to repair and throw things up really quickly 
Hey, how fast breaches can come through the wall? Yeah. What are those breach axes made out of? It's just steel. What are my precepts? Uh, there. Okay, that part's done. I might... I don't know. Uh, I was thinking about going ahead and doing the auto doors. I mean, it, it's so helpful. But... We need to get our stone up too, because I'm going to go to triple walls at some point. Free me here! have to make it. Quite free. Happy with Shape of the Space. It's just a challenge for this run. It's just for fun, yeah. At the beginning of the run, I was just like, let's build something weird. And I did like a... I started with like an upside down triangle. And then we added another one to it. And now we've just expanded on it. Yeah, just, just for fun. Uh, rotten only. I remember when I was brand new to RimWorld. So, I don't know how many years ago that was. Six or seven, seven years ago? I don't know. But anyway, um, I used to burn all the drugs. <laughs> now, in RimWorld, I use so many drugs all the time to keep everyone productive and happy and everything. I use so many drugs. But when I was new to the game, I would try to get a crematorium pretty early, and i put burn all the drugs. Like, I don't even want to keep it around to try to trade it. So don't want anyone to do it and get addicted. Played as a teetotaler early on, yeah. Carpet, there's still time. Still time. Or Tinctoria, at least. Felix is still getting converted. He still believes in man-porkism at the moment. He's going here, welcome in. Man-porkism. <laughs> Need bolt action rifles for breachers. I think what I have is better than bolt action rifles for, for breachers. My adds back functionality to train rats to attack. Uh. How do you make carnivores survival meals? It's it's not that it's carnivore; it's that it contains meat. So it just colors them, yeah. So if, if it contains meat, it'll just show it as red. If it doesn't contain meat and it only contains uh, vegetables and animal product, it'll show it as green. Uh, that's only if you have ideology on. I believe. I believe that was an ideology change. Aside from precepts, can pawns be vegetarian? I mean, you can force them to be, but no. Vegetarian is not like a trait or anything like that, surprisingly. It's hot out. Ah, he'll come in. It's fine. I like watching him drink beer at parties. Okay, let's uh, let's pull out more steel here. Got a bit of blocks built up. Yeah, multiple memes at the same time. Up to four, yep. Up to four. Need something with long range? Yeah, assault rifles. Yeah. I'd rather have assault rifles against breachers than bolt action. Bolt actions are good, but I'd rather have assault rifles than... Well, action if I can choose. Pierre, thank you for signing up to be a channel member. Thank you, Pierre. Current run is an animal personhood cannibal tribe. It's been an interesting one. We did a run with animal personhood. I can't remember which one that one was. It was, uh, it was, it was decent. Definitely not like a mid-max ideology, but it was, it was good. Is... Yayo's safe for 
Uh, oh, for psychic dependency? Yes, yeah. What's the best drugs? Loose fear and go juice, in my opinion. Depends on what you mean, though, but like overall, best drugs if you can keep someone on it all the time and you don't get hit with the super downsides, you know? Luciferium and go juice. Now, if you mean for just like mood and stuff, I really like psychic tea. Psychic tea is not addictive if they take it every two days or less. Uh, it doesn't hit consciousness either, like smoke leaf. It's really easy to make. Someone with just two cooking can make it and it helps train cooking as well. Like, psychic like tea is just really good and safe. But actual best ones, I would rather everyone be on Go Juice and Lucifer all the time if I can sustain it. Those are crazy good. All right, so. Do you want to do the triple walls or the auto doors first? Let's do the triple wall, I guess. At least on this part. I gotta remember though, we are not at like, like these assault rifles are excellent. There's a couple of masterwork, a couple legendary, but for the most part, I think on average, they're excellent. So we don't have as much firepower as it might look from like a typical run anyway. Uh, we want to smooth that because we want it to actually be attackable, oddly enough. It's going to be a going to be a lot of work. What are you doing, Zoe? Oh, right. Uh, they move this. Smooth walls is separate from smooth ground now. Walls could help with the range of it from using charge rifles. Yeah, I think I'll do some stuff like that. During my very first no kill box run ever, I did a bunch of, um, once I got the main walls done, I did a bunch of things sticking out like this. I don't know if I'll do it this time, but it did absolutely help. Making team beer is no food poisoning while getting XP. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Some kind of drug challenge where everyone starts addicted. Yes, melee gods almost lost on the very first episode. Uh, so our melee god would die without go juice. He was by himself. We couldn't find go juice. We started traveling all to all these different bases and none of them had go juice. And then right before he got to the point where he was going to go like into his coma, we found a trader with go juice. So melee gods, probably my favorite run of all time. It's in edited form and full length. If you want to check it out on YouTube, but it's just a really, it was a really fun run all around. Lots of good stories in that run. Crazy play style. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Is there such thing as a trap specialist run? Not really, because there's a bunch of enemies that bypass traps, and then there's also... Uh, you just get too many enemies. Actually. Snipers in the groups help with longer range threats? No. Snipers have too slow of warm up cooldown. So, no, I don't want that. Switching one of these over to a sniper rifle would make us weaker. That person would lag behind when we needed to kite because they would be self stunned from the cooldown time. Uh, a sniper missing a shot is much more detrimental than a assault rifle missing a shot for us. No. Uh, sniper rifles have their place as a supplementary thing. I find in certain threats, you know, to pull like sieges or something. But overall, yeah, I think switching any of these out for a sniper would just make us weaker. In most situations. Almost almost all. I have editing equals long-term exposure bucks. I like the edits, but I can't just... I have a family that I support off streaming, so I can't just burn money, right? So, yes. I. It's hard to quantify how many people join and stay on the channel because of the edits but whatever that number is was that worth ten thousand dollars in the hole last year maybe if i had like crap loads of money that's not a big deal maybe ten thousand dollars isn't a lot for some people it's still a whole freaking lot to me 
So. Yes, I like the edits. I like having them up. I like having runs that I can reference and people go to and whatnot and have the option. I like watching them myself. Like, when I go in to, to check the edits, the edited runs are always fun to watch, even though I played them. Fun to re remember some of those things. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try the new editing thing that I've I've been talking about a little bit. and We'll see how that goes. Crap, we're already out of those blocks, man. Tax right off? Yeah, but still, I mean, uh, that's still less money than if I had just not had that 10,000 in the hole, obviously. How many colonists do I like to have in the late game? Uh, I, if I'm doing like a min-max, oh, uh, if I'm doing like a min-max playthrough, then basically I want as many colonists as I can have before my game lags. A lot of times that ends up being about 30 to 40. It just depends on the run. My daughter is way too busy. I'm not going to have my daughter, who just turned 13, edit my Rimworld videos. She's, she can't have a full time job right now. <laughs> Tax right off does not mean free. Yeah, exactly. It's still less money than had I not spent it. You know. sniper, sniper sounds good, but never works out. Yeah, they're fine. Like I said, they're situational, more situational than assault rifles. One reason why I default to assault rifles a lot is they're just all around. They're, they're just good in pretty much every situation. They might not be the absolute best in every single situation. They're good in every situation. So, no matter what comes down, I know I can deal with it with assault rifles. Children, you're in edit videos. <laughs> Cat? Hey, if the cats could edit, I'd, I'd have them doing it for sure. Doing it for sure. Alright, uh, yeah, if I want to get these triple walls, we're going to have to just keep getting more... Stone for now. Is that a max good mood? Uh, it's very easy with barracks and, and ideology. It's pretty easy even without ideology. Just use drugs and a, drugs and a very impressive barracks. <laughs> if the chair could edit, that'd be perfect. Are you more likely to down prisoners than kill? Uh, prisoners count as your faction. So I believe the death on down chance of prisoners are the same as your faction, so your colonists. So that's why... Yeah, you, you can still kill them, and we've done it tons. I do think the they are less likely to die than if they were a raider, yeah. Alright, so that's how the sandstone for next time. Yeah, I should do that when I move those, yeah. I'll leave them there for right now, but... In RimWorld, what job would editing videos be? I guess crafting? I guess crafting? Crafting or arts? Depending on what they're editing, I guess. Bods, <laughs> a default one. Say art and intellect. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, the, the problem, or what, what I was thinking is like, there is no intellect, there's research, but. All right, let's get those and we're halfway to rituals again. Okay. We have excess on our cloth yet. No, still not. Well, the books seem powerful. Yeah, books are really good. I don't think they'll get nerfed because they are a recreation thing. And you can't really force people to keep... Like, you can micromanage and try to force them to do reading over and over and over and over. 
but it's a recreation, so they get bored of that recreation type because it's a type. So now if you could only give them books and they would just read for all the recreation, that'd be really strong, but they won't because they get sick of that being their only recreation type. So books are, are good. I think books are in a pretty good spot. They're strong, but I don't think they're... As far as we've found so far, they're not like super exploitable or anything. Animal psychology. If your computer's slow, it can turn into melee skill really fast. <laughs> Punch your friggin' screen, yeah. What do you mean Adobe failed process and it's gonna restart? I just lost eight hours of rendering. Yeah, you're right. You're right. How many recreations do you need to fill their need? It's based on expectations. So the higher their expectations, the more research or uh, more types they'll need. You can always go into their needs and hover over recreation if you want, and it'll tell all the times and or, or all the, the types and what you currently need and whatnot. So at the moment we need four. Leafin, thank you for the brand new sub. Thank you, Leafin. Taking the time here. But yeah, it's it's one of the things tied to expectations. one of each but you're curious yeah yeah so it just changes like early on that's why you can just have a table for social and like horseshoe pin you're fine right but then as they get more and more needy you need, you need more expectations are based on colony wealth yep total colony wealth on that map at that time is what your expectations are based on it's one of the few things in the world that is just completely breakpoint based so for instance at eighty-one thousand, i think it goes to moderate and there's a lot of ideology stuff specifically that comes online at breakpoints like that uh, because of ex expectations. So like, it, it, may, it makes sense that that's how they, they've done it, but it can be really frustrating with with like uh, transhumanists. Like as soon as transhumanists hit a certain needs level, suddenly they need all these crazy things. If they change that a little bit, it used to be even crazier for them, but. Toxic fallout for seven days. We have the food to do it, but the rewards are just aren't enough for me to do it. Thank you, Leafin. Yeah, yeah, my my pleasure. Thank you for uh, using that here. Yeah, no worries. All right, we'll start getting our helmets made. Still pulling out blocks for right now. And then once we have a extra supply of blocks, we're done with this muscle parasites. Ugh. So muscle parasites take 300% total tending before they're gone. So I think we got five or six pawns that just got hit by it. Does armchair impact fabrication bench work? No, it only adds comfort while they're doing it. You already have strategies in mind with a new mortar round. New mortar round. I'm not remembering. Was there a new mortar round mentioned in the DLC stuff? I've looked through it, but I looked pretty quickly through it, so I haven't really gone into super detail yet. So yeah, no worries. I might look at it more at the end of the stream. There's a zombie shell. I don't remember that for some reason. I don't know. I'll have to look at it again. There's a mortar that can spawn zombies. Ooh. How do I not remember that? I was pretty out of it, though. I think that was the day that I got test results back. But death life dust. Oh, whoa, whoa. right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, for some reason, I wasn't remembering th those could be mortars. 
thought it was something else. Yeah. Interesting. ID mortar. Yeah, I remember the uh, the pack. For some reason, I don't. I didn't remember it being a mortar thing. Zombie powder. Yeah. Low wealth, low expectations. Yep. 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 We're just zooming through this. Holy crap. Oh god, Lord! I saw it too late. Stop shooting, stop shooting. I saw that line too late. Alright, we should be fine. Okay, they didn't take too much friendly fire. A little bit. But they mainly got down from the bugs. Okay. I was really worried that we were going to friendly fire kill them. We fine, though. Okay. Back to work. Yeah, for some reason I only remember the packs. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I think I'll read back through it. I might do that at the end of the stream today. Champion crawling to safety. They were trying. So we've already run ourselves out of Plasteel, but... All right. Uh, for research... I guess I'll just knock out the ship just in case that's what we oh, if, what we decide to go with in this run. Did you base one room? It is now, yep. Yep. Just have it shaped differently just for fun. Uh, 32 hives for a Persona Core. We have... Depends on where it spawns. We have one tough pawn and one brawler. Hmm. Generally, quest hives like that try to spawn an overhead mountain as well. They don't have to. Yeah, I'm not so sure I want to risk it on the Persona Core when we're not quite ready to launch anyway. We'll, we'll see. Pawn us crawl out of bed if we're down for food poisoning and such cool mechanic. Yeah, it can get frustrating sometimes, but overall, I think it's a positive. My favorite kill box? Uh, probably the shotgun tunnel, as I called it for years. I like the shotgun tunnel. Unfortunately, it's not as great anymore because you destroy it. Uh, it's still a really good early game, but it takes too much wall damage since the update. access to DLC. As far as I know, historically, they haven't given anyone early access to DLC. Like, I don't, I don't know that they ever have. So. But uh, they did release the the uh, release date, the 11th. So, La For Biotech, they sent me a key to the game, but the key didn't work until the day of release. I helped make the DLC. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. 
nukes the best kill mocks. Inside zone still. I have it covering it. Oh, oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Inside zone. Yeah, I just threw that together really quick. I think it's still probably fine. But yeah, it's fine. Do some new or updated guides from 1.5. Yes, I will. Yeah. Your buddy Titan has early access. Probably does. I'd be surprised if he didn't. All right, so we'll build up that stone supply a little bit and then we'll work on getting auto doors. What was that? So we recruited, recruited this guy to do uh, construction, right? Yeah. Let's give it a name. Episode's ending. <laughs> uh, chill. I haven't seen chill in a little while. Congratulations, Shelly, you're a Wookiee. Your pawn center, you are. What? Yeah, we're gonna get our stockpile of sandstone blocks, raid, mech raid, what is it? All Scyther. Um, we don't have like crazy overwhelming firepower, but Scythers do have this weird thing that they do. But it's all Scythers. If we can get to exactly max range of them, Marksman Command, we can pick off this group down here without them attacking. Without them all attacking. Yeah, I see. Oh, Tiro. Hero, what was wrong with you? I took some out, one out that was too slow to be out doing this. The other ones, we'll just let them divide up and we'll, we'll get them. Oh, it's because it's 120 degrees out. Yeah, that'll do it. I waited too long. But now I'm going to have two people I have to try to save. That was a heat stroke. The crawling just opened that door. That's the downside of crawling that I was talking about previously. So crawling just opened that door for the Scythers. I gotta get used to dealing with crawling bullcrap. It can be really helpful or it can do stuff like this.
I gotta hurry up before uh, heat stroke gets even worse. that door Door shut. This one's shut. Uh, so, yeah, I gotta get used to when there's uh, a pawn that could crawl and screw stuff up. I, I have to remember that they respect forbidden doors. I got to remember to like click and forbid certain doors. Just going to get, going to take some time to get used to having to do that, but. Should be good though. Restricting the door keeps them from crawling. Yeah, they won't they won't crawl through restricted doors, yeah. <laughs> well now that problem on the no walls run at least. <laughs> I shouldn't have tried to get an extra tinned. So there's a lot of things there I did that I probably shouldn't have. Like we did we dealt with this group, and then I was trying to get a tinned in before that other group got here, and I didn't zoom out to see how close they were. So almost screwed myself there too, but it's all right. I think we're okay. And we also had heat stroke and muscle parasites and people hungry at the same time. So there's a lot going on. Could have spelled disaster, but we have two healthy babies, one boy and one girl. Oh, baby goats. I love goats for my goat thing. Here's one. There you go, Lady of the Hall. Here's a goat. Oh. <coughs> Every year for Christmas, my wife hides some kind of goat related thing in the Christmas tree for me. <laughs> there was a screaming goat. Go friendly stream. <laughs> You're on another tab and it scared you. <laughs> Those blood drags. Yeah, look at that one. Jeez. Realistic human screaming mod. Oh, God. Mm. 
Whoop. Whoop. Second edition goats. I think these are first edition. I don't know where my lord when the battle started. <laughs> You're offering a thrumbo. No. I thought about getting the thrumbo, but honestly, I didn't really care for how it looked too much. It looked a little off to me. Mainly like the base of it didn't quite look right. I don't know. Yeah, I ended up not getting one. Maybe I should have, but... Also, like, what? Was it 25 or 35 bucks? Is it not worth anymore? So I always switch over to this eventually if I'm min-maxing. So it is completely worth it until you get excellent beds. Same way it has always been. It hasn't, it hasn't changed. But basically, if you have an excellent bed, it only takes one item connected to cap out the comfort. So since we have all excellent beds, aside from apparently that one... Or better, now a wooden dresser is enough to cap the comfort on all the beds that it's attached to. So we just don't need the end tables anymore. But yeah, it's the same as it always has been. As far as that goes, yeah. That woke up your cat, sorry. <laughs> Might want food now or something. Okay, we're at 405. I think that's enough now to get repairs and stuff done when we need to. So I think I'm gonna switch over to mining some of this plasteel. And we'll mark this sandstone for later. You know what, we have so much material. I'm just gonna turn these three off and I'm gonna just make new ones. For it. And I'm gonna, maybe not yet. I was gonna say I'm gonna put a lot of people on four on mining. Actually, Jenna, let's have you mine now as well. Hero, okay, Catharsis. Those subwoofers in the base? Yeah, it's an ideology ritual thing. Dance party from ideology. So we'll get this Plasteel all pulled out. And then I guess we'll make Plasteel auto doors instead of uh, just like steel or whatever. Kynan's finally getting the bases he wanted. Odd shapes and conduits everywhere, yeah. Max acted for building one for the dresser. No. Look. Uh, these are ones not. Here, here, let me move this one. You see, you can see there's a couple here that aren't connected, but you see how many are attaching? Yeah, the, the dresser. You can only have one dresser per bed, but you can have infinite beds per dresser, if that makes sense. So Max connected per building one. Unless they've changed, unless this was a change... And I'll double check, but let's reinstall this over here. Bonus to all nearby beds. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it's the same. A dresser gives a small comfort bonus to all nearby beds. But multiple dressers don't... Yeah, okay. So it explains it in there. Placing more than one has no additional effect. Okay. okay. So it's the same. Same as always been. Dressers can hit multiple beds. Oh, that was from a book. Goat's milk is very much an acquired taste. I don't, I don't remember if I've had goat mil milk or not. I'm not sure. 20 people sharing one dresser. Yeah, that would suck. I psychic drone. Good thing that didn't happen while we were doing that other stuff uh, or had all that other stuff going on. Broke if you're using medical bed for regular beds. Uh, same thing. Dresser can connect to medical beds as well. Or to hospital beds, yep. 
So one vitals monitor can hook to eight hospital beds. And then you can just put a dresser nearby if you want for extra comfort. Your goat's milk tastes like expensive organic cow milk, basically. Mm, I might get a third one of those down, actually. Unnecessary to link things to beds. So basically, if you have, if a bed is under, if, if it's worse than excellent, then to cap or get close to capping um, comfort, you want both a dresser and an, and an end table connected to it. But once you get excellent or higher in beds, it only takes one item and the dresser can connect to way more beds than a than an end table end table can connect to four if they're positioned correctly so basically in like the early game if you're min maxing and you're using a barracks you want something like this right this is gonna get you you know high comfort right from the beginning but as soon as you get all excellent beds which you can you know spam out beds eventually to get that much easier with a production specialist you can just get rid of the end table and you'll have the same comfort because it caps out with just the dresser so if you are um regardless if you're min maxing or not once you get to the point where you have excellent beds or better it only takes one connection either dresser or in table to cap comfort you drop another gun out here yeah there it is There we go. If you make mac and cheese with goat milk, it becomes tangy. That sounds terrible. <laughs> the royal requirements aren't because of the comfort. Royal requirements are just they, yeah, they just have their own requirements. Yeah. Okay, pulling out that plasteel, getting marine helmets going again. Uh, I also, how much steel do we have? Yeah. Right, is something wrong with your goat or your goat milk? If that's true, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've never, I've never owned goats. Is eventually speeding up the time it takes them to rest, right? No, that's different. Rest, speed, and comfort are different. So rest speed just means they, yeah, they sleep less, right? Which can be a good thing. It's usually a good thing. Comfort is a mood increase, uh, and it persists after they get up. So comfort is actually a need bar. So it's actually a need bar. You see how they were in, like, masterwork bed? You see how it's falling? So they were in, like, the best bed you can have, so they're... They're still very comfortable. Now, since comfort is like an, an a persistent bar, having comfort elsewhere can help keep it averaged up and not dropping as fast. Like if I put a chair here, but um, yeah, comfort is just for mood basically. And then the sleep speed is, is a different thing. That's a different stat. The dresser and the end table are for comfort. They don't do anything with sleep speed kind of bed quality you have in real life um let's go with excellent excellent i go over preview two not entirely yet no we've talked about it a little bit but i haven't done like a deep dive i might do that at the end of the stream so we are knocking out some marine helmets right Black. A raid. And immediately. 40 down there. 24 up there. There might be a third group too. Stay in the walls. How many bounties today? I don't have a bounty, but I have a sponsored stream. 
I'm going to be trying out another base builder game that I've, I've actually had my eye on it for a little bit. So, and they reached out and want me to try it out for two hours today. So I will be doing a two hour art of uh, Falconeer Chronicles. I'm curious. I actually played the first Falconeer game that which wasn't a base builder at all. So it's interesting that they've they've decided to do a base builder game in the same universe, but it's yeah. it's interesting. Oh god. These are imps, so they're fast. Should have waited and I thought they were already coming down. Traders who gave your life for this. <laughs> Squeals of the pig. Minoc, thank you for the gift sub. Thank you, Minoc. Legit. Illusion. Thank you, Minoc. 183. Is glitter world medicine ever worth it? Uh, glitter world medicine can be worth it in a lot of situations. Like it can offset having poor medical people like early on. Uh, it can also be really good to, if someone's like losing against something, that extra tin quality can help them catch up. Like if they have an infection that's and they're not beating it, like in their torso or something, you think that. It can also be really good to get those higher percent tins on things like muscle parasites. So muscle parasites and gut worms are both fully healed at 300%. So having Glitter World get that extra percentage cap can get them over those diseases faster. Uh, you also need it as an ingredient for like the bioregeneration cycle. So yeah, Glitter World is, is really good. Uh, saving it for special occasions can, can definitely be worthwhile. Yeah. Special occasions. That raid reminds the opening of Saving Private Ryan. Oh, tribals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> run invalidated. The natural mountain acted kind of like a kill box. Sorry, sorry. Fair game. Dangerously sick. Yeah, yeah. Child that are like gravely ill. Babies are born that way. Yeah. You don't really get that as much anymore though. It was a really big thing right when Biotech came out. Okay, still pulling out the Plasteel. We're still building up excess food, so I might go off and trade again. Let's wait until we get all this humane leather here. Skulls, do some go juice. Butcher. I have a successful emergency arm amputation at 98% infection. My level one doctor powered by glitter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There was around not super long ago where I just could not get doctors. It's like they didn't exist in the world. I think the highest medical I saw for maybe the first two years of the game was like three. Sometimes stuff happens. Glitter World can mean the difference. 
Where is the stop hiding the bodies like that? Faster chopping. Does the no prison trick work anymore? It does still work, yet. Yeah. Does still work. Um. Unfortunately, I think most of that human meat's just gonna rot on our way, but oh well. Oh well, if we... I mean, they're pretty close by. If we can get out there right now... Might be able to do it. I need more cooks, too. I think of it. These two are never really gonna cook, honestly. Humane meats with an E. That's right. What's a no prison trick? So basically prisoners don't know they're in a prison if they don't have any prison beds or prison sleeping spots. So if you have, like this prisoner here, if I removed all these beds, he would never escape. His interval would be never. And you can still convert and recruit and everything else. And, you know, they'll still eat from this and everything. So there's a prisoner exploit where they basically don't know they're in prison, so they will never escape. Yeah, the meat... We have plenty of time to get there as long as... Meat's a day and a half, I th yeah, right? Yeah, meat's a day and a half. So if they get it packed up fast enough and it gets down the road without having to spend the night... Yeah. Other colonies actually buy human meat? Yes. They will. The E is silent. Right. Unlike the people we butchered. of all prisoner beds are just the ones in the room if you if you have prisoner beds elsewhere they're they're unassigned they'll just bring those people to them so if you have some people you want in a real prison and their bed is assigned to them then you can still have a non-prison exploit elsewhere if you want yeah sign them yeah removing them putting them as colonists only yeah as long as they're not assigned as prison Tell them it's a long pork. That's true, though. Yeah, at the time of butchering, they were silent. Uh, so unfortunately, yeah. He's resting. Silence of the land. Uh, I might go over the new blog post at the end of stream. I, since I wasn't able to stream for a little while... I just read it myself, so I don't have a reaction type thing, but I might still do it at the end of the stream. Just to give, uh, give thoughts on it. Alright, give them all this meat before it rots. There you go. And let's see what else we want to get from them. Robust, great animals. Uh... Yeah, I think that's all we're going to get from this one. And is this one reset yet? Plasteel. Ah, oh, we got plenty of plasteel. I might actually look at books, but at the moment I'm trying to get stuff so we can get our um, helmets done, our weapons done, and the auto doors done. But yeah, we're mining a lot of plasteel, so I'm not too pressed on buying it at the moment. Only checking jeans because there could be some really crazy. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be checking books. There we go. Uh, have we scanned a close by gold yet? Got 
a lot of glass steel nearby. Maybe I should buy some more gold. Transfer pods still acts as suspended animation storage for meat and bodies? No, they don't. Meat rots, meat and food and bodies rot in pods now. Uh, things don't deteriorate from being outside or from being unroofed in pods still, but yeah, people get hungry in them, animals get hungry in them and die. Yeah. What you mean? Yeah, we haven't really needed it very much in this run. Need the psychopath trait to butcher humans without mood in vanilla. In vanilla, psychopath, cannibal, or bloodlust. They won't get the mood buff themselves, but the rest of the colony will. But in ideology, you can just have an ideology that doesn't care. So, cannibalism acceptable. No one here cares about it. But if you are playing without cannibalism uh, from ideology, then a psychopath, cannibal, or bloodlust can, can butcher human-like with no penalty to themselves. But everyone else in the colony that isn't one of those three things will get a minus six. Hey, hunger in a drop pod filled with food would be a horrible way to die. God. <laughs> yeah. Such torture. Let me check something here. Yeah, we already have all that set. I'm going to set another one just in case, but... Pretty sure we already have it, but. We just have so much work to be done. Are we the most powerful serum in the DLC? I don't know, yeah. And the thing is, we don't know what the downside is uh, overall, like. One that stops middle break seem yeah that, that seems kind of crazy but like can they get addicted to them Is, can they have an overdose like yeah, i don't know they act like how, do they act like drugs or an entirely new type of thing i'm not sure this we'll find out you also click clear all two or three times not sure why yeah i don't know you got to be care you got to be sure right It's a good way to slaughter your boomalope. Yeah. <laughs> Fearful construction. No. No thing. Resource pile of all weapons the lowest priority. See what's left when they are done smelting. Good way to do it. Yeah, I'm still wondering about that, too. I'm hoping that Sanity isn't a new need meter, but they have had it say multiple times now that certain things lower upon Sanity. Does that mean their mood, or is it a new meter? I don't know. I'm really hoping we don't get another needs meter, honestly. And we destroyed the double bid. Yeah, if we get another meter in here, oh, there's room for one. <laughs> uh, it's going to make some of the stuff that we saw maybe not not super fun. I'd hate to deal with another needs meter, but it'd make a lot of sense. It looks like it'd be very thematic, but I guess we just won't know. Blocking inspirations. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, movement commands during combat, like it will speed the pawns up. Uh, Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a... Uh, um, Probably like a reflex, at least for me, that's left over from RTS stuff. Back from when I like played competitive Brood War and stuff. No, I'm thinking about doing it maybe at the end of the stream if I have time. We'll see. The unimpressed look when the bed was rebuilt is only a good bed, yeah. You notice that? <laughs> It'd be fine if it was like up by recreation or something, but yeah, if that was the case though, it's like... 
And you have two bars, two need bars that are both like double dipping into each other. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Golden Spirit. Thank you for the five months. Thank you, Spirit. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And even if it is does end up that way, maybe there's a lot of ways to manage it or easy ways, so. Omnitrix logo? I don't know what that is. It's only really applicable dealing with anomaly stuff. Yeah. Hard to make, doesn't need a downside. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we just don't know. Going through the double door rather than the triple wall, or is it just random? No, they don't. Yeah. It's relatively random, yep. Brood War, the all-time GOAT PC game. Someone explain why I'm building this shape just for fun. Triangle shape things, just for fun. Just for fun, building different this one. Cold Bog, God, I hate Cold Bog. When, when would I ever want to go back to Cold Bog? I don't know. Uh, let's get our plastial. I mean, we have so much scanned. Yeah, I'm gonna make the auditors out of plastial, I think. So. Played a medieval run before. Not really. I mean, we've done runs where I was, like, kept on medieval weapons. Oh, like, we did a bow only run not long ago, right? Bows only. But it wasn't really a medieval run because all the enemies had their normal stuff and. We had power armor still, obviously. It was power armor and bows, but... More cold bog colonies. Ugh, I hate cold bog. It's from Bin Tin. I never really watched that. The, yeah, my Zombieland mod playthrough is up on YouTube, yeah. Both edited and full length. That was fun. Gold, hey, nice. Nice location. So we have all of our marine helmets done. We're just pumping out some plasteel for auto doors. I'll just mine through all the plasteel in here and then switch over to one of the ones out here. And then I need to get, yeah, like I said, I need to get the auto doors. And maybe I should have taken that person, the uh, cook earlier. So if it's not going to be more expensive than the base game, I don't know. Artemis, thank you for the seven months. Thank you, Artemis. Also very much appreciated. Power Armored Soldier with a Dark Souls Great Bow. Yeah, that's pretty much what we were, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, so these middle walls, it, this base would be better if I got rid of them entirely. Because then they can move around more easily. But it's okay. I'm not I'm not min-maxing this one as much as I normally would just to build just to build in a fun way. Sensor prisoners must save a nice bit of time. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does save a lot of time. Benny, speaking of Bin Tin, uh, Benny, thank you for the resub. Thank you for the three months. Also appreciate. keep trying to click like where a uh, conduit is. I don't remember where they are. So it would have been faster just to go into the power menu. My favorite kill box type. Didn't you ask me that earlier? Weren't you the one that asked that earlier? I swear someone asked that earlier and I answered already, but maybe it wasn't you. 
my answer again was uh, what I call the shotgun tunnel. But unfortunately, the shotgun tunnel, maybe it's changed in the last like hour. Yeah, maybe the uh, shotgun tunnel, unfortunately, is not as good in 1.5 because walls get damaged more from the shots. And so it's still usable. It's still fine. It's still really good in the early game. But it's unfortunate that uh, it's not as reliable in 1.5. I mean, just interesting. Yeah. Someone typed that exact message within the last hour. Like, all of it. Yeah, no worries. That's why I asked, but... I'm not having deja vu. This really happened. Uh, Raiden. Lord Raiden. Thank you for the brand new sub. Thank you, Raiden. What's the inflection point for when it's worth getting marine armor versus the standard duster flak vest combo? Couldn't find an answer on the website. So, marine armor is very good, but the trade-off is speed. So, I would say it's always worth, always, getting marine or cataphract if you can overcome the speed penalty or if the speed doesn't matter. So, if you are giving all your people bionic legs, then the speed hit's not going to really impact you nearly as much, and you just might as well have the better armor. Um, for me, since I do a lot of kiting in a lot of my playthroughs, a lot of times I won't go to those power armors, even after Bionics, just because of play style. But if you're doing a play style where you're mainly sitting in your base and you fight at a, at a kill box or you uh, like line up perpendicular to breachers, you know, you're not going out and things like the speed isn't going to hurt you as much. Um, I would maybe try switching over after you get like a Bionic leg, right? So it, you can offset it to speed hit a little bit. But yeah, the armor is really good. In fact, cataphract armor is just crazy strong. Like, it it all. I almost am always surprised how much damage a cataphract from like the Empire can take, because they're just it's super good. It's just it really slows people down. But bionic legs and cataphract armor and helmet uh, is pretty freaking good. So that's what I would say. It's it it's again really play style dependence. Um. But as long as the speed hit, if you have the stuff to do it and the speed hit won't hurt you, or you can overcome the speed penalty in some way, then yeah, for sure. Extra defense is awesome. All right, Felix, let's get, let's get your name. Gravy Girl. I haven't seen Gravy Girl in a while either. Gravy Girl. That sounds like one of the names from the children from the single phase run, honestly. <laughs> Come on, it's for noobs. That's right. All speed boosting mods, jeans. Yeah, there's lots of ways to offset it. If you have mods or bionics or jeans or go juice, you know, there's lots of things. Spencer. Spencer, thank you for the super chat. Relatively new to the content. Don't uh, join it a lot. Curious what, why you don't have as much Star Wars 2 content as Star Wars 1. Is it not as good? So there's a couple answers to that, Spencer. The first one is that I basically don't have anywhere near as much content with any game as, other than RimWorld because RimWorld is the primary game of the channel and that's what gets me all... That, that's what pays all the bills. That's, that's the most money. Like That's where I get my viewership and my money from. Back when Darkest Dungeon 1, when I was putting out all that content, Darkest Dungeon 1 was that game for the channel. Darkest Dungeon 2 is a real hit to the channel below RimWorld, so I just don't have as much time to, th to throw into it. Uh, it's not worth it. As far as is it a better game or not, the thing about Darkest Dungeon 2 is I'm kind of happy that it's a spin-off game. It's its own style. There's a lot of things I really like about Darkest Dungeon 2. I really like the token system. Um, I do kind of like the more roguelike elements to an extent. But I also feel like the game doesn't have as much longevity. And oddly enough, the the roguelike nature, the roguelite nature of it, which generally gives games more replayability, feels like it's actually given the game less replay, replayability to me compared to a long Darkest Dungeon 1 campaign. So yeah, the reason why there's not as much Darkest Dungeon 2 content as 1 on my channel is just Back then, Darkest Dungeon 1 was my primary game, so that was my primary content on, on both channels. And Darkest Dungeon 2 was never my primary game because RimWorld has taken that over for years now. 
Um, but I do like the game. I like Dark Souls 2. I really love the graphics and I really love the animations and there's a lot of good stuff. But for me, it's not great for the channel, so I just can't play it very much. And uh, even though I really liked it, it feels like it feels almost like I did everything in Dark Souls 2 way before I did everything in Dark Souls 1, right? I like I did everything. I'll probably go back and I'll do the DLC at some point because I haven't done that. But with the RimWorld DLC coming out, I can't. Um, I, I can't spend the time on that. So, I know that was a long answer, Spencer, but you paid for it. So I was going to be thorough. Uh, thank you again for the super chat. Waiting for the it depends. <laughs> There's so many challenges doing Dark Souls 1 as compared to Dark Souls 2. Yeah, and there's lots of themed things with it, yeah. And there are some things like that in Dark Souls 2, and we did some of them, but... It's weird because Dark Souls 1 is also repetitive, right? You have the four regions in the in the base game, and you just do the same four regions three times, and each one has one extra monster each, each time you do it, and one extra boss. So... I know some people think that uh, 2 is too repetitive, but 1 is really repetitive too, but there's just... Uh, there's just one of those like lightning in the bottle things that they captured the first game that even though the second game is really good and enjoyable, I don't feel like they captured that same essence to it, which is fine. Not all games have to be the same. It's really hard to recapture stuff like that, right? It's one of the things, um, they're not, they're, these are more sequels and spinoffs as far as we know, but it's one of the things I worry about worry. I have infinite games to play, but like Hades, I really loved Hades. I did so many challenge runs in Hades and got a lot out of that game but it was such a good game i know some people hate it but it was such a good game for me that, and that i liked it so much that i have i have a hard time believing that hades 2 can be anywhere near as good as hades 1 the same thing with like silk song like i really love hollow knight and i know some people don't but it is pretty popular i really liked hollow knight had a lot of fun with it um i'm really looking forward to silk song but it's gonna be hard for them to capture the same um magic with the first one so We'll see, though. Yeah, Supergiant has never let anyone down so far, but it's a high bar. It's a high bar. Yeah, no pr no problem, Spencer. We never play it. It was fun to watch Hollow Knight. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I like Metroidvanias, though. <laughs> I'm going to get into that where I'm just like, I like every genre of game. Did I play Have a Nice Death? No, I still haven't played that. I have it, but I haven't played it. Had some elements from both of those games. How are we doing on the Plasteel? We're getting there. We're going to keep pulling this out, and then we'll have enough to do the auto doors. Horror games are my favorite? No. <laughs> Metroid Dread? I'm not. I haven't played an actual Metroid game since... What was the one, the first one on the N64? That's the last one I played. <laughs> so. Is your new huge radius lamp worth it? Yes. Look at it. 50 steel, 50 watts of power. Lights an area that's about the size of 10 normal lights, yeah. Did I play Black Reliquary mod? I did, yep. Yeah. It's up on it's up on YouTube. Black Reliquary is about to have their full release, right? Alright, I think I'm gonna be done with research unless we get like some tech prints so i'm just gonna turn these off yeah i think it was metroid prime was metroid Pri was it metroid prime or was that gamecube actually you know what i did play one on the gamecube it's been a long time Metroid has been good since the super nintendo yeah i think i'm thinking of gamecube yep yep now in 64. metroid prime on yeah, gamecube prime is gamecube yeah there we go now it's coming back to me it's been a long time How do you get good at Dark Ascension 1? Uh, there's a couple of different things I would say. One is knowing that you're... A lot of people get attached to their characters in Dark Ascension 1. One of the things I always told people is like, man, I can't, I cannot get through this game. How do you do it? Not even challenge mode. How do you just get through stuff? I was like, well, you got to think of your, your care. You are the ancestor's heir, right? You're the... You're the nephew, you're the heir to the estate. You are not your 
like your characters you are your family is not your characters your your characters are a means to an end a tool use them to get to the heart they're going you're going to get some characters that have a lot of stuff that's too expensive to to heal them and get rid of them all right to heal them and get rid of their traits and stuff dismiss them new people new fodder come every week so that was the first thing is like consider your people a resource unless you're doing a challenge run what that's evil well, the ancestor's not a great guy, so I need another table sometime. But aside from that, just knowing what every monster does, knowing all the monster stats, I knew all of it. Like, I could tell you the crit chance on the monsters back then when I was doing that all the time. I just knew everything with Darkest Dungeon, so I knew what moves they could use, which positions they could use them from, which things to target first. Just knowledge game. You have separation anxiety. There was a Metroid 64. Characters are talking the bad are, are disposable pawns. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you're playing on like Stygian or Blood Moon where deaths matter, it becomes a little bit different, but. Okay, so Plasteel is looking pretty good. I think we might as well just finish that patch, though. That way I don't have to move stuff back there. What crate does the collector have? I don't remember the numbers anymore. I used to, though. If you watch the some of the old Darkest Dungeon 1 challenge runs I would do, like, I, I just I just know those numbers while I was playing it back then. Kind of like I know numbers of RimWorld now because I would answer the questions so often. And also back then, the stream was a lot smaller, so a lot of times I would just narrate what I was doing because there wasn't anyone to, that was chatting. And so I would find myself repeating like, all right, well, I know that this whatever character, like the Bone Arbalist has this number of crits, but it can only use this move on position three and four. And so I would just say those things that would get ingrained in my head. Whole maps can be a mineable resource, yeah. I went over Anomaly Preview 2 yet. Yeah, no, I'm going to do that here in just a little bit, I think. Why do I build triple wall instead of just double? Because this is a no kill box style, so I need more things for the enemy to attack. So in a normal run, I do double wall. And that's safe enough. But in this one, one of the strategies is going to just being uh, allowing enemies to divide up and attack walls while I pop out. So I need more walls for them to chew through. Especially during like a ship launch or something. Good way to stream, just walk duty since dead air. Yeah. yeah. Back when I only had like two or three viewers, I, I still don't have the viewer count on, so I generally don't know until I have to stream what I had. But um, back when I had two or three viewers, I would have the viewer count off and just pretend I was talking to 100 people. So. Is this going to be four or five walls thick? No, I'm going to stop at three. And then I'm going to have some other stuff out here. There are at least a dozen people watching now. Nice. Does chair quality influence social recreation gain speed? Uh, chair quality just changes um, comfort only. Yeah. At least five people. I'm trying to think if I'm going to have time to go over that today or not. That might be something I just have to pop on and do tomorrow between or after we're done like with groceries and stuff. I'll think about it because I have a two hour thing I need to do here in a little while. I do not get bugs. I have gotten bugs. Yeah. I destroyed a bunch of shells and and beds and I almost killed someone earlier. Yeah, we've we've had like I want to say like five or six dug too deep just today on the stream. Yeah. I think we already ate all the bug meat now too. Mm. Dug too deep is no is nothing right now, so it's it's only it's actually a benefit, right? So our people love bug meat. So having dug too deep just gives us mood increase at the moment. But yeah, we've had several today. 
I'll blast you. Bugs disabled yet? <laughs> Is there any bug gunk over here still? No, that's gone. Got an infestation there early. 500 counts watching. Nice, thank you. <laughs> Only if they're talking out their butt. <laughs> Does table quality influence anything? It just gives extra beauty and value in the room. So No, they don't eat faster at a better table or anything. So it's just it's just beauty, especially beauty nearby. You're starting a stride to survive and are looking for wisdom. So at Strive to Survive, you still don't have to worry about wealth too much, but I would say you might want to start getting the habit of at least worrying a little bit more about wealth if, if you've never done that. So like starting to do things like limit how many meals you make at a time and how many you have on hand, limit how much you plant, uh, extra crap that you get, like don't just store it forever, go out and trade it for something that helps you more or even just gift it to get rep. Also on Strive to Survive, I would highly suggest, uh, again, if this is your first time going up through these difficulties, I would really strongly suggest getting a comms console. Um, you can get it really, really quickly, especially on Crash Landed, which is what most people play on at that, or a lot of people play on, I should say. Uh, and, and getting allies with that extra stuff that you get, and then call in allies, even if the allies just come and like tank for you. The other thing I would say is uh, make sure you're doing door checks, right? Double doors of the gap are super, super good and super important. And you want to make sure you're looking at what doors you have open that aren't supposed to be or which ones are closed that aren't supposed to be, especially when a raid spawns. But without knowing your like exact play style and how your bases are or what your pressure point is, it's hard for me to give any more like super advice, you know? If you run into something... Okay, mech breach. Let's go. If you run into something specific, you know... Observer, name the bits, observer. Much appreciate it. I'll see how many and read it after this. Come on. Look at that shooting command. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Observer, thank you. Get a thousand bits. Chamber is too bad. You sort of don't have. Yeah, yeah. Smurf and I don't really have any pull with them. It's, it's. And anyone can join the development bug report. Discord, so it's not like this super exclusive club or something like that. It's just a lot of people just don't join it or don't want to spend the time helping or don't have the time or whatever. So, yeah. I I wish I could suggest things, you know, but... Sensei? Serious, where you save people's saves? Yeah, I've thought about that too. It depends on, I guess... Yeah, I... I don't, I wouldn't mind doing that. I've talked about that before. 
I would have to make sure that I don't accidentally just like every time I get someone save, I'm like, all right, bulldoze it down and make a barracks, you know, but <laughs> what's the trick to kiting? It depends on what you're kiting, but basically against centipedes, you line everyone up unless it's minigun centipedes, but the other centipedes, you line everyone up in a straight line. And then as soon as your guys shoot, you want to step back about five tiles for lancers. You need to have enough firepower to one volley a lancer. You actually outrange a Lancer, but they will get a shot off unless you can one volley them, which depending on quality of these weapons could be like 10 assault rifles. Um, with tribals, you kind of treat tribals a little bit like Lancers. You try to one volley and then as they get close, you back up. With pirates, I don't, I try not to kite unless they're melee. And even then, usually I don't because I could have go juice. Well, yeah, it depends on the threat at hand and which what you're using. But for assault rifles, it's basically line up. As soon as your people shoot, line up like five tiles back unless things are gaining faster on you, in which case you go maybe like eight or ten back. But TLDR is shoot and scoot. That's right. How to fix your base. Make a barracks. Ten second video. Yeah. <laughs> While maintaining the spirit of the base. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Like with most things, it's just practice too. Like the first time I was trying to do lots of kiting, absolutely lost people to, to centipedes. It can still happen, but you, you cannot kite minigun centipedes with assault rifles. Just again, to reiterate, don't try that. I also, that's one reason why I hated that they added those back to the game, but. Outgun and out cannon, superior firepower. That's right. Start smoothing floors. This is concrete. I can't smooth it. I mean, I can smooth like this, but yeah. I don't have any reason to right now. For now, we just need to get to, um, get to these plastic auto doors, so. I think we're pretty good on Plasteel. Let's go ahead and pull this over to Steel. I actually have it scan as much steel in the base as I... in the walls as I would have liked, but... One eighty year old pawn, a hundred golden thrones. Yeah. <laughs> you can smooth concrete in real life. It should be a mod to do it. What do you even do? Yeah, I don't know. Would it like change your concrete over to pave tile or something, but without the extra cost? Yeah. I don't know. You arrive this close to DLC feels bad. Yeah, unless you're doing a really fast, like, speedy run like we're doing, yeah. Gives us, yeah, it might be pretty powerful. Let me think about it. All right, so... Yeah, let's get these done. I'm going to need to run power up through all this. Give the worker a chance to develop the coach is uh... it's now April 1st on in your time, April Fool's time. That means it's time for me to make one of those videos, right? For YouTube tomorrow. And that's I'm quilting YouTube. Where I sit there and I'm quilting something that looks like the YouTube logo, and a lot of people click on it because they misread it as quitting. Ah, the classics. The classics. Hey, Mr. Azimo, thank you for the recommendation. It really does feel like, yeah, even the music, the music, the, <laughs> like all the buildings, the power, the Tempest is very similar to, um, to Tiberium. Yeah. I'm not affiliated with them at all, but I just happened to find it looking for RTS games. I hope it, I hope every game is good, but yeah, Tempest Rising definitely scratches that Command and Conquer itch. 
I think it comes out in June, right? Why I'm quilting RimWorld forever, yeah. It reminds you of your childhood. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, there's only two missions. You can play one mission as the good guys and one mission as the bad guys. Uh, Basically, GDE and Nod, honestly. <laughs> like, But I don't care. You know what? I'm super happy with him ripping off Command and Conquer. Honestly. What is the most long preserving vegetable? Corn. How difficult do I think an anomaly will be? I don't know. I hope it's actually really difficult, though. I, ho I hope the end game. I hope the new threats are div really difficult on 500%. So I don't want to... I hope it's not like overly punishing for more casual players and people that don't have as much time to, to play the game. But I do hope the threats are decently challenging so that we're just not like... I don't want it to be like you get 10 assault rifles and you can beat everything. Which is kind of what the game is like with all the other threats now that I know them. And it might eventually be that way. It doesn't start out that way. We'll, we'll have to see... I'm thinking there's probably going to be some things that we can't just do that to, I hope. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. My favorite Chaos God, Nurgle. What kind of map will I do my first Anomaly build? I'm not sure, yeah. I was actually thinking about that previously. Do I want to just do a very... I don't know if I want to be fighting the map at the same time, so I might just do a very standard map. Lulu can't be killed with guns. Peripherals, so do you think? It involves itself. Yeah, that's what I th I'm wondering about too. Like, how many of them are just going to be like internal strife, sort of almost, right? Yeah. Who knows if there are going to be actual big raids of these new things? I don't know. I guess we'll find out real soon. What game were we talking about? Tempest Rising. Yeah, it's just a game that I found when I was looking at RT upcoming RTS games, and I was like, man, this looks like Command and & Conquer. They had a demo, so I got on there, and I had a lot of fun. Yeah. It's just two missions, but it's like, this this is Command & Conquer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So if you are, uh, especially, like, it felt kind of like Red Alert 2, Red Alert 3 era, but with better graphics, modern graphics. So if you're a fan of, like, that era of Command & Conquer, you'll probably like that. I hope the rest of the game feels that way. Like I said, there's only one mission with each of the two factions right now on the demo. I definitely wanted more. Up between the walls, just past the walls. Uh, I'm, I'll get rid of that one now that we've tripled up. But here, I'll go over it with this one. So the double wall with the gap is extremely important for a lot of reasons. The biggest one is whether... Uh, so, like... Not just colonists, but visitors, traders, etc. will try to take cover. And a lot of times what will happen is if you have two doors and they're, they're touching, like if we had it that way, and this is a trader and they're shooting at a manhunter and they die, they will hold that door open because they died and they'll drop their gun or meal or whatever and hold the other door open. And then the manhunters or enemies will just pour through. So the biggest one for the gap is so that the two doors don't get held open by things like that. Because you can lose very easily just by double doors getting held open and things pouring in there that you didn't expect. There's another thing that it can help with, and that is when an, when a unit is running from something, if they're getting meleeed, sometimes the melee unit will meleeing person will miss them, and it almost like self stuns when they miss, and that gives you time to get the second door started to be open, and it will you'll get through the second door, and that person will get trapped here without holding both doors open. So the short of it is double door with a gap on your outer walls will save you from having lots of enemies pour through 
in some some circumstances. Been a while since like a pure RTS release, yeah, especially that kind, yeah. Weird question for April first. Not if Notch wants to make more games, do I support it? I don't know who Notch is, but I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> if anyone wants to make more games, make more games. Yeah, well, the, the problem with Recon Armor is generally Flak setup actually has more defense than Recon. Notch is a Minecraft. I've never really played Minecraft much. So I, I play it with my daughter. She and I used to play it together on, uh, like, Sunday nights. But... Minecraft, dude. Yeah, I don't want to get any. any yeah, I don't know any anyone. So, if someone makes wants to make a new game, make a new game. I don't know. Controversial person. I have no idea. Whatever. You're controversial these days. Got you. I'm not getting into any any of that. So, because I don't know any of it anyway. But even if I did, I wouldn't get into it. All right. Play Minecraft in Room World anyway. Already made another game. Hmm. All right, we got the double auto doors down there. Fantastic. You know what? Let's go ahead and just get them all built before I take out those other doors. Screw it. Good. Uh, also, that reminds me. Smell, slag, do forever. Drop on the floor, only look nearby, and let's throw some slag out here. There we go. Be most interesting for a Nolly run towards single phase, but might do mechs first. Um, I'm hoping there's new scenario. I think it's very likely that there will be a new scenario because the previous DLC added scenarios like that. So I think if they make a new scenario or multiple scenarios, I'll go with one of those. If they don't, then I'll probably just do like crash landed, honestly, so I can get into I, I'll have electricity and I can get into the other stuff, presumably relatively quick, quickly. But yeah. Inner base is just for fun, yeah, just for fun. Just for fun. Does that thing in my hair stay up like that naturally? Yeah. It does. I wake up that way even if I haven't showered and stuff. Yeah. At least a little bit. But also the rest of my hair will kind of be up like that a little bit too. So it's really the rest of my hair that I put down some, not really the front that I stick up. Yeah. Usually start Rich Explorer. Yeah, I hope there's new scenarios. So if there's new scenarios, I'll start with them. If there's not, I'll probably just do crash landed. And we can get into the, hopefully the meat of stuff relatively quickly. We're getting quite a bit of steel now.
Should allow us to get lights anywhere that we want. Yeah, I don't think my first anomaly run, it's going to be an exploratory run, so I don't want to be battling against other crap, so probably won't do any real extreme maps. We'll see. What are the best clothes that aren't armor? You basically want button-down shirt for that layer, pants, because they cover more parts, and either duster or cape. And then whatever the best helmet is you can get. Hold down the rest of it with headphones. Yeah, pretty much headphone dent. Usually make cataphract for everyone or just for melee. Uh, I'll make cataphract helmets for everyone. I usually don't make the cataphract armor unless I'm doing something special like going heavy melee. Yeah. But again, if you can offset the speed with like bionic legs or something like that, cataphract is super good. Hidden conduits prevent z Yep, they do. They do, they do. Hmm. All right. Surprise, no Devil Strand. Eh. Devil Strand's nice, but eh. We do have a patch here that I can actually start doing it. Maybe I will. Maybe I will now that we have that space. Is that a light blue camel? No, that's a silhouette. It's a 1.5. You can either have silhouettes and dots or nothing when you zoom out now. Yeah, I wish recon armor was a little bit better. Oftentimes you'll make recon armor and they won't even put it on because the flak stuff you have ends up being better. Layered flak ends up being better. Recon armor is in kind of a weird spot. Eighty-six bowler hats. <laughs> I mean, I would do it, but I don't know that I. I have the materials for eighty-six bowler hats. A lot of hats. Uh, if we had another human raid, we could do it pretty quickly. An odd request, yeah. I might take it. Because it's going to give us quite a bit of time. Like, we can knock that out if we have a big human raid. Larry Flack might need a bit of a nerf or recon. Maybe need something added. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually of the opinion that they should make other things better than make things worse, you know? So, I'd be good with recon getting some kind of bonus. I don't, I don't know what they, would, what they would do. Maybe if recon made it so that... That would be that would be too powerful. I was gonna say, maybe if recon made it so that the pawn was unstoppable, kind of like the unstoppable gene, but then they would probably have to do that with the other power armors as well. That would be incredible. The unstoppable gene is so good. Maybe give recon a slight speed increase. Yeah. God, could you imagine if the power armors gave unstoppable? That'd be so good. You would think Cataphract would get unstoppable, yeah. Recon stealth bonus. Yeah, maybe just giving a speed bonus, because I really speed is really important in this game, especially in my playstyle. I think I would use recon more if it gave some speed, yeah. 1700 humane leather. We can get that with a big raid. So I guess we'll accept this and just hopefully we will get a big raid. If not, oh well, 14 days accuracy on it or something maybe a chance at unstoppable that would be kind of cool if recon gave a small chance of unstoppable marine gave slightly more and then cataphract was always unstoppable that would be it would make a lot of sense if if cataphract was unstoppable all right so we got our double doors done uh 
all right. I said I was going to use charge rifles this game, so let's start working on that, I suppose. Lore and... Okay. All right, been a long time, been a long time. How do you get Hussars? You can, um, uh, I mean, they're just world pawns, right? So you can arrest them, save them, give them as slaves. Yeah, I did the Ancient Danger, yeah. I've always wanted that too, yeah. I, I was just afraid I would forget about it. I usually do that too, is I'll, I'll leave it sitting there until and except at the last moment to give me as much time as possible. I don't know if it actually works that way or not, but I do that too. Do I use specialized armor with jetpacks or rocket launchers or fire resistant? No. All those armors ha have slightly less defense than their counterpart. So I typically don't. Um, Out of them though... <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. I I just typically just don't. Yeah, I usually don't need it, but kind of cool. Fire resist is very much a meh, to be honest. <clears throat> Melee guy pawn is a quest reward. Just needed to have a guest for 16 days. Wait, are you? Do you mean like my actual melee god gene pawns, or just a really good melee pawn for your run? Can you still shock lance enemies? Yes. Shock lance does not have death on down chance, and the brain damage chance doesn't scale with population intent. So shock lances are one of the really good ways to get a lot of pawns, yeah. e even in the van vanilla game. In fact, if you are playing without join ritual, even if you are, but if you're playing without join rituals or if you're playing vanilla or whatever, I would say buy every shock lance that you're offered, and having a couple of insanity lances is always great too. You are playing with the melee gods? Nice. There's max population? No, there's not max population, but there's something in the game called population intent. So how population intent works is basically the more pawns you have, there's a higher chance for uh, enemies to ha to die on down, so you get less prisoners. There's less of a chance for you to get joint events or things that give you pawns or drop pod events that give pawns or slavers. So... There's no hard limit to pawns, but there are a lot of things in the game that follow population intent. And population intent basically tries to keep you eventually with no other factors that you're doing at all. If you are recruiting pretty much most of the people that are down from raids in like the high teams, it really, it really gets it as bad as it gets at 20 pawns. But the game, especially in vanilla, uh, is trying to get you generally to like 12 to 18 pawns. Once you get to that, you'll notice you get way less down prisoners unless they're unwavering. You get way less ways to get people. Now, there are certain things in the game that bypass population intent. Join rituals bypass population intent. Uh, children bypass population intent. And there's some things that just don't roll against it anyway, like shock lances. by accepting it as late as you can. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I'm not sure if it works that way. I usually do that, but... but yeah, tell, yeah, babies don't uh, don't count for population, population intent, so you can get as many babies as you want. It's not like people get less likely to get pregnant if you have more colonists. Yeah. Alright, charge rifles are coming in. So the time of kiting is coming to an end, or at least we're going to be doing a lot less kiting, I should say. It's a little scary.
I know that's going to hit some of that, but it will. Yeah, bleeding does not respect death on down chance if they bleed out while they're walking around. So you can still cheese that if you want. You can make bleed boxes with the roof exploit or whatever. Proxy rate is mysteriously declining no matter how much we... <laughs> what armor do you go for with melee god pawns? So in melee, it's pretty linear. Yeah, cataphract is the best. Like, cataphract is crazy. Um... If you're doing melee blocking a lot or just going all out melee or whatever, Cataphract is just so incredibly tanky. But that's the way to go. Uh, and Marine Armor just is good, just not quite as good. And up until that, just use whatever you can you can get, basically. Cat the flak stacking, I guess. Is the flooring for beauty or does it give other benefits? Movement speed. Movement speed on this sand is 76%. Movement speed on this is 100%. Before we close, if you can. Legendary charge rifle. This weapon is engraved with an illustration of the sky illuminated in grays and oranges. Floating over a settlement. There is no... There is no brigand in sight. The work is executed in an amateurish yet attractive style. Strikingly, a cobra fades in far from the main subject. All right, <laughs> you say so. No research. We have everything that we want researched. So the only reason we still have research benches is if we end up getting a tech print that I want to use. One hundred alchemists riding penguins with bow ties. <laughs> yeah, I know what a brigand is. It's just weird that they specifically are like, "There's no brigand in sight." It's like, why would you assume that there should be in this? The painting is of a sunset, and there's no brigands at all around, despite what you might think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. Brigand. So another. There's an enemy in Dark's dungeon. Brigand. Oh, yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. It's all good. Now you know, now you know. Yeah, I've done it, yeah. You, when we get a really crazy one of the arts, I do put it in uh, AI, yeah. Sunset is prime brigand time, after all. <laughs> you got a point, actually. Marine armor can be good, but yeah, it's nowhere near as good as Cataphract, yeah. Multi, uh, so triple prong imps. Okay. I'm loving these auto doors. So glad we got those set up.
Freaking Gormine breakdown right now. Alright, will we get enough human leather to get the hats made? I don't know. Guess we'll find out. We only needed like what less than 2k, I think. Oh, Jerry Marine armor caps armor. Um well the other thing is it over capping with armor actually is good because the other layers getting defense, like how armor rolls, let me see. It's kind of a complex thing, but you can go in here to read it. So like, here we go. So basically this has predominantly sharp, right? But if something ends up rolling through the sharp, it then rolls against the blunt. So even if you have an armor that had like 200% sharp resistance, right? Um, I mean, obviously that's really good. If something is through, it's going to go to the blunt. It, it explains all that in this window. I'm not going to read it, but you can check that out in the game if you want. But basically... More armor equals more good, yeah. Yeah, Raven just casually walking by the bullets, yeah. 1660, thank you. How many more hours am I going to stream today? Maybe like two and a half? Two and a half? Going to sleep soon? Yeah, I'll be here about two and a half more hours, I'm guessing. Big number good. Small number bad. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like I said, it goes over that. Um, just just go into any armor. It doesn't even have to be this, and you can read it, but... Upon taking damage, first this armor rating is reduced by the attacker's armor penetration value. The remaining armor rating is then compared against a random number from 0 to 100. If the random number is under half the armor rating, the damage deflects harmlessly. If the random number is over half the armor rating, but no, not higher than the armor rating, the damage... Blah, blah, blah. Each layer of armor is applied separately from the outside in... Yeah, it's crazy. And clothes are better than marine armor. If you're, oh, if you're interested in only sharp, yeah. Bullets are sharp damage, but. Yeah, and then it got in order of layers, yeah, which I think is what you were mentioning. Talking about. Big number good. Touch bullets, they aren't sharp. Well, they are in Rimworlds. We're shooting knives, basically. Well, uh, yeah, there's a lot of information in the game, yeah. In those little information panes, yeah. More power needed. Uh, probably when we start putting these other lamps down. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and do it before I forget. Uh, all right, so who's our cook here? Skulls, grab go juice. Butcher, butcher. Bowler hats, right? Oh man, can we make 86 and get there within nine days? It's really close by. That's a lot though. Well, let's, excuse me, let's wait and see how much human leather we have. I'm looking to add more colonists. I probably will after we get the, these guns done. Yeah, we should get enough. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can butcher those also. All right, let's get started on it. Uh, 86 bowler hats. I'm just gonna leave it on all. Hold on. All right. Door configuration: delete heat, or is there no roof there? It deletes heat. You can use it in under. You can use it even in overhead mountain, in mountain bases. Yet. Yeah. Does butchering rotten people give less resources? Uh, if they're missing body parts. Yeah. It'd be hard to carry all the hat boxes. So. We're going to look at new spoiler. Uh, I will look at it again, yes, at some point. But I've already, I've already went through it once. Benches, yeah, maybe. Right, it's the bowler hat factory, apparently. <laughs> oh. Yeah, my bad. I don't know why. Yeah, I was thinking differently. Yes, you can't butcher rotten. For some reason, my brain was reading that as in, do you get less or like injured or like have had their body parts and stuff shot off. I'm not sure why my brain went to that, but no, you can't you can't butcher if they're rotten at all. So we gotta we gotta get that butchered before that. Going to look. Oh, we should link settings of buildings. Yeah, that mod is, for that is really good. On top of the queue, well, I don't want them to not have clothing. It's fine. I mean, do we have forty-four already? All right, we're gonna meet. We're gonna meet our quota. <laughs> Man, we're just sprinting through that. Holy crap! Pleasure bowler hats galore. Yeah. Up to 73 already. Nice. Oh, there's one that came out today as well. No, I haven't I haven't checked that. There's a third one now. Alright, well I'll do that one really soon then. Our third one? No, there's only two. There's only two. What? What are you talking about? It came out 10 minutes ago. Explain how you have your cooler set up. So basically in RimWorld, for whatever reason, doors delete heat because they're a one by one room. So if you have a door, you can have up to three coolers, even under overhead mountain, vent into that door. It doesn't even have to be unroofed. 
and that door will disperse the heat of up to three coolers and just delete it. So you can have three coolers that vent into a single door, even under overhead mountain. So there one, just two. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, no worries. Eighty nine. Yeah, you can just vent them into a, a door. You don't, you don't have to unroof it. Depending on the map, it might be more efficient to un or to remove the roof, but very map specific. Uh, quest. What's this one? Okay. I don't think they've reset yet, but we might go. Nah, you know what? We'll, we'll go somewhere else to trade after he's back. Let's just get this done. Early access to anomaly. As far as I'm aware, they've never given early access. Like, they gave me a key last time, but it didn't work until the DLC came out. Suggested pre-patch. That was just patch 1.5. Patch 1.5 is the pre-patch to anomaly. That's why it's on the unstable branch and it's not publicly released yet. 1.5 is the anomaly pre-patch. There's always a pre-patch to the DLC and 1.5 is that this time. So you're in it. Hope you're a good slave. Oh man, General XO. I can't wait for you to see more about your character. I'm not going to spoil it. General XO, you have a very, um, you have a story ahead of you <laughs> in this single phase run. Excited. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they would let me like stream anomaly early, that would be such an incredible thing for the channel. <laughs> but um yeah, I don't I don't see them doing that. Balen! Balen, thank you for the donation. $30. Snacks in the woods and no one else is around. Does he leave the trash? No, he doesn't leave the trash. Wait, did I forget to cancel that at one of them? Uh uh, thank you, Phelan. I'm not leaving trash behind. I'm not leaving trash behind. All right. I, I think I'm just going to leave these here. Uh, How close is he to being out? I mean, we've got days left, right? So you should be able to get there. No problem. They're like right next door. Badger, badger, badger. I gotta switch over to the Falconeer thing. What's on the stack budget shortlist? I'm not sure. I was wanting to go see the new Godzilla movie on Tuesday, but I might not get to you. So for that, I'm, I'm not sure. You know what I had last time when I went and saw Dune for the second time? Um, I had two packages of peanut butter M&Ms. Not, not, this was contraband though, right? I stopped at the dollar store and bought two packs <laughs> and I just took them into my pocket. No marine armor? Not right now. Marine armor would slow us down. Speed is more valuable to me right now than the marine armor. Save like $16 doing that? Yeah. <laughs> That's illegal. All right. Just don't let them know. You guys... You guys want narc on me for that, right? Right, right. Contraband or responsibly adulting. Man, I'm glad I found this theater. So it's not the closest theater to me, but it was the one showing when I first went to see uh, Dune 2 for the first time. Uh, oh no, birthday. Bad back. Well, at least we can fix that one. 
Um, when I first went to see Dune 2, I went to a theater that I don't usually go to that's a little bit further away because the, sh the timing worked out better. And then I go in and they have this like, uh, this big poster that's like talking about their almost like subscription deal, right? Their membership thing. For $12 a year, you can sign up and every Tuesday, you can come in and watch as many movies as you want, even new releases for $5. And they give you a free popcorn every Tuesday. Like what? I, I hardly ever go to the movies because it's so expensive, but I saw that and I was like, I'm gonna see everything. <laughs> so uh, I signed up. Yeah, crazy, it's crazy. What theater? I kind of don't want to say because I've already had trouble with people figuring out where I am and who I am. And I don't want to have to move my daughter out of her school system because of it, you know? But it's the second closest theater to me. I'm sure you can research it and find find a deal, but is it AMC or Regal? I'm not answering. I'm sorry. I'll just tell you that they have a theater um, in or near Indianapolis. <laughs> people do that? Oh, yeah, man. I had that happen when I was only averaging like 48 people and I had that happen. And I was like, wait a minute. This is only supposed to happen to really popular streamers. But no, it only takes one crazy person. I had someone uh, about five years ago send me pictures of my daughter. I was like, yep, that's it. I'm not using my daughter's name anymore. I'm not using my real name anymore. Not telling people where I am. Yep. So. Nuts. And then just a few months ago, I had another thing in the Discord where someone found out my address they, they used their work. They told me they, they they used their, which is illegal to do. I'm, I don't know if they got fired or not, but they used their work um, computer, wherever, whatever they do for work to find my real address. And I didn't believe them at first because I, I didn't see how they could have gotten it. And then they DM'd me on Discord and enlisted my full name and listed my address. And when I bought my house, so crazy people. So anyway, that's why I'm like, not going to tell you the theater because even though there's a chance uh, it, it's prob probably no one's going to do anything like that but it's happened to me twice now so yeah anyway the theater has a really good deal crazy i know i had to i had to call the police and let them know i was like hey i i stream for a living i'm a content creator and someone just let me know that they have my house's address um so if you get any calls or whatever about it or whatever i appreciate you contact me or have it on file or something like that so uh, I don't want to get like swatted or something right so what's my public service announcement on this my public service announcement is when you're streaming use a, a VPN that's close by to you so you don't lose any quality but your inf information is at least a little bit safer so I do that now and don't give anyone your real name or your real address um yeah all you can do even that people are going to end up finding stuff out i remember seeing a long time ago where there was like a popular streamer who was streaming in front of their window and someone triangulated where their house was based on things they were seeing out the window right so it only takes one crazy person you know i remember i remember when that first happened i really couldn't believe it and i was like wait i'm not big enough i'm not a big enough streamer to have people finding out my home address <laughs> you know but anyway I know we kind of got off track, but the, um, yeah, that theater deal, uh, was crazy when I saw it. And I was like, I am signing up to that. I'm going to start seeing a lot more movies in theater because I hadn't for years because of the crazy pricing. You don't understand what motivates people to do that. I don't know. The first one felt like they were trying to be like my best friend. Like the messages were like, were like, oh, haha, -ha, look. My daughter does this too, and I was like, a crap? Like, it was such a weird feeling when I saw a picture of my daughter sent to me in a private message. Someone finding you through your window would be impressive, yeah. <laughs> but. Ancient danger diving like you're five? Sure. Here's ancient danger diving like you're five. Go into, uh, where is it? Is it under general or is it gameplay? 
go into gameplay, switch your maximum number of qualities from whatever the default is you have to a different number. Something higher than one. Form a caravan. Go settle on a map. Set up a very small temporary base if you want. Open the ancient danger. Try to kill what's inside without opening the, the caskets. Put a door on it so that the ancient danger becomes a room like I did here. Put down sleeping spots, make it into a prison. Have enough stuff that you can kill whatever's inside if they're they're pirates. Shoot at one of these to open it. If they're pirates, kill them. If they're ancients, capture them into uh, into the, the prison spots. That's the very, very basics of it. There's a lot more you can do and some precautions you can set up. In fact, that might be a good short guide for me to make sometime. Because it's very strong. But, uh, yeah, the basis is just go settle another map and open its ancient danger and then get out with whatever you want from the inside. You just got to make sure you don't get killed while you're there. All right. Operation. Stall. Phoenix Spine. Girl, get up. Hmm. Hold up, Tiro. What the crap? Cat, thank you for the super chat. Thank you, Cat. These people, crazy people, ruin your opportunity for good theater deals. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Cat. Um, I would say just look around at the theaters near you with it, that you're willing to drive in and see if any of them have deals like that. Yeah, it was it was, it was a crazy deal. Free popcorn on Tuesday and five dollar movies on Tuesday. Even new movie, like just go for five bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know how long they're going to be offering that deal, but man, I scooped it up. So, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, thank you. It's gonna be just a skin for assault rifle or the new rifle. Uh, I think that's the Hellcat. Yeah. I think that's the Hellcat rifle. I might be wrong, but it would make sense, right? It has like that little orange part on it. Yeah. Nude movies. I don't know if they have nude movies, but they have new movies. It's people from one TikTok clip. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. I really didn't think, like, I wasn't being, like, open about where I was and everything when I first started or anything. Like, not like that. But I was really taken off guard when that when that happened. All day Tuesday? All day. Yeah, all day. Even at night. They have some other, like, special seats that you have to pay extra for if you want, but I don't care about that. This one actually had something I hadn't seen before, where they have a front row that is love seats. That's like right under the friggin' screen. It's kind of weird. I have, I have not seen anyone in them yet. I don't want to see anyone in them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they have like lay down love seat two person things like right up against the friggin' screen. And then the very back row, they have seats that lay down all the way. The other ones are reclining seats, but yeah, the love seats where you're like looking up at the screen. I don't know if those people are watching the movie very much, honestly. Shout out to Todd Howard. They know. Do I think those are the best or worst? I like, I like sitting relatively close, especially because these seats mostly lay down. Like they recline quite a bit. So I like being relatively close, um, but not like that. Yeah. I don't know how far away I would say. I'll try to think about it next time I'm there and see what I would say. But Not too much cloth. Everyone is already dressed. You can give it as a gift to a faction and make them your ally, or you can sell it, or you can make it into chairs. You have a theater that uses luxury car seats. Interesting. You fall asleep while laying down unless it's action. <laughs> uh, 
I like sitting as far away from people as you can. Yeah, this uh, theater also has an app where you can see what seats have been bought and where people are sitting so you can plan. Yeah. I keep talking more and more about the yeah food service and stuff. Yeah. Incogni is a way to get some public information. I haven't heard of that one. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, they fixed the double click. Thank goodness. For anyone that didn't hear, I have I have literally no sway with Ludian at all. I'm just in the developer or development uh, bug report Discord, which anyone can join. But for anyone that didn't hear, the double click thing when it changed, I reported it as a bug, and one of the developers came in and was like, "Intended behavior. We changed it on purpose." And they closed and locked the bug report thread for it. And I was like, I don't know, man. Maybe it's something to do with, with the DLC. So I kind of just was like, man, that sucks. But it must be a DLC thing. And the more I played with it, the more I hated it. And I shouldn't have, but I, I made a video and I sent it to a different developer. I was like, this is how awful this is. And it's not like this in any other game. And it's worse than it used to be. And it's it it has almost gotten me killed multiple times. There's just, it's the function doesn't make sense. And I sent it to them and they changed it. And I was like, I, I felt like sending them that. They might actually kick me out or ban me from the bug report discord, but they changed it. And then maybe some other people complained as well, but man, I oh mean, I'm so happy they changed it. And when the patch note came out about them changing it, Smurf reached out and contacted me within like 10 minutes. He's like, hey, did you see? I was like, wait, what? It's like, they reverted, they reverted that change. Most people, if you give respectful feedback, well, I did give respectful feedback, and then they locked. They they said it was intended, locked it, and closed it. And I went around that, and I and I sent a video to a different developer. Uh, so probably shouldn't do that, honestly. But it worked out this time, so now I'm gonna do it all the time. I talked to the wrong guy the first time. Yeah, that's what I was kind of wondering. That's why I did it. Extended Battles, half day to day. You started playing with combat, AI 500, Mob, Fog of War. So Extended Battles, what I often do, you'll see a lot of my playthroughs that I'll have tables and chairs all around the base. And if someone is starving or hungry, I will have them go and, and eat a meal at one of those. The other thing is having people have drugs on them. So if I'm having like a long battle, I might have everyone having or carrying go juice. And it might be the difference in winning or losing a hard battle or even like a long battle. But I will sometimes, even if I don't need everyone, I will grab like four or five of the people, put them, take them back manually to the base, uh, restrict them to inside the walls, undraft them so they can quickly uh, eat, do a little bit of rest or whatever. So you can cycle pawns like that, but also having areas around that you're going to that are that they can stop and eat at a table or get some beauty or whatever the case might be helps out a lot too. How do you make them carry jo go juice? Go into drug policies. Go juice. Carry one. Keep an inventory. You expect to see and tell it though. Yeah, there's a lot out there. Also, when you have someone with go juice in their inventory like that, here, I'll just show you. Do we have enough? No, not really. Um, but anyway, uh, if you have someone with go juice in their inventory, they'll have a button to take the go juice, or you can just take it from the bowl in their inventory. But like, as you see here, I have tea on everyone for mood. It's just in their inventory in case I need mood on them. All right, so we are switching over to these guns now. Nice. Steel. Hmm. Have I done anything for Anomaly Preview 2 yet? No, I haven't yet.
squeeze, sir. Bye. I'm trying to think of what I want to do next. I know we're going to get these weapons, right? Um, I do have extra. Also, we all set up. Uh, oh, right. I was doing lights. That's right. So for anyone that doesn't know, when your pawn is in the dark, it's the equivalent of them having peg legs and being uh, pessimistic. Pessimistic peg leg pawn, basically. Impressive, whatever. So I try to get lights everywhere. So they're never in the dark. When do I plan on streaming the Falconeer? Really soon, actually. Ever done a full loose sphere and playthrough? Yes. Yeah, I've done a couple, actually. This farm is just too much. No, um, as long as you are having people out trading on cooldown, it's usually pretty sustainable, depending on how many you have. But I've had runs with dozens of pawns on it. Several times, actually. Well, uh, settlements have a pretty decent chance of having Lucifirium, so as long as you're near some settlements that can trade, you're looking at trade ships, and if you get really desperate, you can uh, you can go Ancient Danger Diving. I've had to do that a few times on Lucifirium runs. Oh, what? Okay. Probably going to be enough light. Been over the teaser two yet? No, not yet. Tell the story about the only a few pawns Luciferium story. Yeah, it's been a while. So, during the twenty year run back when one point two was brand new, and this runs up on YouTube. It's not edited though. It's a really old run. I think it was the first run I ever put on YouTube or one of them. Um, I had one of my like early pawns have a brain scar, and I kept waiting for like a healer mech serum. Kept waiting. I was like, I don't want to put him on Luciferium. He's a really good pawn, and it's like, all right, we can we can put one person on Luciferium. We can deal with this. And so I put him on Luciferium. And then, sure enough, another one of my best pawns got some brain damage. And I was like, man, all right, two pawns isn't too bad. You know, we, we can do that. We can have two pawns on Luciferium. And before I knew it, like, people were, like, losing a finger or something. And I was like, do I have the drug for you? Here's your Luciferium. You'll need to take this every 6.66 .66 days or you will die. So I started doing that and I didn't really realize I didn't for some reason just how much Luciferium I was putting on people and lose like we had ran out or we're about to run out of Luciferium I was like man why are we going through Luciferium so fast I don't I only have a couple pawns on Luciferium and someone in the chat one of the moderators at the time was uh, named Gruntwork was like Adam I think you have I think you have more than a couple people on Luciferium and I was like maybe like eight and they're like, no, Adam, I think you might have more than eight on Luciferium. And I click and I start going through health and I start counting. And I have like 25, 30 people, something crazy on Luciferium. I'm like, oh, no, I have made a mistake. <laughs> so we spent a lot of the rest of that run constantly having a caravan out trying to get Luciferium. So Luciferium is really good if you can maintain it. But uh. Yeah, uh, it was it was more than I had intended on that run. Last deal going up. I don't know what you mean. When will Granny be back? I meant to turn that on today and I forgot. Defenseless Mother. Thank you for the eight months. Thank you, Defenseless Mother. Anniversary just in time for the next DLC. Thank you, Defenseless Mother. Help that scenario. Yeah, it, it was just funny though. Do I want to worry about having this sun lampable in case we have toxic fallout? No, we have so much food. It's fine. What's the biggest change for you so far? 1.5 crawling is pretty crazy to get used to. I like all the new buildings a lot. Like I'm so happy with the underground conduits. It makes it so you can just run 
Like, you don't have to have walls running out to these geothermals. Like, if I wanted to put a geothermal up here, used to, I would surround it, and then I'd have to have a wall going all the way down and all the way over to protect my conduits, right? But now I just use underground conduits, and all I need is just the wall around it, which is really nice. Floodlights are nice. Yeah, lots, lots of good quality of life improvements. Hourglass meta OP. <laughs> I don't know. I was talking about that earlier. Yeah, I hope sanity is not a new need, but we don't know yet. They keep talking about sanity, but is that... Are they just mean... Is that a mood thing? Or is it... It really sounds like it's a new need, but I hope not. Vampires on Lucerium and Cataphract are pretty okay dudes. They're pretty okay. No ornate doors. No, I don't need them for anything at the moment. Sandy is overrated. <laughs> Being struck by floodlights. Yeah, someone was talking about that earlier, but if it was realistic, yeah, it would it would definitely cause a cause a problem. Okay. Need steel again. I just have had consciousness or something. Yeah, who knows? So excited for Anomaly. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Really, I really hope at least one of the new weapons is really good. I mean, Royalty added really good melee weapons. Maybe Anomaly would add really good ranged weapons. We know it's adding at least three ranged weapons. I just hope they're really good. Got that Neuroformer there. Hellcat Assault Rifle. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Yeah. Is there any Anali that you're extra hyped for? I'm really looking forward to new threats because we have all the threats figured out in the game right now, so at least for a while, it'll be nice to not know what the best way to deal with each threat is. Um, aside from that, I'm looking really forward to all the new items and trying them out, like the serums that are in the new thing, uh, trying out the new weapons, who knows, there might be other new things. Crossbow, Hellcat, and a flamethrower of some sort. Did it say what the name of the flamethrower was? Can't remember now. I feel like it did. Looks like a camouflage painting. <laughs> the zoom out me. some effect the crossbow yeah maybe yeah i think the hellcat is going to be both assault rifle and flamethrower i don't know because they specifically named all three of them in the first they named all three of them in the first preview if i remember right there isn't an existing flamethrower they just remastered an existing flame there is no flamethrower in the in vanilla when is it on way out? The 11th. The 11th. I'll be streaming it every single day. Hopefully the Hellcat will replace the assault rifle. I don't... Yeah, maybe. The dead life stuff could be huge too. Yeah, for some reason I wasn't uh, remembering at first that you could do... The preview said uh, there were shells. I, I remembered the packs, but... Yeah, there is no flamethrower. There is an incendiary launcher, but that launches a shell that explodes and fires. It's nothing like a flamethrower. There's a Molotov. 
There's a Molotov and incendiary launcher, and then there's EMP grenade and EMP launcher. Those are like paired things, but according to what we've seen in the two previews, there should be an actual flame thrower in this. There's the fire breather gene, yeah. Do I always play vanilla? Uh, no, I don't. This is with all DLCs right here. And there's the flame bow, yeah. Flame bow is fine. Flame bow is fine. We used it a lot in the bow only run. It wasn't like game changing though. Maybe none of this other stuff will be either. Well, as far as uh, the new weapons, I don't know. Looking forward to finding out though. I feel like we might as well get these barrels. We have all this stuff to trade. Animals in melee to level 8. Yeah, it's good enough. How do you do the 100 increments? Alt, Control, and Shift all are different amounts of increments on those buttons. So that was... Uh, uh, they go, you can go up in either tens, hundreds, or thousands at a time. The animal abuse book. <laughs> I was, yeah, actually. Book launcher. Book launcher is really good against uh, mech clusters for sure, or against turrets, I should say. Are they talked I haven't seen anything about console stuff in a while, yeah. I don't know. It is unfortunate that console still doesn't have biotech, but I've never played on, on console, but I know I know there's quite a few people that do. Got a thousand hours of the game, didn't know that there's a lot of things like that, yeah. Mech raid. Mm. <laughs> so this is a raid that I could just go up there and take care of with assault rifles by kiting. But now that we're switching weapons, I can't. So we're going to have to do it the other way, the other way. But I said I would do that this game, so here we are. I was right about to go up there and start kiting. All right, let's see if I actually um, keep using these these charge rifles. Like I said, I was going to do in this playthrough. If, if I do this, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Let's go back to kiting. <laughs> no, it should be fine. Be fine. Am I doing charge rifles just for fun? Yeah. But we have masterwork and legendary assault rifles or uh, charge rifles, so we'll we'll just absolutely rip through these. It's fine. Dead colony. No, this will be easy. It'll still be easy, just not as easy as kiting. All right, let them divide up. Here we go. There's one by itself. Let's go over here. Hit marksman command. What kind of centipedes are these? Charge, yeah, it's fine. Can I kill that? in there's another one by itself so basically if we attack it while it's attacking the wall it's not going to turn in time to fight so that's why we have all the walls so the ai of these mechs are basically like dialed in to attack a wall and that allows us to pop out, kill one, get back in. Laura actually got shot by that, unfortunately. I probably shouldn't put it on 4x during that, huh?
I gotta get the other wall set up too. Shouldn't stay out there that long. All right, get in. Get tended really quick. Eat food. get these other wings of this done um you can get that work wing i'm careful i can get the centipede too uh we gotta wait until it's in like melee range go where are you going lancer uh oh that one's actually attacking uh If you have a half cycler, they came with that, so I EMP'd them. <laughs> oh, lore. Christ, I didn't realize that we grabbed you again. So what we're doing is basically just melee locking one at a time and then killing it with everything else. We have so much firepower, it's just gotta do it while they're attacking a wall and we're fine get the war queen hey okay, they got a hole down here okay let's go now they'll aggro onto the turret I can't kite Assault rifles, we would have taken no damage. The brain plant, can it cause brain burn? No, it doesn't cause brain burn, but... Reason for the hourglass design? No, not not exactly. Although, I did do th this part early in case we needed a door peek and shoot. So, it did work out pretty well. It looked like Izawat ran out and shanked the horse for a moment. And they got pretty beat up. Now we have walls to repair. Ugh. And one of those doors. Worked pretty well. Yeah, yeah, like, honestly, like, if something was attacking here, you could peek out of that wall and shoot at it, and usually uses, like, partial cover and stuff. We're tar it. I just need more wall. 
I don't have range advantage over some things now. So we had, we took a lot of melee damage. We were basically running out and melee blocking with just anyone. And then whoever wasn't melee blocking was shooting with their, uh, their weapons. Don't need to I can't harvest that anymore either. Bug me is that thing like things to be symmetrical. It was symmetrical for a really long time. And then I needed more room. We could add that to the other side too, but last time you're watching, we're on a map without 500 agave. This is that same map, yeah, so they must have fixed it. 200, yeah, that's what it's back to on mine too. Yeah. So that was only for that whatever that patch was. They patched more time since then. How do you get the 1.5 update? Go to Steam, click on RimWorld, right-click RimWorld, go to betas, and the drop down and choose unstable. Yeah, we just need more wall and this will be fine. Square me. 18 months. Second Twitch, baby. Today's public holiday. Pokemon Rimworld time it is for you. Nice, nice. Hooray for public holidays. It's always uh, a good feeling <laughs> that ends up happening. Not at first it isn't, but. I have a lot of firepower. Uh, and a lot of walls. You don't need a lot of firepower if you have a lot of walls. But yes, more firepower. I mean, there for a while we were defending everything with like eight assault rifles, right? Just because of range and walls. Only to find out you're actually working. Yeah. That's the bad side of it. Uh, Lich, thank you for the super chat. Membership, but stuck. Happy Easter. Long weekend. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I sometimes do modded runs. Yes. I usually do a modded overhaul run every four or five runs. Um, one of the more recent-ish ones that you might be interested in is the Zombie Land run, if you haven't watched my Zombie Land run. Another Masterwork rifle. Not building slowing spikes on the outside wall. Are you talking about the spike traps? Spike traps aren't slowing. They're just... They just do damage. They're just traps. I mean, I guess they do slow because they hurt people, but... No, I'm not building any traps. It'd be interesting if Rimworld had traps like um, their Billions has, but yeah, nothing like that. Destroys them, it just it slows them by destroying part of their body. Yeah. You just started the Zombie Land run. Yeah, that was a fun one too. There's an edited version and a full length version of that one too. Yeah, they ripped apart quite a bit of the wall. <coughs> Excuse me. Finishing up the single phase run. Single phase run was a lot of fun. Might be recency buy-ins, but I think that's one of my favorite runs. Full of stories. Built really, uh, really oddly. It's for fun in that one as well. All right, things are looking good. Got plenty of food. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. Ability to add, remove... From oh the drop pod yeah, yeah yeah that one's pretty awesome as well. Freezer is completely obsolete now. I mean, they made it so food rots in in pods, so you can't store like raw meat forever in pods or anything. So if you're still going meat heavy, you're gonna want a freezer, but. Kind of hates when the most efficient way is the most simple a lot of times. Well, you know, that's the KISS method, right? Applies for many, 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 many real-world 
applications. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it stupidly simple. Yeah. Or with a sandbox game, as always, just do whatever's fun for you. Resurrection Serum for 71. How long do we have on that? 1.3 days, okay. The fun fair of violence. <laughs> oh, we got two. You will dance again. Rage just by sending people outside the walls. Yes. You don't see a kill box? That's because this is a no kill box run yet. Hence the title, which says no kill box. Yeah. Oh, in Delhi. Uh, but yes, that's what I'm doing. Hear you out, though. I was thinking of that, too, actually. I don't know if I want to try to get everyone hooked on loose fear in this one with this big of a colony. It's tempting, though. If things not just go. Hey, four for six. Nice. Oh no, it's a kid. Oh, it's another one. <laughs> I said I was done with kids in this run. Let's, ch let's check this out. Too smart. Uh, whatever. We'll just keep you anyway. Jogger, nimble, undergrounder. Nice. This kid is eight and jealous. This one is four. Okay, fine. We'll raise you, I guess. We'll raise you a little bit, I guess. Hey, another builder, nice. The doctor. All right. Three pawns. Okay. Welcome to the colony. Here's your AR. Those walls are making a big box, and you are killing things. Got a point there. neutral with a tribe hmm. 275 by 275 kill box <laughs> yeah. I guess so another masterwork we're gonna be pretty friggin decked out The amount of firepower you get with ideology is just absurd. I was just thinking about how we melted those those centipedes. Shooting specialists and masterwork and legendary guns at 
just whenever we want to make them because of production specialists. Like, really crazy. Has the end game been decided? No, I haven't decided yet, but I'm guessing we'll just launch a ship, right? Oh, sorry, pigs. Oh, no. Someone was a relative. How are you feeling about this, badger? Wait, did your relative among them actually get off the map? Way to go. Way to go, grandpa or whoever you were. I don't remember. Free heavy fur dusters. <laughs> Free. <laughs> These were dangerous in the mechs. Less dangerous because I don't have to fight them. A lot of angry mega slaws, though. I'll be right back while they're here. Hopefully there's no drop out of raid while I'm going. That would suck. Jealousy for a four-year-old kid. Isn't that middle school level? Concrete paved floor or concrete? Wouldn't the raid get bodied by... Not if it's a drop pod raid, because it would be inside our base. We already had a center drop. What's going on? Waffles. <laughs> uh, waffles, thank you for all the bits. I'm getting all the music in. Thank you, Waffles. Very much appreciated. Keeping things interesting while I'm gone. Um, but yeah, we already had a center drop raid once today, so a center drop would actually be inside here. Uh, and they can have explosives. Which can you be a pawn? I think they're all... Actually, you know what? They're not all named. I have a naming list, so that's generally what I do. But here, I will name this child after you. One time only. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Pawn highlights is vanilla in 1.5. Yep. What if any of you... Is the purpose of the map lurking for a while? Drumroll, it seems as the entire game is only in a small corner. Are you missing something? You can go to all those tiles. Melee blocking allowed? Yes, I melee blocked quite a bit. Um, you can go to all those tiles if you want. So you could, you, right now I could go anywhere. Uh, right now though, there's no reason really for us to leave this bubble. So I do go out and trade at these places and whatnot. It's one of the things I wish that they made better is going out into the world. But if I wanted to, I could literally just come over here and settle at this tile and make a new base. Or I could go all the way up here. It would take a long time. But if we really wanted, I could do a caravan and go all the way up to the ice sheets, sea ice, and, and make a new base there instead. So you can go to every single one of these tiles. And you can go attack, visit, or trade all these places. But generally, typically, you stay in a relatively close bubble. And you might trade with people nearby and whatnot, so... Or the original ship, yeah. Am I finding the base 1.5 stuff, the new stuff for it? Uh, so far I've liked all the new stuff. 
Like the floodlights and underground conduits are great. That's all we can get stuff so far. Books. Wish we could automate trade routes. Yeah, that would be really cool. How do I deal with melee only raids? Melee block. Uh, with this setup, we can either melee block or the same way I dealt with the mechs. Or do you mean like a typical? In a typical run, I will either kite or melee block. Crawling can save people, but it also can... I gotta get used to it. Earlier, we had craw we've had crawling save someone in this run a couple times, and we also had crawling let a bunch of scythers in. What do floodlights do? They're just giant lights. Floodlight... Look how big the area is. Floodlight is the same amount of light as a normal light, but it covers about the area of about 10 of them. 10 um, standing lamps. Uh, George, thank you for the three months. Much appreciated. Them to update the bases. Yeah, in, like enemy and ally bases would be nice. Uh, Bio Mnemonic. Thank you for the 18 months. Someone was asking about Doug Too Deep. There you go. There's one. Been here. You got gifted sub during the biotech release, and now we're here for Anomaly. Yeah. Glad you're still around. You have so much firepower. Hmm. Now you can't just murder bad recruits and not have your colonists help them. You can. Because you just have to... Uh, forbid the doors. Do the hidden conduits prevent the z event? Yes, they do. Zones. I think we tested zones with crawling and they didn't care when I tested it, but I don't know if that's changed yet. Your silhouettes don't look like that. There's different options for silhouettes. Go to options. Go to interface. There's silhouettes or dots or nothing there's highlight hostiles only or highlight all maybe you have dots on i prefer fluid, fluid or fixed i think fluid is stronger and more min max right i like fluid ideology it's a lot of fun and yes it's 1.5 yeah for the silhouettes yeah bugs aren't turned off no it turns out they're not Zones effect on crawl. Yeah, I I don't I think they they won't go through forbidden doors at least. So you've gone through them. Maybe you have a mod. Do you have camera plus? That's the one that I would mainly think would would impact it. Ah, uh, waffles. All aboard the hype. Waffles. Train. Thank you for the ten additional gift subs. Thank you, waffles. More choo choo. Oh man, I gotta switch over to my sponsored thing. Crap. You always do helmets and dusters. Uh, always at least to start, yes. I don't know why I would make anything else for that layer in that part of the game other than capes. Capes have the same stats, but... Or if you're in a cold map. They add extra zoom out 1.5? No, they didn't. Are highlights useless without camera plus? I'm not using camera plus. No leg protection? They're wearing pants. Black pants generally aren't worth it. Uh, Ace, thank you for the five gifts. Those also, thank you, Ace. Ace banana hands. But I yeah, just think we aren't. Oh, if there is any apparel to make to sell to exotic vendors that you can make yourself, no, uh, not that I know. No, you can't make Eltex. So, thank you, banana. Too deep rarely sent out a huge queen spider or something instead. Can floor lights be switched to dark lights? Uh, yes, they can. And so can the wall lights. Play with Rim Atomics or Rim Feller? No, I'm not. Play with a no-pause challenge mod. Your game is stuck at half speed after a mad animal event. Anyone know how to fix it? Did you turn on half speed mode in when you started your game? I would say if you haven't already, go into mod options and look at the no pause challenge options. So see if this is how you want it set up. So just go into mod options, no pause challenge. If you want to turn off 
no pause or half pause mode on an already existing gameplay, you're going to have to open up your save file. At the very bottom of the save file, it'll say like no pause, yes, half speed, yes, and just or true or something. I don't know. It's been years since I had to do it. You just change that to no or false or whatever. But yeah, I would say check this stuff first. And all these masterwork weapons, we are going to have so much damage. Crazy. We already have crazy damage. Now we've added more. And we scan more plasteel. Crazy, crazy. Play. Oh, I haven't. I already read that. Hmm. Add ostrich. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you found the channel also. Yeah, no problem. Hopefully, one of those things works for you. I never use the half speed mode, so I don't really. I haven't ran into any bugs with it, but I, I just. I've never really used it, so. New lover is deadly pause and is a wood. Vasectomy time. No more children. Aside from the ones that joined from events. Well. Hey, it failed successfully. <laughs> Ouch. Surgery, the vasectomy failed. And they almost killed them. So almost catastrophic failure. And they sterilized them in the process. All right, well, we failed successfully. They ended up sterilized anyway. Ouch, ouch. I don't know why I click that, but. The doctor says, oops, he actually cut off their testicles. So that's a, a little bit more than an oops, doc, I gotta say. That's a, that's a pretty big oops. <laughs> the knife slipped a little bit. What is that on the floor? Well, it's going to be un irreversible this time. I'm sorry. There we go. Deadly pause and is a what? Oh, right. Our ideology, they won't sleep together until they're married anyway, right? Sneezing is not normal. Change the cooler setup. Thought it wasn't great to have it against walls. Uh, this I have the these are unroofed. Yeah, you'll see that I have this one off the wall, but these, this one I actually have unroofed. So no, as far as I'm aware, nothing's changed with it. All right, we have a res serum and a mining trainer. Oh, you're the kid, you're a kid, right? Hey, where's that mining trainer? Yeah, bring it up here. Well, this kid turns out terrible, though. Ah, it's fine. 
I'm gonna be addicted to drugs soon, though. Alright, kid. Give me a mining specialist in. <laughs> I didn't want to be. I didn't ask. Look at the bright side. You're still alive. <laughs> Do they want to be? No. All right. Uh, I really need to switch over to this right for out of time. I have to do it today. I have a contract. Sign kids no drugs. Ah, it's fine. If he gets addicted, he can just take tea every day. I don't care. I have like a thousand tea laying around, so it's fine. Any tips for management? Well, if you're using 1.5, my tip is just use hidden conduit only. Hidden conduits don't have this event. Costs double the steel, but it doesn't have that event. So as of 1.5, my advice is just never use normal conduits. That's it. Gigabrain, uh, if you're not playing 1.5, my advice would be to... Uh, so as soon as you have a conduit, you can have this event. So you can either play in a way that you don't use conduits um, so like if you're if early on have your stuff that's using electricity to connect to the actual electricity building itself uh, or if you do end up using conduits at some point just make sure you don't have a ton of batteries if you're serious didn't know about hidden yeah yeah it's one of the, my favorite parts of 1.5 yeah. super good No z yeah, uh, raiders don't attack them. They can't be set on fire. And there's no z events. It's super worth the, the double steel cost. It's pretty incredible, honestly. Stop using batteries after solar wind. I, I generally did too, unless I was using sun lamps, but they're not ugly because they're, they're underground, yeah. Super good. Super good. 20 skill production specialist has like 10% chance to create legendary without inspiration. What's the chance on masterwork? Because that's what we're mainly getting. Or we're getting a lot of masterwork, I should say. Fifty percent. That's that's crazy. Crazy. How did that get selected? Whoops. They prefer where you are. Optimal range for an assault rifle kill box for centipedes. 31 tiles. Just do this. Grab your person that has the assault rifle. If you're setting up a traditional kill box with assault rifles, grab the person that has one and check the range box like that. And then you can just draw it out from them. Right? So it's 31. Um, I usually do the 31 from in front of them, though. For where they come in, so I don't destroy as much of the wall. And then from there, I will do... 13 across, and then I'll start curving so that everyone has a line of sight. But yeah, just, uh, just draw out the reach. You basically want your assault rifles to be able to hit them as they're coming off the barricades or whatever you're using for the entrance. Uh, yeah, I only used two this time because we had uh, fast research for my ideology, so I just didn't care. Town is undergrounding lines to avoid events like that in real life. Yeah. You would pay five times the steel for all that. Yeah, yeah, it's super worth. You thought there was a sweet spot since their best accuracy is more like 12. The thing is, if you're going to do a kill box that's 12, things are going to get on top of you very quickly and things are going to be able to shoot back. The strength of the assault rifles is the range. Uh, and that's what makes them so versatile. They're good and they're, they're long, they're pretty long range right so um yeah I, I would just 
do the 31. I, w I mean, if you're going to do something close like that, you might as well not use assault rifles, in my opinion. Like, if you're going to do... If you're doing a kill box that close, where you're getting shot at by the centipedes and whatnot as they come in, or you're EMPing them, and you want more damage, I would use, you know, SMGs or chain shotguns or mini guns or something. Um, or, or charge rifles, charge rifles. Centipedes are also... Yeah, that's another good point. Centipedes are... Oddly enough, centipedes are not super accurate. I'm I'm always surprised by that. Uh, they're they're not, but they just shoot so many bullets that bullets hit, you know. But they're much less likely to hit you at at um, what is the range? Twenty eight or something like that? Twenty seven, twenty eight. Alright, is there much roll for turrets? No, not really. Not at this difficulty. Um, turrets can be good for, like, pulling aggro or, like, having something that raiders attack while you attack them. But overall, especially because they have problems with undoing collision, which can be deadly. So, in fact, if I'm using a kill box setup, I don't want turrets because it'll make it more likely that enemies don't have collision until after they destroy them and then they balloon out onto us and kill us. So... Turrets can be an okay supplemental thing. The lower your difficulty, the better turrets are going to be. You can look at, at a turret as pretty much like a level 10-ish shooter with an awful short bow that eats steel, can't move, can't do any other work, and will explode if they get hurt too much. That's basically what a mini turret is. The other turrets are, are too expensive. They're upkeep for, for what they do, and their, their shots aren't great. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, turrets are just not too good in RimWorld. The higher the difficulty you go, the worse they, they perform, really. Am I liking the charge rifles? No. Charge rifles, I feel, are best in a kill box uh, setting. Like a medium kill box length. They're, they do so much damage, but... I just um, prefer the assault rifles range, honestly. All right. Slug turret shred in game mech raids if you're really rich. Yeah, I don't know. I we did a run where at raid cap I was like, all right, let's see if we can deal with a max raid point uh raid with just turrets, because we were doing 20 year run, right? It's up on YouTube as well. And we did an area that was like a huge area like this, with dozens and dozens of the in-game turrets and like maybe a hundred plus mini turrets, and the mech raid still won. So, again, supplemental things, and depending on what your difficulty is and whatnot. What? Uh, and then there's always modded stuff, too. I mean, if you're not opposed to mods, you can always use modded turrets are really strong, or a storyteller like Igor, which makes turrets stronger. So, blowing limbs off of the uranium slug turret is fun. Yeah. I kind of wish that all the turrets were just, like, very accurate. I think that alone would be pretty good. If they just made all the turrets, like, always hit, maybe that would be too strong, but it would be it would be fun. The solution for half-speed? Okay, good, yeah. This rocket swarm? Rocket swarm can be really good for deleting, like, big packs of humanoids. It's not really good on no pause because you can't pre-aim like you can with mortars. But yeah, rocket swarm turrets can be can be pretty good for deleting big groups of humanoid enemies, yeah. Turrets added in Vanilla Expanded. I haven't looked at those. Favorite between Royalty, Ideology, and Biotech? My favorite is Ideology overall. 
All right, guys, uh, I have a, um, a sponsor game that is a new base builder game that I was supposed to start at six. So I need to switch over to that for a little while. We can keep talking about RimWorld stuff during and about like the anomaly preview stuff, but um, it's getting, it's past six already here. So I need to switch over to it. We'll come back to this run. We'll finish this run. Uh, today went pretty easily on it though. Randy's been a little bit chill, huh? Uh, he's been kind of like Cassandra today, actually. Look at that. Interesting. We had Cassandra Randy. But yeah, let me save this for anything else happens and then we'll switch over to this game. Um, I'm not supposed to stream it for some reason on YouTube, so it'll be a Twitch thing. For those of you on YouTube, if you want to head over to Twitch to keep chatting or whatever, by all means. If not, I will put up the... Um, I'll do a scheduled stream for the anomaly preview stuff so that you'll be able to see when that goes live in case you were wanting to chat about that specifically some more. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not, I have to shut down the YouTube side of the stream to do the sponsor, unfortunately. So yeah, some of the walls are incomplete because it's a triple wall and I didn't, I didn't micromanage when they, what they replaced, unfortunately, but. Do I have a series on how to get started playing? No, not really. I have some guides that kind of go over like how storytellers work and how the different difficulty settings work and like how to choose starting colonists and traits and stuff. So all those guides, um, I guess the closest to like combat basics, I have a combat basics guide. So I would just say look through the guides list, especially those type ones. Um, it might, might help. Fair, yeah, I know. It's just the sponsors, sponsors themselves. So, uh, all right. Thank you guys for watching on YouTube. I'm going to close it on YouTube and uh, yeah, I'll switch over on Twitch. But yeah, if you're interested in watch, continuing watching this like 5% no pause, no kill box run, it will continue just